morning then. It's my half day this afternoon. Shall I come round early? <laughs> what for? I don't know. I'm taking Daniel for a walk if the weather holds. Oh. I mean, what for anyway? I don't know. Best not then, eh? No. Um, I don't know. No, I don't either. Okay then, come about four. What for? Dunno. Okay then, about four. Bye, Ashley. Bye, Kelly. Bye, Kelly. Bye, Ashley. Bye, Ashley. Oh, excuse me. I'm not too late, am I? Pardon? I meant to put this out last night, but, um... Oh. Uh, OK, then. Hey, but don't do it again. Keys to my bike lock. You will go carefully now, won't you? I won't go anywhere if I don't find them. Yeah, I think I had a couple too many last night. You did? No, it'll have been the crisps. <laughs> Are you not going into the garage today? Well, I showed my face. I won't stick around. Oh, you've been scared off, have you? Of course not. What are you on about? Well, you were in there all day yesterday. Exactly. Yesterday I showed them that I was hands on. Today, I don't want to poke my nose in. It's your flaming garage. You've got every right to be there. Yeah. I think they like me being there, by and large. I mean, I don't think I was too much at wear. It is your flaming garage. Thank you. Can I have two bacon? Well, tears, one with ketchup, one with mustard. I knew you two were going to say something original. Well, what a bit of point. Look at me, stuck here all day. I need some stimulus. Why? Right. We say something original and you'll turn around and say we don't stock it. <laughs> You're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> what I don't understand is why it takes two of you to carry two bacon butties back to Coronation Street. No, well, it doesn't, you see. But after this, we're off round the chip shop, the buckies and the off-licence, <laughs> didn't you know? Here's me thinking you work, silly me. No, we have to be watched, don't we, Kev? Mm. Every minute of the flipping day. <laughs> and you ask up along. Well, don't tell me you prefer Baldwin. Hey, Baldwin knew nothing about the business, but at least he just let us get on. <laughs> yeah, this bloke's an amateur, and he sticks his nose in. Is that right? Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, he was watching us all day yesterday, Gail. I've done that garage for years. What does he think I'm going to do? Isn't he just taking an interest? Well, so here we are again. How often do you come here? Once a week. All the happy people I live here. Never know what to look at you. Oh, it's a bit of an obby for you, isn't it, Phyllis? Well, I like the warmth and the comfort. But the only bit of warmth you get, isn't it? How do you mean? I went to her house once. Just one bar of her gas fire turned down low. Cold as a morgue. Morning. Morning. Oh, look who's here. It's a bit busy, isn't it? Thanks. Well, we could oh, fit you in this after. Fiona. I don't suppose it's a I don't know. I'll have to ask her. No, it's all right. I'll come back later. I don't remember you coming to my place. After the age concern, Beetle Drive. Two of us come. I don't think so. The Burnham tree outside the window. No, there isn't. She's confused, poor soul. There's three wheelie bins under my window, and I've never turned my gas low. Just excuse me a minute. What did he want? Well, he said a haircut. Well, he's in court on Friday. He doesn't need a haircut. He said, with you. I mean, all I said was, if it's a positive inquiry and we've got the name and address, then we simply tap it down here on the database, provided they're reasonably local. That's all I was asking her to do. I mean, let's face it, it's not much to ask, is it? Mm. Well, I don't mind doing it. Oh, bless you. Thanks, love. And I'll pay you for the day. Uh, morning. I can't do afternoon. Oh. I mean, fancy walking out over a thing like that. Anybody would think jobs are to a penny. Maybe she had a job to go to. <laughs> the only workers would suit Madge Singleton is somebody in big top. Grandad, how would you feel if I moved out? Well, I'd feel disappointed. Why on earth should you? Oh, it's not fair on you, is it? I shouldn't keep running back to you every time I have a problem. I should be independent. Lord knows I'm old enough. Oh, well, that's right. And you've never been one to stand on your own feet, have you? Even when you were 15 and your parents got killed, straight away you were asking for somebody to take care of you. 
It's all been self with you, hasn't it, Vicky? Yeah, well, I'm not 15 now. Look, love, there are things we need a hand with, no matter how old or independent we are. And a bad marriage is one of the hardest things to cope with, alone. You know I know. You've got your life to lead now, though, haven't you? A life? <laughs> well, I, but I don't see how you stop me leading my life. In some ways, you are my life. Oh, Grandad. Don't move out, love. There is another reason. Go on. I want to be totally honest with you here. Right. I just feel, while ever we're under the same roof, um, Steve has to brave you if he wants to get in touch. Hey, my little lass. Hey, <laughs> my grandfather. We speak every Friday. Is she working? No, there's not a lot of choice for her. No, it's the same for everybody. Yeah, quite, but a kid with a transplant. I mean, she really is limited. And she's on pills for the rest of her life. Mm, makes you realise, doesn't it? A lot worse off than ourselves. I don't like you saying that, girl. I'm sorry, I only... I'm know. not saying you're wrong. She is worse off. I just don't like you saying it. No, of course you don't. Hey. The mess I've made. One daughter and she's held as an example of how not to be. Well, I wouldn't say that. You just did. Well, I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done. Actually, I, uh, I've been thinking of going to see her, you know, going down there. Oh, well, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Well, it depends. I'm either going to be the best thing since sliced bread or the mother from hell interfering with her life. London? Yeah, Hackney. I hope she's got somewhere reasonable. She says it is. I'd go. Yeah, I could make a long weekend of it. The tr trouble is, I don't feel I've earned it. When I go on a jaunt, I like to feel as if I've been working hard, you know, earning the money for it. And haven't you? Well, part-time at the corner shop, now tells. <laughs> so, until you see your daughter, you've got to wait till you're in full-time employment. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a lot of sense, that, Deirdre. Uh, Gail, can I pay you, please? Yeah, of course you can. Come so, on. So, £1.65, please. Ooh, sir. that's it. I didn't realise Kevin was uh, so fed up we're done. Well, who says he is? He did. And Tony. What kind of good word? When was that? Oh, breakfast. Oh, they shouldn't be talking like that. I mean, I know you won't say anything. Of course but... I won't. Well, it's too small a street, isn't it? If they've got a problem, it's between them and Don. They shouldn't go telling all and sundry. Oh, they said he was always hanging over them, watching everything they do. Sounded like mutiny to me. Oh, it's not that bad. But aren't they stupid here? I mean, what's it got to do with you, Gail? No offence. It's <laughs> not taken. They just shouldn't be talking like that, should they, really? <laughs> come on, Sophie, come on, pop it. Well, it's a rank mystery, I say. It's a rank mystery. What would you say, Mrs Bishop? A young lad, fit as a lop, gets to work on time, no problems there, well scrubbed and smooth of chin. But now he's wandering around cow-eyed, he can't keep his mind on his job, he's tired, absent-minded, distracted. If you didn't know better, you could almost say you were in love. Shut up, Uncle Fred. Well, it's a mystery, lad. Is it eight nights? You're not sleeping? Must be very late nights. Perhaps you're getting up too early in the morning to do your studying, is that it? Is it that old NVQ butchery magic that's got you in its spell? No. It stays a mystery. I suppose you need to be early risers in your trade, don't you? Oh, you do, Mrs Bishop, I say you do. Up with the bin men, aren't you, Ashley? <laughs> well, how much was in it? A couple of grand. A couple of care. <laughs> well, you're just going to have to use one of your other accounts. I'm sure you have a few, Stu. No, that was it. The malicious cow. Do it's virtually know. stealing, that, isn't it? I'll tell you what. Be honest now, hand on your heart. How much of that money did she pay onto the account, eh? Yeah, but it doesn't work like that, does it? Go on, I mean, roughly, just guess. Oh, eh? I said it doesn't work like that. No, no, Stephen, listen to me. 1500 a grand, what? Look, it's what I use. It's what I use for the business. Your marriage is on the point of breaking up, Stephen. Don't sound so surprised if she's emptying your bank account. I was surprised about how soon she did it, tell you. Oh, I see. Aye, 
speak, you it. Right enough. I'll get my goat too, so it will. Um, have you got any cheap trips to London? Could be one of these mini-break things, but it must be cheap. Uh -uh. Now, when do you want to go? Oh, uh, well, next weekend, but it doesn't matter. Oh, has it got to be weekend? No, I just thought you can sometimes get cheap at weekends. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, any time. There's nothing keeping me here. I'm going down to see Tracy. She's in Acne. Oh, little Tracy. Hey, where does the time go? Eh? Hey, yeah, and here's another one. Oh. Oh, they grow like forced rhubarb, you know. <laughs> Hello. Hello, love. I didn't expect to see you here. No, Grandad was shut of a dog's body, so guess who stepped in? Hey, you're never a dog's body. Anyway, I've got to go now. Is that all right? Of course it is, love, and thanks for your help. It's all right. See you later. Bye, see love. You. Yeah, she saved my bacon this morning. Is she working here, then? Oh, no, no, she's just stepped into the breach today. Does that mean that you're, um, short-staffed? It does, yes. You mean you're looking for someone? I am, yes. Full-time job? Full-time. I'm supposed to ask if you can use a VDU. I'd much rather ask if you could tap dance. <laughs> Smile, that is a sight for sore eyes. Huh? I think I'm in shock. You want a brandy for it? No, I'll have a wine. Right. Oh, and uh, by the way, make it your best. Now, red wine is 3p more than white wine. Go so... on then, I'm pushing the boat. Oh, out. you did right. <laughs> what else can you expect? Hiya, love. Hiya. There we are. Oh, thanks. Oh. Okay. oh, that smells lovely, Betty, that. Should have brought two folks. No, no, I'm off in a minute. I just wanted a quick word with Kevin. So... Oh, plenty if you change your mind. All right, thanks. Thanks. <coughs> so, what's up? You've got that face up? Yes, I have actually. Well, I walked into the cafe and there's Gail telling me you're close to mutiny with Doug. So? So it's not your place to go telling her things like that. I and mean, it's not her place to go spreading it about. We was having a moan, that's all. Well, that's how things get out, isn't it? You should know that living in a street like this. So, I'm not a kid and she should know better than to go blabbing it about. Yeah, well, she didn't. She just told me. Look, I can do without the lecture. I don't care if it does get out. Might even stop him sticking his nebbin. Yeah, well, you should be saying all this to Dom, not to anybody who happens to be behind his back. Look, who's that in there? Who is he? Hey, see who's at the door. Hiya. Oh, let me in before I'm seen. Hello. Uncle Fred said I didn't have foes down tonight. So what are you doing now? I don't know. What are you doing? I'm looking after Daniel. Can he get to bed? It don't work like that, Ashley. There ain't a switch to switch him off. <laughs> oh, liver and tripe. Oh, well, best have a shower then. All right, lads. Here we go again. Lads, you all right? Why should we be? Ah, no reason, just wondered. Well, you saw who was all right yesterday. You saw that all day. What's up? What are you doing here? What's my garage? Why the hell shouldn't I be? All right, fine. If you don't like the way we're running it, you think we're ripping you off, fine. Stick it. You can keep your garage. You don't work while I'm watched. Tony, you're a boss, if you'll have you. And best of luck, pal. Kevin! Kevin, get back here! Kevin! Work or work? No work. You don't talk to me like that. I've got every right to be in there, and for as long as I want, I can be in there all day and every day. Because it's mine. Do you hear? It's mine. I paid a flaming fortune for it, and no mechanic is going to tell me not to set foot in it. The floor's mine, the roof's mine, every bloody stick in the place. I don't sit there thinking that you're ripping me off or, or I'm spying on you. I sit there because I'm green behind the ears and I'm learning. Do I tell you what to do? Hey, do I interfere? Do I, hell? Now go on. Get your backside in there and get back to work. You're not but a jumped up grease monkey. Hey, you don't talk to me like that. Yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I do, because I pay your flaming wages. What are you gawking at? Get back to work. But we don't need watching. Look, like I said, 
I watch because I need to. Not for you, for me. To learn. Yeah, well, should have said that then, shouldn't you? I think I just did. Yeah, well. Played the ad, I suppose, eh? I hope so. Just go to the toilet. I'll be back in a sec. I used to be really jealous of him. I mean, he always had the money, always had the women. I used to crack on, I was Einstein like to compensate, but they didn't fool anybody. Well, he fooled the old fella, but that's not much really, is it? And now look at us. He's skint, he's lost his wife, and he's out on bail. He might even lose his flat. And I've got university. Nice little part-time job, decent digs, and I've even got myself a woman. Oh, yeah, where? Oh, well, that'd be telling, wouldn't it? It is weird, though, isn't it, how things work out? It's almost physical. I mean, he'd always get a new car or another woman or a right load of cash that'd see him, right? And I'd feel it like a punch in the guts. But now, well, he almost looks small, have you noticed? Are you pleased? No, of course not. Really? Not just a little bit? Am I a scumbag? You'd be a saint if you weren't, Andy. But I'd be gutted if they banged him up, and I mean that, honestly. That'll be him. I'll go. I'd do anything to keep him out of jail. Nice to meet you. Hey, Zangie. Yeah, come in. Alright, mate. Hey. Uh, it's chilly out. What can I get you? Um, I'll have a beer. Got a beer? No problem. Isn't he asleep yet? Not yet. Do you know much about commodities? No. Why? I thought you might, that's all. How about traded options? Don't even know what they are. No, me. Ah, oh, well, won't get rich this year. Should you be wearing his dressing gown? He won't know, will he? I'm not sure I'd like it. Why? Someone wearing my dressing gown. Oh, I'll hang it up again. Isn't he asleep yet? No! How much you know about guilt? That's him! Blimey. Ah. Hello, Mr Barlow. Hello, Kelly. And, uh Ashley. 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 Hello, sir. Ashley Peacock in my dressing gown. Yes, sir. Well, um, my clothes, they was, um... They yeah, just... elsewhere, obviously. Well, you better go and get them, didn't you? I didn't expect you back today. Obviously. Not done your brain? It was awake during the night, but he's, he's caught up now. I don't like you giving people the run of my house, Kelly. He's had a shower. I'm sorry. He'd come straight from the butcher's. And is this going to happen regularly when my back's turned? No. Well, I hope not. <sighs> Sorry, um, shoes and socks. I took them off earlier. You took them off earlier? Hmm. Well, I'm off then. Where are you going? Oh, well, I've got things to do. I've, uh, I've got the flat to sort out, haven't I? I'm out of there whether I'm going down or not. Hey, stick around, man. You don't be going home. Not on your own, anyway. Not tonight. I'll cook you something if you like. Condemn man's breakfast. Well, they won't put you down, Steve, I promise. Do you want a bet? Tell him, Des. Mm -hmm. Tell him what? Tell him he's not going to prison. I had a joke today. Do you want to hear it? Go on, then. What do you call a McDonald in a suit? Don't know. The accused. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? That's not very funny, mate. Yes, it is. Well, not to me, it isn't. Well, to me, it is. So what do we do? Agree to differ? No, I think you should apologise. I don't. Look, that's the old fella and our kid you're insulting. Yeah, I realise that. Look, leave it out, Andy. No, I won't leave it out. I want an apology. Well, tough. Cos I've had it up to here with your family. I tell you what, get your mother to apologise for coming on to me, your dad for threatening me, you for accusing me, and most of all, the whole flaming lot of you for cluttering up my place. I'm sick of it. I come back, it's like, it's like a lock-in in a backstreet pub. You got no work to go to, any of you. Where's all this come from, Des? Way back. 
way back, mate. So that's the end of the road, is it? Yeah, I think it is. Right, well, I'll uh, move the rest of my stuff out later then, all right? Good. Help. Hiya. So how was your day? Oh, not bad. Did you go in the garage today? I, uh, looked in, yeah. And did you feel as though you were poking your nose in? Well, that's what Kevin said. He didn't. He did, actually. Oh, and you just let him, I suppose. You are so frustrating. That is our garage, that is. He won't do it again. Oh, well, if he does, you send me over. I'll flip and sort him out. I'll bet him mind. You're not having one? No, I've just had one, thanks. And he's lost his room because of me. How come? I got up Desi's nose. So where's Andy gonna go? <sighs> My mum's. Do you know something? That flat above the cafe, it's the only time I've ever been happy. There were good times then, Fee. Maxine said that you wanted a haircut. Yeah, well, I'm gonna need one. Don't you reckon, though? They were great times. It was a long time ago. Yeah, well, not to me. Look, we couldn't go upstairs, could we? Why? No, no I don't mean, you know, I just mean it would be more comfortable, I expect. I mean, it feels like you're still working down here. Look, I'm really sorry for all your trouble, honestly. You did have a lot going for you. Yeah, well, I still have, though, you know. I mean, once I get through all of this, you know, I'll... Yeah, I've, I've still got a lot going. I met the wrong woman. I don't think so. Listen, you don't know what she's like. You won't believe some of the strokes she pulls. Oh, and you don't, eh? Yeah, well, I made some mistakes. I never meant to hurt anyone. Oh, I don't believe it's all Vicky's fault. Come on, let's go upstairs. You married for money. Yeah, well, all right, then I was stupid. But I was young. <gasps> it was last year. Well, there you go, then. I'm still young. Come on, you can forgive a couple of mistakes. The biggest one was losing you. Yeah. Look, when I get through all this, you know, I'll, I'll be operating again. I'm going to get my head down, get back to work. Life starts here. Good for you. I've made a right mess of things, haven't I? Come here. <sighs> Should we go upstairs? Look, I'm going out. I've got to get ready. You. Finish your coffee, I'll, I'm gonna go clear up in there. See ya. Bye. Last night. Yes, I know. Oh, can you give us a push, Andy? Yeah. I'll shift the rest of my gear lights, all right. Right. Right, push. I was in the bathroom. I forgot my key. And your coat. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to come back or not. Come in. Thanks. Was your starter motor working? It was. It doesn't now. It'll probably drain your battery. How was I to know? Yeah, it's probably your carburetor or your fuel pump. How long will it take to fix? Depends which garage you go to. 
Well, can't you do it? Me? Not today. But I know you. Yeah, and I know you too. It's Derek, innit? I thought you'd give priority to local residents. Yeah, well, you thought wrong, didn't you? Everyone gets treated the same. Well, at least they used to. What's up, Derek? I'm supposed to be in Gloss. Fat chance. Oh, big job, is it? No idea. Well, we'll see what we can do. Mind you, you'll have to be prepared to wait. It's a busy lad, is our Kevin. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not unsympathetic. I mean, I've been there myself. Yeah, Susan Cunningham springs to mind. <laughs> I used to help her to babysit. Mind you, the main attraction was uh, they had an ITV. Not her parents, they didn't have television at all, but the people she used to sit for, and I didn't want to miss Maverick. <laughs> anyway, no matter. The point is, I do understand you wanting your boyfriend to come round and keep you company, but I would ask you, please, to value my privacy. Which is why I wasn't exactly overexcited to find Ashley swanning around in my dressing gown. Do you get my drift? And, even more to the point, I would have thought it was in your interest to keep your private life strictly between you and him. You know, rather than involving me or... Mrs Bishop. Mrs Bishop? I'll just get his milk. Um, did you say you had to go out this morning? Aye, Vicky's in court, uh, but I'll get back as soon as possible. <laughs> All being well. Only, uh, this promotion you wanted me to do. I'm not quite sure what it entails. Oh, all it is is just standing in the precinct handing out leaflets. Oh, right. Oh, and uh, by the way, there was a message on the answer phone. A Mr Gregan rang. Uh, anyways, just rung back now and he says it's from head office. Oh, I know who he is. It's my boss. Anyway, he says he's going to ring back just after 11 and he hopes you'll be in by then. Well, the cheeky son, so. Oh. I'll leave these to you. I hope you've got plenty of puff. Uh, it's my fault. I cancelled for the week. So what did they do? Chuck you off the course? <laughs> no, they gave us the option of working late and finishing a day early. Oh, so you got a day off then, have you? Uh, it doesn't quite work like that, I'm afraid. Tempting, but uh, I don't think I could bear it if the headband I was skiving. No, I think I owe her a few days. Hello, Ken. I thought I heard you come back last night. Yes, I was just telling Rita we got finished early. Um, by the way, was everything OK next door? Yes. Why? Well, it's just something that Kelly said. Are you sure there were no problems? Not as far as I was concerned. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, bye. bye. See you again. Bye. What was all that about? What? Ken. Well, he was fishing for something. Obviously none of my business. Oh, sometimes I, I think it's better in life just to shut your eyes to what other people get up to. Don't you agree? Depends if what they're doing is antisocial. Like chucking a brick through your window. Oh, I'm sure she wouldn't do anything like that. So what was she doing? Uh... But there's Steve Solicitor back there. He said he'd be here half an hour ago, so he did. Hey, you don't think he... No, uh... don't worry, he'll turn up. I'm mad not to. Well, I wouldn't put it past him. Well, I just hope he realises he's going to need all the help he can get. I could do with a brandy. I wouldn't advise it. Look, it's going to be very straightforward. It won't take more than a few minutes. Now, do you want me to go through the procedure again? No. I've spoken to the prosecutor. And Steve's statement sounds like a fairy tale. Yes, well, he didn't withdraw the money, did he? Or hand it over? I did. Trust me. Now, the main thing is, don't say any more than is necessary. And if I get a chance, I'll put in a good word for you. Oh, I feel sick. He's turned up. Grandad! Your husband. It'd be better if you didn't talk to him. Don't worry. I won't do that. What are you doing here? Well, came to give you a bit of support. Oh, yeah? What was she doing it? Yes, but uh, I'm... I, yes, but I'm afraid we can't guarantee the sunshine. Yeah, pass us the sunliner brochure, will you, dearie? Uh, which, uh, which holiday was it, exactly? The ten day in the Algarve. Oh, yes, I know. Which, uh, which, which hotel was it? The airport of Vista. Oh, yes, I've got it, yeah. Y yes, I know it's sunny in the photograph. <laughs> There's also a big blonde piece wearing note but a pair of sunglasses, but she's not part of the package. All right, well, you better give it me again, then. No bingo. 
no kippers. The waiters couldn't speak English and it rained on the Tuesday and the Wednesday. Yes, but apart from that, did you have a good time? You didn't. Well, have you considered the Isle of Man? I mean, most of the natives speak English and the kippers are positively leaping out of the sea onto your breakfast plate. Yes, well, I'd, I'd like to chew the fat with you all morning, but I'm afraid I've got other matters to attend yeah. to, actually. Grandad promised he'd be here. I'm sure he'll come if he can. Probably stuck in the traffic. Right. Well, you don't seem too worried about the whole thing. Well, why should I? Well, it seems to me you're not taking it very seriously at all, Stephen. Because it's becoming a habit, that's why. Appearing in court. Yeah, it must run in the family, eh? Oi. Behave yourself, you. Look, I honestly don't know why you're here. We've got wee girl yours might end up inside. Do you understand that? Did the solicitor tell you that? Hey, eh? didn't he point that out? I mean, the pair of you could. I just hope you've got a conscience about this. Mr and Mrs Stephen, Victoria McDonald. Right, you're on. Remember what I said. This may be your last chance to make amends for the mess you've got her into. So think on, tell the truth for once in your measly little life. What about you, John? Next Wednesday, whether be coming to cheer on our little investment? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure. Oh, Rita, go on. Change your mind. No, I don't think I can get the time off. Nonsense! What's the point of owning a business if you can't delegate? Having said that, I'm not sure my nephew could cope on his own. The past few days he's had his mind on other things. A little bit of totty that looks after Barlow's nipper. Well, Ken's been away for the last few days, so uh, she's had the house to herself. You don't miss out, do you? Now, listen, just because I live in Grassmere Drive doesn't mean I haven't got my ear to the ground. So why the cat's been away, the mice have been playing, have they? I'm saying no. Fred, Fred, what? Oh, oh word. Yeah. Hilary Forrest just went on the phone. The horse. It's Pauling. Are you Stephen James MacDonald, age 21? And Victoria Frances MacDonald, age 19. A flat six Montreal house, Weatherfield Keys. Actually, I... Could I explain the present situation? In the past few days, my client has moved out of the marital home and is now residing with her grandfather at number 15 Park Road. Weatherfield? Yes. But you are Victoria Frances MacDonald, age 19. Yes. The charge is that you both conspired, together with Malcolm Stanley Fox, on the 15th of January, 1996, to attempt to pervert the course of justice. It is a pity that this case can't be dealt with in the Magistrates' Court, but I would at this stage like to put it on record that my client, Victoria MacDonald, will be admitting the charge. She has cooperated fully with the police and is not going to abscond. She is a young woman of previously unblemished character and she regrets deeply what she has done. I therefore feel that the reporting restrictions will be too onerous and inappropriate. Very well. We will bear that in mind. Mr. Bromwell? I also would like to oppose reporting restrictions on behalf of my client, Mr. Stephen MacDonald. And will he be pleading guilty? On the contrary, he will be most strenuously denying the charges. He is most keen to come to court as soon as possible. He feels he has been the victim of a personal vendetta by his estranged wife and looks forward to the opportunity to prove himself innocent. Very well. We will grant bail on the condition that the accused do not attempt to contact each other and will continue to reside at the given addresses. Not guilty, eh? And the Pope's not a Catholic. Well, what's wrong with it? She don't know. Vets come and give it an injection. Oh, well, I don't want to know either. I hate injections. Mm. So do I, 25 quid a time. More. Is that what you said? What about call-out fee? Oh, poor thing. I suppose that's Knox Weatherby races on said. Oh, she's withdrawn it. Doesn't matter, it's going to be better for them. Useless article. Well, poor horse can't help it. 
Probably took ill when it heard you were going to sell it for stewing meat. That flaming nag gets more sympathy than I do. It's better looking than you, isn't it? It only went in for a service last week. Who does it for you? No idea. The firm sees to it. Ah, well, tell you what, we might do a better job. Here, tell your boss to give us a ring. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> One good turn deserves another. Yeah, mocks you up your morning, eh? No, been up the allotment. Got a couple of rows of peas in. Row of carrots, lettuces, radishes. And a couple of halves in the congenial atmosphere of my local. No, a mocked up morning is not what I call it. Rather pleasant, in fact. What did you tell the boss, then? Catching up on the paperwork. Oh. There you go. It's fixed. Oh. It was your uh, fuel pump. Car's outside ready for you. Right. Well, thank you. So, shouldn't have any more trouble with it. No. Thanks. So with him? Chase around all day for that fuel pump. What for done? No. I think he was hoping you'd take all day over it. Did you know it was pleading not guilty? No, but I assumed it. Did you? Well, fool that I am, I thought he'd have a pang of conscience and stand by the lass. <laughs> that would have surprised me. Did you have to say all that? That she'd be admitting to it? I think in the long run it's the best approach. You think? You mean you don't know? Well, it's too late now. You've already told them. Alec, it's impossible to argue with the evidence. This way she'll get a lesser sentence. But she could still go to prison. Vicky, you OK? I'll see if she's all right. She's far from all right, thanks to that miserable specimen of a son of yours. I'm not proud of what's happened. I should hope you're not. Listen, Sally, you're not help. Stephen, you are up to your neck of it, son. And you're going to have to convince a jury. And don't go expecting any kind words off Victoria. Look, are we going or what? We're waiting for your mother. And another thing. I hope that man of yours has got you a decent brief, because by God, you're going to need one, so you are. Hmm? I think you'd best take her home. Let me be the judge of what's best for her. Your family's done enough damage, thank you very much. Come on, Jim. Look, I'm sorry. But what else could I do? You could plead guilty. That's what you could do. Come on, Steve. It's neither the time or the place for any of this. Come on. I hate you. Look, I said I'm sorry. Look, have you seen what she's like? Don't you ever come near me again. I never want to see you. Come on, Vicky. Let's get you home. I haven't got a home, have I? I haven't got anything. I wish I'd never met you. He'll not sack you, you see. He'll all blow over. I thought it had done. So what did he say? Nothing much. I don't think he even realises you stayed the night. Well then. But he will do now. How's that then? Two cheese and tomato, one egg and one corned beef. Yeah, sorry, girl. Can you put me in a bag of take out, you see? Here. Yeah. Here, yeah, Steve and Vicky are in court today. Yeah? But don't ask me anything about it. All oh, right, I won't. Got a belly full of the McDonald's the last few weeks. Using my house as a flaming committee room. You've been giving them the benefit of your worldly wisdom. Not do me, pets. Couldn't care less what happens to them. See. As a matter of fact, Andy's taken the hint. He's moved out. Oh, well, you'd be looking for a new lodger then. I will not. Glad to get the ice back to myself. I'll see you. Oh, hiya. Thanks very much. Oh, what for? You know, losing her a job. I haven't lost it yet. I don't know what you're talking about. It's got nothing to do with you. I quite agree. So why did you tell him? I don't even know if she's seen him. Ken? Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. Oh, thanks very much, missus. And I didn't mention anything to him. And whether that was wise, I'm not sure. I, I'll call back later. Well, I'm not a solicitor. Yes, but you are educated. Oh, whatever that means. I mean, if you ask my opinion on the relative merits of Keats and Wordsworth, I might have a go. Mm -hmm. But as to whether or not you're in your rights to alter the locks in the flat across the street, I haven't a clue. You mean, you think I could be in the wrong? I mean, I don't know. Best I can suggest is you ring citizen's advice. Uh, oh. Hiya. Oh, hi. Oh, you've been served? No, no, it's OK. Go ahead. Oh, I'll have some cheddar cheese. Right. Hey, and it's not that hard stuff, is it, like last week? That was mature, Vera. Mature. The mummified. £1.63. Been away, haven't you? On a course, yeah. Yeah, I've been hearing. About my course? No. About the pie, lad. Emily Bishop was telling Rita Sullivan she caught a matter during the night. I don't think so. Oh, she did. You teachers are supposed to set an example to young ones. If you ask me, you're encouraging them. See ya. 
Anyway, I'm uh, sorry I can't be more helpful, but uh, looks like I've got problems with my hands. You know Vera, she probably made all that up. Yeah, but even so, I don't see why I should let the likes of Vera Duckworth dictate who looks after my child. Oh, take no notice of them, Ken. If only it were that easy. Oh, I suppose it's about young Kelly. I'm not sure what you want to know. Well, I want to know what's been going on. There's rumours flying around that were seen to originate from you. Well, if I've said anything out of turn, I apologise. But why? I thought we trusted each other all the years that we've been friends. Because I have the distinct impression that young Kelly sees me as a bit of a busybody. And I also get the impression that you might sympathise with her viewpoint. No, that's not true, not at all. Anyway, I thought it best not to tell tales behind her back. So you told Vera Duckworth instead? I most certainly did not. I may have mentioned something to Rita. Anyway, it's all done now. But look, all I've heard is rumours. And what exactly did happen? Did you know about this bribe? No, of course not. Well, when that fox fella cleared Steve's name, didn't you think something were up? Yeah, suppose I did. And aren't you ashamed that he's going to let Vicky carry the can for something that he put her up to? Now, we don't know that, Mum, do we? For sure. Don't tell me you're on his side. I'd have had you down for more sense. I think the same as you. He's a tow rag. He's more than that. Yeah, well, my brother. He's my son. Doesn't stop me seeing him for what he is. Well, as up to now. Not anymore. I don't ever want him in this house again. All along I've been manipulated. By Steve, by Nick. Not by me. Well, I hope not. I need you to be honest with me, Grandad. I need you to tell me the truth. Well, the truth is... I'm not a lawyer. The truth is I don't know. Just what I wanted to hear. It's ironical, really, isn't it? I mean, I've pleaded guilty. And yet I've got to go through the whole thing again. I mean, I'm the injured party here. Well, I think you are. Of course I am. In practice. I mean, emotionally, vis-a-vis -vis your husband and so on. But legally, in the eyes of the law... Oh, no, there, I'm guilty of sin. They are. That's why I'm so frightened. What'll happen to me? Yes, but I mean, once they start cross-examining him... I mean, these lawyers, they're very crafty fellas, you know. He'll fall headlong into their traps. You obviously don't know Steve. Now he'll look the jury straight in the eye and swear blind he knew nothing about it. He'll charm the socks off them. Case dismissed. He'll not get away with it. But it's his word against mine. They are. His word. And all the evidence. Yes, but when it comes to sentencing, I mean, you've cooperated, haven't you? I mean, they'll take that into account. They'll be much more lenient. Don't worry, love. I mean, things could be much worse. Nick knows what he's doing. Well, for some people, gossip is the stuff of life. You know, they get brownie points for it on street corners, cheap popularity in the pub. Now, I wouldn't put Mrs Bishop in that category, but unfortunately, everybody knows what's happened. And that puts me in the invidious position of being seen to condone it. Now, I can't do that in no way. Does that mean I've lost my job? Well, that would be the obvious solution. Give in to them, accept their so-called principles. But then who'd be the loser? You get another job, I find another childminder. But Daniel would lose all the trust and security that he's built up over the months. No. I'm not going to let you go, Kelly. I think most people around here are OK. Yes, but I cite them a shorthand for something more serious, and if you read the tabloid press, you know what I'm talking about. In the meantime... Yeah? Let's try and be a little more discreet, shall we? Right, look, I'll get all this stuff out of your way, Mum. Hey, right now I don't care what the house looks like. Yeah, well, even so, it's not really fair me just dropping back, is it? No notice. 
Listen, I'm glad of the company. And it's still your home. Stay as long as you like. Thanks, Mum. I mean it. I don't want thanks. If that's him, I don't want to speak to him. Hi, mate. How you doing, son? Is your mother in? Uh, I'll see. All right. Yeah, I understand. Mum, you know when you said if that's him, who did you mean? Steve! Well, it's me dad. Oh. <clears throat> All right. Uh. Right, look, I'll get this stuff out of your way. I'll take you up to my room. Did you? Ah, uh, I thought I'd better call around. See how you're doing. How are you? I'm terrible. Well, don't worry about it. I mean, I can't blame you for being disappointed in the lad, you know? Oh, it's not disappointment. I feel vicious towards him. And that frightens me. All the chances he's had and every single one of them is thrown away. Money, job, Vicky, he's had the lot and no, it's ever good enough for him. He'll risk everything for some tacky little fiddle. And when it comes down to it, he'll turn his back on his wife to save his own skin. Even an animal wouldn't do that, Jim. Don't, don't worry about it, Liz. I mean, it's not quite as simple as that, is it, eh? Eh? I mean, why the name of God would he plead guilty if he thinks he's going to get off, eh? You're talking like him. No, I'm not. I'm talking like a solicitor, because that's who's advising him in his own best interests. I can't understand you. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm just as angry about how he's treated that wee girl as you. Honest to God. I'm not defending him in any way. And I, sometimes I'm ashamed to be his father, so on. That's how I feel. Ashamed. But we brought him up and look what he's turned into. Now, you're not being fair to yourself, or to Andrew either. It's not for us to take the blame or take the credit. The pair of them know what's right from wrong. No, not Steve. And there's only one way you'll learn now. And maybe it's not such a bad thing. Fair enough, you're going to have to do without me for a couple of hours. I'm just going down to the stables. Oh, no, you're not. You're coming to the Sunliners with me. I don't know, Betty. All them years we couldn't afford holiday, and now we can. I've got to twist his arm to go on one. Vera, it's an emergency. Hilary Forrest has been on the phone, and they said that that jab that they gave Hot Shot has done him no good at all. If only I had to send for another bet. A for colic? No. Give him a couple of spoonfuls of gripe no, water. No, 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 no. It's very dangerous with a horse. Oh. His colic and sometimes it can be fatal. He's not had a scrap of food, not all weekend. Oh. Oh, Jack, he's going to be all right, eh? I don't know, love. That's why I'm going down there. Anyway, I'll see you later. Hey, well, hang on a minute. Yeah. I'll give you a couple of biscuits. Try and get him to eat them. Biscuits? For the horse? Well, I did, eh? Red rum. We're very partial to polo mints. Why don't you write him a get well card while you're at it, love? Send him some chocolates. And a bunch of flowers. I've got it. Thanks. Good. If I find anything else, I'll drop it in later. Cheers. Andy, what I said the other day, I had no right to. You've been a good lodger and a good friend. So you thought you'd thank me by launching into a character assassination of my entire family? Well, it just came out all wrong. I don't know what it was. I started to feel like this place wasn't my own anymore. All you had to do was drop a hint. I'd have been out of here like a shot. I know, Andy. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. Well, that's a hefty packed lunch you're putting together there, mate. Well, my turn not to work the bank holiday, isn't it? So I thought I'd have a day out, get some fresh air, find a nice picnic spot. Mm, well, there's enough food in there for at least mm, two. Good. Because there'll be at least two people eating it, mate. Yeah, and one of them's a woman, isn't it, Daz? That's why you've got your gel on. Listen, the moment there's any gossip worth peddling, you'll be the first to know, Andrew. All right? Now, I've got to get a move on. Of course you have. That's the other teddy bears will be wondering where you are. 
Somewhere abroad, but not too far, because I don't like flying now, Jack. Oh, right. Somewhere by the sea, not secluded, but with a little bit of nightlife. Hot, but not too hot, because it burns. And it's got to be somewhere where they do English food, because it's got a queer stomach. You know, it sounds like you'd be better off stopping where you are. Oh, don't. You just sound just like our Jack, you. Look, why don't you help yourself to a few brochures, for starters? Mrs Buxton here will be delighted to answer any questions you may have. Look, are you sure you want to be cooped up in here all day? We could go for a run out in the car later, if you like. No, I may as well get used to being cooped up. Hey, we'll have none of that talk, do you hear? Oh, face it, Grandad. I'm guilty of conspiracy. I've pleaded guilty. Yes, but you were put up to it by your husband against your better judgement. It says who? I was the one who paid the money to Fox. I mean, Steve's just going to deny everything, isn't he? You heard his solicitor. He's going to say the only reason I dragged him into court was out of spite. Yes, and a jury will see through him in two seconds. What if they don't? I'll just carry the can for everything. No, Vicky. Yes, Grandad. I'm going to go to prison. And Steve's just going to walk free. I'm his mother, yeah. Oh, uh, right. OK, thanks anyway. Bye. I've just spoken to the estate office. He's definitely moved out at Keys. Cleared all his stuff out at weekend. Well, what are you worried about? I thought you said you didn't want to see him again. Well, I still want to know where he is. Anyway, I'd quite like to see him, to tell him what I think of him. Well, it could be anywhere, Mum. On a mate's floor, down in London, Rio de Janeiro. You don't think he would, do you? I've got a Rio? No, I don't think he can afford it. No, I mean, you don't think he might have just taken off somewhere? Oh, well, I thought I'd cross my mind. I mean, what's he got to hang around for? Crown court trial, possible prison sentence, and even if he does get off, his marriage is over and his business is down the pan. I think I'd do a runner if I was him. It's too heavy, this, Mum. Jamie, you have done nothing but moan all morning. You are driving me up the wall. Oh, but I'm not just saying it. It's too heavy. Jamie, I'll take that. You open the lid, lad. Oh, thanks, Bill. You're a gent. Oh, there we are. Oh, oh, I hate bank holidays, don't you? Well, to be honest, Trish, after the week I've just had, I'm glad of a long weekend. Mm, I won't mind putting in an hard week's work. Somebody give me a job. Still no luck, yeah? I'll tell you what, if I hear that, I'll let you know. Yeah, thanks. Anyway, I'll best we go in. I'm off to football match with our Kevin. Don't want to be late. Can I come? Hey? Oh, go on. Go on, he's driving me mad mooching about the place. He loves football, don't you, Jamie? Well, like I say, I'm going with our Kevin and we're going to have a couple of pints beforehand. I mean, it, it, it's not often we get a chance to go out together, not just two of us, like, you know. Oh, I see. Anyway, maybe next time, eh? Yeah, yeah, go on inside, son. some signs of life, so I thought I'd pop my head round the door. Are you open? Well, I am and I'm not. I've been meaning to do a stock take for ages and I can get through it easier when shop's quiet and maybe this is digging for victory. Is this something you're after, Fred? Well, I was just on my way to pay my respects to the widow of a recently deceased colleague and I were wondering, could I buy a condolence card? Oh, be my guest. Nobody I know, I hope. You might do. We were a news agent. Oh. Charlie Hunter, had a shop on, on Kitch Kitchener Street, yeah. Done him for years. Only to say hello to. Had a heart attack last Friday. Passed away five o'clock Saturday morning. Thankfully, Judith, his missus, were at his bedside. Oh, do you know, I saw him at a charity do less than a month since. He looked the picture of health. How old was he? Can't be more than 60. 59. 59. That all. In some ways, I feel culpable, Rita, to be honest. Oh? He liked his chops and bacon on the fatty side, did Charlie, and I always obliged. Give over. It could be running that shop that's done it. He kept it open every hour God sent. Uh, it's not just the city whiz kids who can burn themselves out. Mm. Warm thoughts in your time of need. That should do the trick. So you and him were pals, eh? 
No, not close pals, no, but we moved in the same circles, or should I say rectangles? Ah. Well, give my sympathy to his wife. In fact, you can do better than that. I'll give you a card from me. That's very thoughtful of you, Rita. She'll appreciate that. Well, best thing about this job, as Charlie knew, you can always lay your hand on a card, whatever the occasion. Although I don't relish going through this particular section. Dad up. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Oh, all right, Dad. <coughs> Where you was? What are you having? Betty, have you got a can of that fizzy apple juice and a packet of salt and vinegar crisps? I have, love. Apples, you're not driving, are you? I thought we was having a couple of pints. Well, there's been a slight change in plan. you better get that sucked. It's not bad news, is it, Jack? Terrible news, really. It's not died. Don't tell me it's died. Of course it hasn't died. It's as strong as arse. That's another <sighs> 200 quid up the shoot, isn't it, vet fees? To top it all, the vet said he's got to convalesce. Can't race again till next season. I just told him no. Look, I felt sorry for him, OK? Come on, it'll be all right. Hiya. How do? Here you go. <sighs> One packet of crisps and a fizzy apple, as ordered. Uh, yeah, put that in. I'll get it. I can't wait. We're out of Canton, I'm playing. <laughs> Shouldn't have thought so, no. Not unless someone's pulled off a pretty spectacular transfer deal. Eh? I think you've got up the wrong end of the stick, Jamie. It's not United we're going to see. It's Weatherfield County. <laughs> not even in first division. Hey, they're still your local side, even if they've not got United's millions. Yeah, and you ought to be proud to support them. Uh, but they're rubbish. Hey, look, Jamie, you don't have to go, you know. We can always drop you back at the flats. It's on the way, innit? Really? Well, uh, no. I may as well come now, then. Who are they playing anyway? Uh, Saltburn, I think. Saltburn? Where the heck's that? Uh, just a little way up from Scarborough. Should be a belt of a game then. Ask him to give it one massive injection. Put it out of its misery like. Put me out of its misery and all. Can't be doing that. That's what's in it. That's euthanasia. Can't be doing that, Fred. Well, summit has got to be done, Jack. A good mind to go there with a shotgun and do the job himself. Oh, you wait till next season. Wait till he's had a bit of a rest. And that's when things will come right for us, wait see. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In the meantime, it's money for this and money for that. It can't go on, Jack. I say, it can't go on. Hello, Rita. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, vodka and tonic, please, Fred. Vodka and tonic, please, Jack. Incidentally, mm. Judy says thank you very much for the card. You were very touched. She bear enough. As best that can be expected. What we need, you see, is some way of offsetting our outgoings while he's in the stables, like some kind of sponsorship or something. I was going to sponsor us. Well, I don't flame him, no, do I? Oh, I just had a thought. Thanks, Jack. Uh, Rick. Cheers, Fred. Cheers. Uh, do you know when the funeral is? Wednesday morning, over at Dunham Massey, where his mother's buried. I was thinking I might go myself, unless it's just for family and close friends. Oh, no, the more the merrier. Judith will be delighted to see you. You sure? Certainly. I'm driving over. We could go together, if you like. you. We thought you might have left the country. Yeah, well, I thought about it. I even, uh, I even set off down the motorway, but had to, uh, had to come back, didn't I? have got to see it through. It's the only way I can clear my name. Your name's Mud. At least it is in this house. I don't know how you've got the nerve to show your face. Nothing like a nice warm welcome, is there? What do you expect after the way you've behaved? I have never been so ashamed in all my life. Why? Because I pleaded not guilty to a crime I didn't even commit. Oh. Still coming the innocent, are you? Still reckon it were all down to Vicky? She went behind your back and bribed a known criminal. Ha! Huh, I can just see it. 
Mum, she'd have brought the head of the flipping Metropolitan Police to keep me out of jail. You don't know what kind of state she was in. And for your information, she gave Malcolm Fox that money to tell the truth. She what? Well, you were in court. You heard what he said. He tried to fit me up because he had a grudge. What he didn't say was that it took six grand to persuade him to come clean. Even if all that were true, which I doubt, it doesn't excuse you denying all knowledge in court, leaving Vicky to take all the flack. Yeah, but I had to plead not guilty. I've been told to plead not guilty by a solicitor. And if it wasn't for flipping Nick and Alec Gilroy, Vicky would have done the same thing. It's them you should be pointing the finger at, not me. All right. So they're the ones conspiring now, are they? Not you. Me and Vicky got into this mess together. We were trying to sort it out together. And then Alec and, 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 and Nick start sticking the nose in and we're set against each other. And they weren't just trying to protect Vicky from you. They were using it to split us up. And if they can land me in prison at the same time, then so much the better. Oh, come on, Steve. Isn't all this a bit far-fetched, even by your standards? Have you forgotten the lengths that Alec went to to try and stop us getting married? And as for Nick, he virtually covers his mouth with a hanky every time he walks in the same room as me. As far as they're concerned, I am not good enough for her, and I never will be. And that is what this is all about. Why is it? I don't believe you. No matter what you say, no matter how much it all adds up, Deep down, I don't believe you. Well, I'm glad you're not on the jury, then. Look, I was going to ask whether I could stay, but I can see you don't want me in the house, so... So I'll go. You, uh, You couldn't lend us any money, could you, mate? I don't see why not. Just about 20 quid or something, you know, just until I get myself sorted out. Yeah, sure. Don't give it to him. Mum! I've been booted out me flat. I've got nowhere to live. I'm skint. You put your money away. You, get your bags from the car. I take it they are outside in the car. But I thought you just said... I just said I don't believe your story. I didn't say you couldn't stop it. Go on, go get your stuff. I'll give you a hand. Playing her, leaving me and Betty to cope on her own. Look, you'll get through. I'll be through in a few minutes. Look, it's saving out there. And what are you doing in this collecting box for hospice? That was the collecting box for the hospice. Oh, and what have you done with my brochure on Ireland? Yes, well, I'm sorry about that, but there's a photograph I wanted. Anyway, we're not going to Ireland for holidays, and they're Dale's too dear, isn't it? Well, what are you up to? I have just come up with the most ingenious plan of raising money for Hot Shots Keep. Ah. Oh. <laughs> you think about it, Vera. Nothing tugs on the strings of folk more than the thought of a suffering animal. Which I found out when we tried to ship him to Belgium. So? So, from now on, you, Audrey, Judy Mallet, anybody else with a conscience about animals suffering, can put your money where your mouth is. Just up and down there for now, eh? Yeah, yeah. Tell you what, it's gonna be a bit of a squash in that little room, innit? Hey, you've enough clothes there to open up your own shop. Oh, I don't wear half of it. In fact, I might go into town tomorrow and see if I can sell some of it. Unless, unless you want any. Uh, no. I think the days of us wearing each other's cast-offs are well gone, don't you? Oh, here you are, here you are. i try this one. It cost nearly uh, 150 quid, that. I'll let you have it for 30. <coughs> oh, yes. And he's smart. Um, <clears throat> it's not really my style, is it, mate? Uh, thanks all the same. Well, I thought maybe you could do with smartening up your image. Might impress uh, that new girlfriend of yours, eh? Oh, well, that's the thing about Anne. She's not impressed with uh, smart clothes or money. Oh, what is she impressed by? Dazzling looks? Sparkling wit? No. She's more concerned with uh, finding someone she can trust. You know, someone that'll stand by her when she really needs it. Shall we um, get the rest of the stuff in there? Yeah. Well, here we are then. Safe and sound, just about. <laughs> Did you have a good time, Jamie? Mum, it was diabolical. I should better pass in school tea. Hey, you! Now you say thank you to Bill or you get no tea. 
I'm not hungry. I had a burger at half time. Jamie! I've tried to teach him good manners, but once they get the other side of the school gate, what can you do? Ah, it's all right. When has there ever been a little lad that wants cheeky? Do you know our cow's just the same? In fact, Jamie's quite like him in a lot of ways. I don't know how you stand it. The worst thing about that week I spent in prison was being separated from me. Well, it can't last forever, that's what I keep telling myself anyway. Anyway, best shoot off. I'll see you, Jamie. Yeah? See ya. And, uh, thanks. Yeah, bye, Bill, and thanks again. Anytime. Uncle Nick? What are you doing here? I thought I'd drop in on my way home, see how you are. I asked him to drop by. I just can't bear seeing you like this, love. And I hope that he... Look, Vicky, there's no sense in you getting yourself upset. It's easy for you to say. You're not the one that's going to prison, are you? What did I tell you? Just, just tell her she's talking rubbish, will you? Well, am I talking rubbish? I can only reiterate what I've already told you. That is highly unlikely, but I can't give you a cast-iron guarantee. Not unless you allow me to handpick the judge and jury. I know this is a terrible thing for me to say, but I can't help thinking maybe I should have pleaded not guilty. In that case, you would certainly be going to prison. What if they believe what Steve said? Well, Steve's version of events is pure fantasy. <laughs> One of the most ludicrous defences I've heard in 20 years of legal practice. A good barrister, and believe me, the prosecution have a very good barrister. We'll tear his story to pieces. I'm sure Nick's right, Vicky. And then, of course, there's your testimony. My testimony? Yes, you'll be expected to tell the court what you've told the police. You don't have a problem, do you? No. Why should I? Steve's already testified against me, hasn't he? Denying everything? All the same. He is still your husband. We've got no future together. Not after this. No matter what the outcome is. And 50p makes £5, unless, of course, you would like to put your change in our collection box. Oh, go and put that 50p in there. <laughs> Bless you. I'll give you 20p and all, Jack. Very generous of you, Maud, very generous. Uh, which charity is it actually you're collecting for, by the way? We are collecting on behalf of sick animals. Oh, yes. Is it the People's Dispensary or the RSPCA? Neither. It, it's a local charity, you see. Let's have a look. Pass me the box, Laurie. It doesn't say anything on it. It's just got a horse on it. It might say anything underneath it. I don't know. When, yeah. when, when I say sick animals, I'm, I'm talking about one in particular, you see. And which animal would that be? Hot shot. That horse that you and your mates bought? Ah, it's been very poorly. and The, the vet's fees are astronomical. Tough. You bought the beast. You and your pals can pay for it. You can't ask ordinary people to fork out for the upkeep of a private racehorse. No, no, it is more your pub mascot. Oh, is it now? It'd be a different story if it won a thousand pounds. Not that it's ever likely to be all accounts. I'll keep my 20p, thank you. You can pay for the vet yourself. And you can fish out my 50p while you're at it. And as for that collecting box, Imagine what people would say if I put a collecting box in my shop for the disabled and tipped the contents into my purse every time it got full up. That's well, the same thing, Lord. It's exactly the same thing, Jack. I think you'll find that impersonating a charity is illegal. Illegal, Jack. And if I was you, I'd stick to collecting for bona fide charities before someone reports you. Now, don't worry. I know it's hard having something like this hanging over you, but you must try and put it to the back of your mind, at least until you have a date for the court case. Just get on with your life, keep out of trouble, and whatever you do, remember the conditions of bail. In particular, stay away from Steve. Well, I'm not going to go looking for him, am I? I don't think he'd dare come looking for me. He might, if he thought it would be worth his while. What do you mean? Steve will have had conversations with his lawyers. 
He'll know how important your evidence is to the prosecution. So... I'm just warning you, be on your guard. We all know how manipulative he can be. No, don't worry, Uncle Nick. The days of Steve wrapping me round his little finger are well and truly over. Doesn't seem too bothered, does he? About going to prison. Well, that's because he reckons he won't. Keeps going on about Vicky stitching him up. He's a liar. Bell's mum, looks like anyway. You're gonna be late for class, aren't you? Uh, no, not if you give me a lift. What else are we about to? Uh, clutch is slipping. Uh, well, uh, sorry, I'm uh, giving mum a lift to work. I'll get the bus, thanks. Suit yourself. Uh, look, now, there's no need to worry about these bills. Now I'm here, I can uh, sort them out for you. No problem. You're here temporary, Steve, until you find a place of your own, or the judge finds one for you. See ya. See you later, Mum. Get the impression I'm not wanted here, else. Or what, eh? Something like that, yeah. Do you want some toast? No. Like you say, I'm late, so I'm gonna go. Now, have you got any aftershave I could borrow, please? Yeah, help yourself. Thank you. So now we know? May 24th. Well, there's still time for Nick Wilding to weave his magic, if he's got any. I'm sorry, Grandad. Eh? Your granddaughter appearing at Crown Court. Mum and Dad would be very proud. None of this is your doing. If there's any justice, then that scumbag MacDonald will get what he deserves. Look, I want you to give a lift in here again today, love. Take your mind off it. Why, where are you going? Uh, Manchester. I'll be back this afternoon. You know, part of this is my fault. I wasn't there for you. I'd have married Steve anyway. Maybe. But it doesn't stop me feeling guilty. I should have tried harder. Listen to me now, love. Let me make amends. Just stay strong and stick to the truth. I'll see you later. Ah! Back this afternoon, ladies. Meanwhile, run a tight ship and preach the gospel according to Gilroy. If you find a fool, make good use of him. Uh, no, I didn't say that, Deirdre. <laughs> I should think not, Mr Gilroy. <laughs> Slander that, Deirdre. <laughs> no, Vicky's a bit upset. She's just got a date for court. So, uh, keep her busy, will you? Will do. Jack and Vera still looking at brochures? Yeah, still looking and arguing. Have they decided where to go yet? <laughs> I'd like to know where I'd send them. <laughs> no, love. I'm stopping out of it, Joyce. Busy for you, though, if they decide to swan off. Oh, well, they'll get Raquel in, I suppose. Yeah, but who'll be in charge? You know, living in. Well, I've no idea, love. I mean, like I say, I'm stopping out of it. Well, it don't matter where you get your brochures from, does it? Holidays are holidays, aren't they? Gilroy, Vera, you do not get bargains off Gilroy. I don't want a bargain. I want somewhere posh. Look, we're somebody's now, Jack. Now, look, there's a nice hotel here in Ibiza. <clears throat> Who's going to mind this place while we're gone? Well, I'll ring Rodney Bostock. No, you can't. This is a free house. He works for Newton and Ridley. You don't want to go, do you? No, I'm just saying we've got a problem. But not half the problems we'll have if we get a flaming holiday from Gilroy. Look, I'll sort the pub out. You'll just get us booked in somewhere. I don't know. You're still scared of him, aren't you? Who? That Alec Gilroy. You still think of him as your, as your boss? Don't be soft. Look, he's a jumped-up nobody, Jack. You're a jumped-up somebody. So get down to that travel agent and, and book us somewhere with a bit of class <coughs> that's befitting our status. What are you doing? Putting my nails. Well, don't it nearly flipped in my tea, then. Now listen, Jack. Two weeks, bed, breakfast, and evening meal. Get it sorted. There you are, love. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Rita. 
Looking forward to reading this, aren't we, Daniel? It's a big article on M people, he likes them. Does he? Do you know him? No, I can't say as I do, love. Now, ask him. He's young and beautiful, he'll know. Oh, thank you, Rita. What's that? M people. Daniel likes them. Oh, yeah. No, no, I'm more Mike and the mechanics myself. Oh, what chance do you get to listen? Any old get into it, is he? Mr Barlow's not there all the time. Oh, all right. Hey, um, I take my hat off to you, I do. Minding kids for fun. Not for fun. It's a job. Oh. It's my night off tonight. Ashley's taking me to Blackpool. Oh, yeah. Under fear, eh? Under fear. You behave yourself. <laughs> it's the Pleasure Beach, if you must know. And we'll be coming straight back. See you. All right, enjoy Tra Blackpool. <laughs> now, what can I do for you? Uh, pay the papers, Rita, before right. the bailiffs come knocking. Uh, you don't mind me saying you're not looking your usual colourful self this morning? No, love. As soon as Mavis gets back, I'm uh, off to a funeral with Fred. Fred Elliot? Mm. Oh, yeah. Finally killed that horse, has he? <laughs> no, he hasn't. Mutual friend of ours has passed on. You know, working in this hospital's made you very insensitive, Martin Platt. <laughs> Kill the horse. Bye-bye. I'll make not about them, will it? No, no, he's away for the day. But Dorothy will fix you up when she's finished. Mm. Have you any, any ideas on where you're going? Well, we want someone a little bit top draw, you know, to mix with our own kind, like. You know. Oh, what kind's that, Jack? Well, business folk, you know, for them as have made it. A bit of encouragement for you there, Deirdre. For me? Right. Well, just like you, I used to once work for Gilroy, didn't I? Look at me now, eh? <laughs> Could be your role model, couldn't I? Oh, I see. Oh. I'll uh, give you a shout when Dorothy's free. Right, lovely. Oh, you've done it. Mm. Oh, that's smashing, love. Shall I put it up in the window? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. While you're doing that, I'll put the kettle on. Right. Hello, Jack. Hello, sweetheart. Take it from me, Percy, lad, if there were a successful method, I'd have found it. I agree with you. I'm only telling you what I read. Oh, smoke, frog, spawn, I've tried the lot. I say, I've tried the lot. If earth's not meant to grow, it won't. Fresh cut grass, this fella said. You boil it for half an hour and then apply it to the scalp with a paintbrush. Rubbish. Of course it is. Did he say how long you've got to leave it on? You've heard a note from your ex, then? Reg, no. I don't know what I'd do if he did call. Mind you, he won't visit, that I'm sure, because he's not brave enough. <laughs> it's a mess, isn't it? Well, keep telling yourself, you know, it could be worse. I mean, we've only got a flat and a shop to fight over, whereas you, well... Yeah, it's one consolation for you. No kids involved, yeah. eh? Hiya. Yeah. Oh. You don't mind for John, you do, yeah? <laughs> Shove off. Um. You're Jack today? No, he's gone to book us an holiday. That's what I've come to see you about. Hey, listen, if you want any more drinks while well, they're on the house... Oh, thank you! <laughs> I thought of him straight away, you know. Me? Yeah, well, who else would we ask, eh? Who else knows the ropes? I mean, you know what it's like. You can't just leave anybody in charge, can you? Hey, hang on. Hey, it'd be like old times, Bill. You'd have your own room. Run at place as if it's your own. And like I say, me and our Jack, well, we can't just trust anybody, can we? And having you having done it, you know... Vera, Vera, you've lost me. But just let me hazard a guess. What you want is me to look after this place while you and Jack are away. Yeah, but it'd be only for two weeks, you know. I mean, we'd stock up fridge, and when we come back, uh, perhaps we'd uh, bung in a few, you know. No. I've got a business to run, OK? I can't afford the time. What, I'm offering you free board and lodging, and you're turning me down? Yeah. Sorry. Do you know you wouldn't know a good off if you fell over at you, Bill Webster? Business! Putting washers on taps and unbunging toilets! Ugh. Think them three drinks are still on? <laughs> I did right getting rid of him, Betty. It's a dead loss. So you get Raquel in. She can only do you a few hours, you know. Still leaves you a couple of hands short. Oh, I've got a bigger problem than that. And I can only do my usual hours, you know. I need to be at home when they fit my new curtains. Curtains? Yeah. When? When's your holidays? Oh, I think we better leave it, love. I don't think you've got what I'm looking for anyway. I'm sorry. Right. You get fixed up, Jack. No, Deirdre, me and the last can't quite agree on the small print, you know. Uh, what's the problem? Monte Carlo fully booked, is it? No, no, it's, it's the prices, you see. I reckon if I shop around, I'll get them a lot cheaper. Well, Dorothy was showing you the bargains, I saw her. 
Just some good holidays there, Jack. Yes, but I'm still paying top whack. Even then, aren't I? I mean, she, she doesn't know, bless her. She wouldn't know, would she? That uh, me and Alec go back a long way. <laughs> you didn't get a discount? No, no. Look in the window, Jack. Tenerife, one ninety nine. Any cheaper, you'd be flying with Amy Johnson. Perhaps when he comes in, you have a word with him. I mean, tell him I've been in, like. You Won't know. do any good. Well, it means I've got no choice and take my business elsewhere. I'll uh, tell him I've been in. I'll tell him. He'll weep buckets, but I'll tell him. Ta da, Louis. Ta da, Jack. Hi, son. Hi, Jack. Don't shout. I'm only here to talk. Just a few words, that's all. Get out, Steve. I've got nothing to say to you, and if Grandad catches Which you. Which you won't, then... because he's not here, I know he isn't. So come on, Mickey. Mrs. Rashid, this person's upsetting me. I'd really like him to go. Oh, this is you heard what she said, Steve. Look, I'm here to talk to my wife, all right? I know, but she doesn't want to talk to you. If he doesn't go, then I'll have to phone the police. Vicky! Look, in there's private. Just back off, Steve, or else I'll have to do as Vicky says. I'll have no choice. All right, then, if we can't talk now, we can talk another time. I can wait. <laughs> Bite door, put them next to the order of service. Oh, right on. Not for each guest as they arrive. Just hope there's enough. Charlie would have been a popular fellow. Well, what are you doing? I'm outside shaking hands. Oh. As master dealer, it's expected. Right. I know one thing. Your granddad'll hit the roof when you tell him. Well, he doesn't need to know, does he? It's sinister, if you ask me. He must have been watching the place to know that Alec wasn't here. Well, it's understandable, that, because they, they don't get on, do they? Look, love, um, it's none of my business and I, I don't want to get involved, but... Well, he frightened you, didn't he? He just surprised me. I didn't even think Steve could be that stupid. What if it happens again and I'm not here? I'd really prefer it if my granddad didn't know. Would you promise me you won't tell him? Please? It's a terrible shot. Anyway, I'll see you again. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Hello, Rita. Look, I didn't know you were coming. I, I could have given you a lift. Hello, Al. Uh, of course, Charlie was one of your lot, weren't he? It's a great dealer. Mm. Yes, yes. Did he come into your car? Look? No. Oh, well, mine's over here. Hold on, that woman, Roberts. I came with Fred, Alf. Oh. He'd have a shirt off my back if it weren't pinned to me underpants. Just saying to the vicar, lovely service, don't you think so? Yes, yes, it was. Uh, are you not going to Charlie's then? No. No, no, family only. We don't want to intrude. No, me not. Hey! You can give old Clem Percival a lift. Clem! Hey, hang on a minute. Clem! Alf's going your way. Ah, it'll give you somebody to chat to. Save your journey on your own. Come on, Rita. <laughs> See you, Alf. Carlo. Thanks, Fred. Right, Clem, the uh, car's over here. Tenerife and Benny Dormit are very reasonable. Deirdre, a minute. Oh, well, uh, won't be a sec. Okay. Sit down. Where's Vicky? Oh, well, uh, she's gone home. Nothing else for her to do. Oh, how was she? Uh, fine, yeah. Good, good. Now, don't answer right away. I want you to think about it. And when you tell me, don't waffle. Give it to me straight. Training. How do you feel about going on a course? A course? Yeah, so you can do the job properly, you know, like Dorothy. Oh, well, that's fine by me, Alec, if you think I'm suitable. Oh, I do. You're quick, you're pleasant, and you're honest. So tell me about today. Today, well, just routine, really. Oh, uh... Jack Duckworth called in. Jack Duckworth? Yeah, he didn't book anything, though. He didn't like your prices. Oh, uh -huh. after an El Cheapo, was yeah. he? Is he taking Vera? Well, yeah, of course he is. Oh, well, you can't blame him for wanting a bargain then, can you? I'm surprised he doesn't want compensation. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Oh. 
Lorette Del Mar. Oh, Jack, it sounds lovely. Oh, it should be. It cost enough, love. What did Alec Gilroy say? Were he impressed? I don't know. He wasn't there. I didn't like what he had on offer anyway, so I went to that place next door to the Quarp and sold some liners to stuff it and uh, send that message on to Mr Gilroy. Well, good for you. Mm. How did you go? Well, Betty's grumbling already, but that's Betty, isn't it? I don't see not a Raquel. Who were we leaving in charge, then? You said you were sorting that out. <laughs> Virtually told me where to stick it, cheeky devil. Who did? Uh, Bill Webster. Bill Webster wouldn't do it in a million years. You fired him, remember? Yes, and now I know why. He bears grudges. Hey, Jack, five-star hotel. I can't wait, can you? Swan Hotel, just you and me. I think we might have company, Vera. You are? The pub. If we don't find someone to look after it, it might just be coming with us. Mr Barlow's going to be late. He's just phoned up. Great. Can't you leave him someone? Pleasure Beach will be short by the time we get there. I'll have to wait for him. Go without me if you like. Sorry. Can we give it another five minutes? But I've enjoyed today. Think Charlie or mine. <laughs> just as nice as I am. <laughs> Can you go have another cup of tea? No, I've still got some, thanks. Plenty of other things to enjoy, you know, Rita. You should go out more. Yeah, I've been thinking that myself. Well, think more about it. I'm not chatting you up, I'm giving you advice. I know what it's like. I went through a recluse period after Sybil died. Was it a happy marriage? Thinking back, it was. Lord knows how she put up with me, but she did. She used to say she married me on the rebound. I think the fellow before used to work for Dunlops. <laughs> See, I never know when you're being serious. What's have I bit, Rita? I can't make them love me. I make them laugh. Well, I've laughed enough today, I can tell you. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> it's been good for me and all. You know, I could spend the rest of my life sitting here with you. Hey. Now you are chatting me up. Don't you flatter yourself. No, they make a very nice cup of tea here. Buns aren't bad at all. Uh, can I get me mug? Hang on. What mug? Well, the one Anne got me for Christmas. Forgot to take it with me. What's up with you? Um, I'll, I'll drop it off later. Oh, don't be daft. Only take two seconds. Oh, hello. Hiya. Get it, Andy. Quick. All right, yeah. Uh, you couldn't lend us a quid for a couple of chips, could you, Dad? I'm not eating for days. Ex-lodger. I've got it. Thanks. Claire, Andy, Andy, Claire. Hello. Pleased to meet you. Oh, by the way, your psychiatrist rang. He's fixed that appointment for Thursday, you know, for the lobotomy. So, come on, let me see you across the road. The traffic's bad this time of night. Bye-bye. Bye, Claire. Bye, Andy. Out. Hey, hey. She's very nice. Sorry. Mm. Student. Fancies himself as a bit of a comedian. Mm. Sorry about that. That's all right. Oh, my mum says you're going away. Well, I'm hoping so. Got a few problems at the moment. Yeah, Betty's none too pleased, my mum was saying. Your mum does a lot of saying, doesn't she? Well, if it's best, I'll be sure to buy me an answer. What? A fortnight of evening? You've got it. Have a nice time. Look, we haven't gone yet. Anyway, I've got another to look after this place yet. Oh, well, don't worry about that. I'll have a word with our Gary. Well, I'm not that desperate. Well, what I mean is... I know it? what you mean, Vera. Thanks a lot. Yes, Fred? Scotch and a threat, please, love. Yeah. Duckingfield. Pardon? Duckingfield. That's where he lives now. Oh, Clem Percival. He used to live at the top of Chapel Street. Before the flood, he lived at the top of Chapel Street. Duckingfield. Emergency staff meeting. I can't apologise enough. Right, OK, I'll take over from here. You two get yourselves off. It's OK, Mr Barlow, we're not going. Transport went ages ago. We're being Blackpool by now. Oh, and it's all my fault. I'm so sorry, Cabby. It doesn't matter, honest. It does to me. 
Don't be rude, Ashley. No, 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 he's, uh, he's quite right. Well, I was looking forward to it. We both were. Will you stop behaving like a spoilt kid? I'm sorry, Mr Barlow. Do you want to take over? Yeah. Shut it, Ashley. It's not his fault. He puts on you, Kelly. You make me sick with your sulking. I'm fed up with it. Look, Kelly, I'm desperately sorry if I've caused any oh, sort of... Oh, take a notice of him. He'll get over it. Well, what say you, don't know? He's got to put his foot in it again, or what? No, no, don't dance it right away. Just finish your biscuit first. Fifty-one years ago, and hardly mentioned on wireless. They soon forget, don't they? What's that? War finished in Europe. Oh, I see. And what were you doing on that day, Percy, 51 years ago? Nothing. I didn't know. Oh, yeah? What did you do when you knew? I got drunk, didn't I? Get off. Well, the war was over, wasn't it? So what were you doing celebrating and drowning your sorrows? You what? A joke, Percy. It's a joke. Do you want another one? All right, go on, then. Judy, have another one over here, please. Oh, Hi, yeah, boss. All the apps. Oh, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm sorry we couldn't do business, Jack. Uh, not a bad little place you've got, but uh, not up to our standard, if you know what I mean. No. No, it's the working class we tend to cater for, you see. Right. Mind you, I'm surprised you chose Spain. I would have thought Egypt would have been more suited to you. No, oh, Egypt, it's, it's too hot there. I don't like it too hot, you know. Oh, a nice run out for your camel overcoat, though, wasn't it? Twice round the pyramids, back in time for tea. You never stopped trying to tackle Mickey, do you? <laughs> You're a soft target, Jack. Anyway, come to think of it, you're a bit of a prankster yourself, from what I've heard. Sniffing about after a discount. Uh, more enough than expectations, though, Alec. A very eager one, though, didn't he? No. Oh. Family. Did he get one or was he just passing through, eh? <laughs> Steve MacDonald. He was coming in as I was going out. What, you can tell me, Alec? Go on. No, Jack. You tell me. Steve MacDonald. Leave them pots, I'll do No, it's okay. I said leave them. All right, then I won't help you. I'll tell you how you can help me. By helping yourself. Yeah, well, give us a chance, Mum. I'm just getting my head together, all right? <sighs> you, uh, you going out tonight? No, I'm studying. Well, I'm trying to. And what about you? You're not stopping in, are you? Well, a bit scared of going out, actually, Mum. In case you change the locks, you know. Um, you. I'll do this upstairs, all right? Thank you. I mean it. You are not dropping on me just because you're in a mess. Apart from anything else, I need me own space, OK? Yeah, well, it's going to take time, Mum. I've told you. Um, you've got a visitor. Oh, you're here, are you? What do you want? I warned you to stop away and you couldn't. Well, this time you're really in love. Excuse me, I've got a right you've to see... You've no rights to anything. What's he done? I've been to see Vicky, More that's... than that, he threatened her. That is a lie! Is it? Well, we'll see who the police believe then, won't we? The police? Threatening a trial witness, breaching bail conditions. They'll have to know, of course they will. They'll chuck the key away oh, this time. I had to talk to her. All I did was You go... heard what Alec Gilroy said. The police. Again. You make me sick. First time in your life, you do it off your own bat and you make a right mess of it. I mean, what possessed you to pay for the holiday there and then? It was a last minute booking, Vera. You don't get them on the knock. Anyway, it was a bargain. Well, it would have been if you could have gone, but we can't, can we? So it's like, it's like throwing money down the drain. Look, love it, I promised you a holiday because you deserve it. Now, if the worst comes to the worst and we can't get a replacement, I will stay here and man the fort. Oh, no. No chance, Jack. I am not going on my own. And I tell you this, if I have to stick here, there'll be hell to pay. Yeah, so what's different then? What did you say? No, I said, I said leave it to me, I'll fix it. Don't give all worrying. So are you going to ask then? Betty. Oh, Betty won't do it. Can I have it get to stand on her own two legs for half an hour as it is? Ah, just leave it to me. And the old up with charm. Do you know that fills me with hope, Jack? It really does. Yeah. Oh, that was great, Mum. Nothing like a good fry-up to set you up for a busy day. So what have you got in mind, then? Well, I thought I might go down the travel agents, see what's on offer. Are you going to do what? 
Well, I hear they've got some cracking little numbers in it, that Sunliner's shop. Have you gone start raving mad? What? I think my mum's referring to Mr Gilroy's threat of putting you through the shredder if you go within a mile of that place. Ooh, Ooh he sent shivers down my spine, that. I was awake all night, sweating about what the pot-bellied idiot was going to do to me. Come on. I've been threatened off real pros in my time. Grumpy out the seven dwarfs is hardly going to bother me, is he? He said he was going to talk to the police about you breaking the court order not to see Vicky. He should know what that means. We've all been through this once already. So where are the boys in blue, then? They're taking the time, aren't they? He's a bag of wind. He knows he can't do anything unless Vicky complains, which she won't. Unbelievable. Steve, please. Don't talk to Vicky. Things are bad enough. Who said anything about talking to Vicky? All I'm going to do is go down and look in the shop window. There's no crime in that, is there? I'll see you later. Steve! Leave him, Mum. Go with him. No, I won't. You've got to try and get through to him. You can't tell Steve anything. Nobody ever could. When has he ever taken the blind bit of notice? Somebody's got to talk some sense into him. Well, I'm sorry, but you can count me out. Because I've run out of breath. Well, I don't think you could complain about the send-off, you know. Well, they never do, do they? <laughs> That's what you think, Maureen. But there's many a ghost moaning round a country churchyard because some mingy relative stuck them six foot under in a cardboard box instead of a proper casket with knobs on. Well, I'd better get them to screw a bit of brass onto your orange boxes I've got prepared for you, then. I'll be <laughs> expecting a bit more than that or you won't see the back of me. And I want none of this modern English stuff. I want James the First. The only time in your life you can rely on a decent bit of poetry. How are you going to go out? Oh, I expect old will be cremated. She likes things tidy, you know. <laughs> what can I do for you? Can I have a bar of chocolate, Mum? No, you can't. Go on, then, Amy. A packet of crisps ain't enough for a growing lad. It's more than enough. And I'll tell you for why. Because I haven't got the money to stand around talking about how much I'm going to lay out on a funeral. I can't even afford to live, never mind die. Just give me my change. Here, let me treat you. We don't want charity, thank you. Anything you get for nothing, you end up paying double for in the long run. Ta, come on. Oh, let it go, Grandad. I didn't ask you to go and stir things up as it was. I'm only looking after your best interests. Yes, I know you are, but, well, you've obviously put the fear of God into him, so he'll not be around again, will he? Oh, you can bet on that. After I'd had my say, should have seen his face, ashen it was. The blood drained right down to his socks. But I'm all for putting the nail in his coffin, to be sure. Go on, pick up that phone. Tell the police he's been bothering you. It'll only make matters worse. For him, not for you. And you're my number one priority. What do you think, Deirdre? Well, I think no marriage should break up like this. But they do, and it's a tragedy. But Alex Wright, dragging it out is just prolonging the agony. There you have it. Straight from the horse's mouth. And there speaks a woman of experience. Yeah, I wish I wasn't. Go on, pick up the phone. He'll not be round again. But he might. OK, then, if he is, that I will do. Promise? Yes. Morning, Fred. What you got there? Brochures. Apropos our little tete-a-tete -tete yesterday. Oh, I wouldn't grace it with that title, Fred. It were more just a cup of tea and a cream bun. There are some grand places to be discovered in this sceptred isle of ours, Rita. Have a gander at these. Well, I haven't really got the time just now, Fred. Now, Rita, time and tide waiteth for no man. Ah, good morning, Kelly, love. Rita, Mr Elliot. Hmm. And what have you been doing to my little Ashley? Nothing. Nothing, she says. He's wandering around looking as if he's lost a prime fillet and found a chipolata. Fred, I'm trying to run a business here. Look, can we leave these until, say... The Rovers, tonight? I shall await you with bated breath. I prefer it if you just breathe normally, Fred. Ha, <laughs> bientôt. Hey, then, what can I get you, love? Just a packet of envelopes, please. Oh, it's not often we hear a young'un's writing letters. Has your man put the phone out of bounds? If they're abroad, some friends of us at college with who've gone over there as nannies. Oh, that sounds nice. Can you go as a granny? <laughs> wouldn't mind giving that a bash myself. I've thought about it as well. I wouldn't mind leaving home. That bad, is it? I'm just tired of being treated like a kid. You wouldn't really go, though, would you? I mean, what would Ken do without you? He wouldn't like that one little bit. Hi. 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 So, tell me, what's all this mystery phone call about, then? It's ours, Steve. <laughs> you do surprise me. 
Here's me thinking you wanted a romantic meeting amongst the roses. Just that's all that. No, sorry. So what's he been up to then? He's threatening to keep on pestering Vicky. <laughs> oh, is he? Oh, well, we all know where he'll end up if he carries on down that road, don't we? Free B and B at Her Majesty's before his feet can touch the ground. Yeah, well, Alex already read him the riot act on that score, but he doesn't seem to listen. Nobody can get through to him. You think he'll listen to me, do you? It'll be first, Liz. You've experienced this, Jim. Tell me about it. No, you tell him about it. Let him know what it was like on the inside. Where is he? He said he'll be home later. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll do my best. As long as you're here, you fancy having a cup of coffee with me? I won't be in when you come round. No, of course you won't. I'm sorry, but you do understand, don't you? Yeah. I understand. Bye-bye. Dad, Betty Lovell, can I do that for Look, you? I can, can manage, I? thank you. Yes, I know you can. You could run this place with one arm tied behind your back, a blindfold on, and still have time to do your hot pot. I'm not doing it, Jack. <laughs> doing what? Well, you're about to ask me, will I take over, you know, when you and your Vera go swanning by the bullseye, what? aren't you? No, no, no. no, no, no. Mind you, now you say that, that's not a bad idea, you know. That's what you think. No, no, well, come on, there's a thought there, isn't there? I mean, if you and your Billy move in here, just keeping tabs on the place, yes, yes. you wouldn't be doing any more than you're doing no. now. <laughs> Plus, you'd have a few extra quid in your pocket at the end of the doings, wouldn't you? I said you were wasting your time. Thanks, love. Oh, thanks, oh. Betty. Better bother, Jack. You reckon you could get a refund on them tickets for us? <laughs> Not in a million years. Yeah, but what happens if you, if you took them off, mate, sold them on, and then took, kept a few quid for the, the, well, your problem? It doesn't know. work like that, why, Jack. Why not, Alec? Well, you should have bought them from me in the first place, but then again, you see, I wasn't up market enough for you, was I? Are you not going then, Jack? Do we lose my little earner? Yeah, we both can't go, and Alvira doesn't want to go without me. Oh, so you're going on your own then? I'll come and keep you company if you like. Have you asked her? Uh, hey, your husband's trying to talk me into going away with him. Well, that's fine by me, as long as you promise not to bring him back. Very funny, Vera. Now, look, have you asked her? I'm busy. Well, I am busy and all, but I tell you what, Jack, I am browned off with it. Well, why don't you just go and have a little nap, eh? Yeah, have a little siesta, practice for you. Well, that's nearest I'll get to it. Why should I work my fingers to the lawn just to give them a chance to go and bask in the sunshine? They've not been doing the job five minutes. I've been slaving here for donkeys years and I've never had a holiday. We had a honeymoon. Oh, yeah, but that was different. Mm. <laughs> Listen. What? If we were both to work here, yeah. we could maybe get a bit of money together and then we could have a second honeymoon. They'll never pay us enough money to go to Tenerife. No. Nice little week in Wales, it suit. Uh, no. Not forget I mentioned it, though. That's not the reason, is it? What? It's me, isn't it? You're frightened that if I get my feet behind that bar, I won't be standing on them in half an hour. Look, it never crossed my mind, Billy. Look, I don't... Well, I, I can understand you're not trusting me, but it would be nice if you gave me a chance. All right. Sorry. We'll do it. What? You heard. Bless you, Betty. Oh, mm. Bless both of you. Stay in. I'll, I'll go and get you a drink to celebrate. That's just a lemonade for me, Jack. I'm not saying I've decided to go over there, Mr Barlow. Although it seems like a nice little job my friends found for me. But I've got to think of the future. And to be honest, I've my own life and I need to look for somewhere with some kind of live-in post. Well, yes, of course, but... Uh, 
I'm sure you'll appreciate how unsettling it'll be for Daniel. And, to be honest, for me as well. I don't want to leave Daniel, I really don't. But I do need a life of my own, not with my mum and dad breathing down my neck. Maybe we could come to some arrangement. Like what? Like me moving in here? Oh, now, that'd be brilliant. uh, And it'd really help you as well, wouldn't it? Hang on a sec, Kelly. No, I didn't say that. But you think about it. Um... Well, yes. Oh, it'd be great. Look, sorry, he hasn't eaten his tea. You'll have to fix him something. I would, but I've got to get that bus. Yeah. Yeah. It would be brilliant. (laughs) Hang up, son. Hang up. What do you want? Oh. Right. See, I'm going on my holidays, you see. So it's on me for. Well, do you know, I've spent the hour sitting down. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I spent the last few days thinking of now tales about other people. Completely, completely forgetting about them that are nearest to my heart. Them that depend on me. The little babies. Talking about me? No, no, no. So I'm talking about my pigeons, you see. I need somebody to look after my pigeons that understand them and care about them. And I know you've got a soft spot for them. Well, they're all right. Well, they are. I know I can depend on you. So, right, you start tomorrow morning. I'll leave all the instructions. God bless you. Uh, how much? Oh, now, come on, son. I wouldn't insult you by offering you money. Well, you paid me last time. Aye. Go on, couple of quid, couple of packets of crisps in it for you. Uh, a tenner. What? Well, it's short notice, and I'll have to cancel the jobs for this. Take it or leave it, and I'll need the money up front. This what they teach you at school, is it? Hey, it's a sad world. There, that should be enough to keep your face stuffed with chocolate. Hmm. What's this? Family reunion? Yeah, sort of thing, yeah. Well, where's the cake? I've been waiting here all afternoon for you, Stephen, okay? Well, that's funny. I checked my file of facts, there was no mention of a meeting with the heavy mob. Oh, here we go. Right, I'm off. Andrew, sit down, will you? No, I won't, Dad. I'm not playing referee. Look, I'm not here for a fight. Yeah, well, I've heard that before. What does that mean? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You know, every time I walk into the room, he walks out again. I'm beginning to think he doesn't like me. It's Victoria who doesn't like you, Steve. Our oh, Mum's been blabbing, has she? Your mother cares about you, we all do, son. Oh, I move. Oh. God, I could knock some sense into you. No, you couldn't, Dad. All right. Fine. Fine. Take a look at me, please. Tell me honestly what you see. You want the truth? Yes. A loser. Well, I can't really argue with you on that score now, can I? After all, I have lost everything, haven't I? I've lost my home, my army career, my marriage, everything. What have I got in return? I've got a prison record. Not exactly a smart swap, would you say? Well, I can agree with you on that one, Daddy. So why are you walking down the same road as me? I am not. Yes, you are. Look, Stephen, I spent a load of time pestering a woman I love deeply. Because I couldn't credit the fact that she didn't give a damn about me anymore. And look what happened to me. They locked me up, and that's exactly what they're about to do to you. Can't you see that? Oh, I don't think there's any comparison, Dad. In fact, I think it's quite the reverse. Where in the name of God do you get that idea from, eh? Don't tell me you're still kidding yourself that that wee girl's carrying a torch for you. Look at what she's done to you, Stephen. She's thrown you out of your own house, your own home. She's put a stop to your joint bank account. Now, believe me, that is not the way a woman behaves when she's madly in love. Not by any way, stretch of the imagination. Look. Stephen, I don't know whether you love this wee girl or not. Quite frankly, I don't give a damn because it doesn't make a blind bit of difference either way. Now, just trust me on this. I've been there, okay? Excuse me. The feelings I have for Vicky are my own business. And I tell you this much, I'm not sniffing round like a lame dog like you did with Mum. Oh, no. Well, that's not what I have heard. Well, you hear wrong. And I tell you another thing. She's not picking up the phone, dialing the police every time she sets sight on me. Not like your wife. And do you want to know why? No, educate me. Go on. Because you're wrong. 
My wife doesn't hate my guts. As I say, it's quite the reverse. And she's coming round slowly but surely. So that's why she sends her granddaddy round here, him threatening to cause havoc, is that right? She didn't send him round. He came round here, frothing at the gills, scared stiff. Scared I was going to get to her. And that can only mean one thing. She's weakening. She's on the edge. I think he's not going to send me to prison, Dad. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not ever. Yeah, well, I believe that too, Sunshine. Yeah, well, that was different, wasn't it? You only saw what you wanted to see. Blinded by your own feelings. Well, that's always been your problem, isn't it? That's why you're a loser. And you're a wiser man, are you, son? I don't think I'll stick around for tea if there's no cake. Look after yourself, Dad. Because I'm sure as hell nobody else will. Come on, let's get that clothes sign up. Sally's only ten minutes late. I'm starving. I want my dinner. We can drop the keys off. Oh, all right, anything for peace and quiet. How long have you been hiding here? He was hiding him just not very tall. Come out here where we can see you. Who is it? It's Jamie. Come on, let's be having your weird clothes in. This is a shop, innit? Aye. And you sell things. For them as has got money. Not for window shoppers. Change your tune now, haven't you? Oh, Jack, I've been out for hours. Why didn't you wake oh, me? Oh, you need your beauty sleep, don't you? What do you mean by that, Sakura man? Oh, come on, you know what I mean. Anyway, it's all fixed, all sorted. From tomorrow, it's sun, sea and sand and little drinks with umbrellas and jerry's in. Do you mean she's agreed? Jacked up with Kanchama Paris off its perch. From tomorrow, you can have a siesta anytime you want. Oh, brilliant, Jack. Hey, and you better join me, won't you? Oh! Do you want another? What I want and what I can afford are two different things. Could I get you one? Why? Now, don't bite me head off again, love. Look, I'm sorry if I stuck my big feet in it this morning. You shouldn't apologise. It was me. I'm like that with everybody, and I know it doesn't help. Give the girl a drink, Julie. Right, oh. <laughs> Trisha, I knew I'd find you in here. I don't live here, you know. I'm not suggesting. It's just your lad's waiting outside for you. What's he doing here? Supposed to be having tea at his mates. Well, it doesn't look that way. Oh, no. What's he gone and done now? If it's not one thing... Sorry, Alf. Uh, you wouldn't care to join me in a drink, would you? I've got my mother waiting. Sorry, Alf. What's going on? I brought a steamer. Oh, Jamie, you've not been nicking again, have you? No, I brought it with my wages. What wages? Wages for looking after Jack's pigeons. And you spent it all on... Get off me, ma'am. Anyone could see me. I'm in the street. Well, let me give you a hand, then. No, I'm all right. Living in at Mr Barlow's. It's got to be better than staying at home with my mum and dad on sentry duty 24 hours a day. Well, I suppose so. But he won't go for it, will he? He might. It's worth a try. And he don't want to lose me. Honest, you should have seen me. I didn't think he had it in me. I thought I was going to go red as a beetroot with the amount of fibs I were telling. Well, they might have you living in. But he don't even want me knocking on door as it is. Never mind. No! He feels ever so bad about the Blackpool number. And I've stressed, I must have a life of my own. It'll be fine as long as, you know, we don't push it too far. Well, no, we wouldn't do that. And it'd help him. Suits everybody, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's brilliant. Now, I thought York might be just up your street, steeped in history and a tea room every ten paces. <laughs> Goes back to, to Vikings, you know. All that rape and pillage. It's a bit more refined now. Well, I should hope so. Well, I've marked some hotels here. See what takes you fancy. Some of them have even got four posters. I think you're running a bit ahead of yourself, Fred. Oh, no, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to imply... We I wasn't can get to I mean... York there and back in the day and still have time for a cup of tea. No, you can't cram it all in at high speed. You want a bit of leisure and luxury. I find my own bed more than comforting, Fred. Oh, I can imagine that.
Steve, no. V Vicky, wait, please, just one minute, and then you can phone the police. I won't run away, I swear. You can throw me in the back of the van. I don't care. If that's the price of this one minute, then that's fine by me. Look, I know I've no right to ask. I can't say you owe me for the for the good times that we've had. You don't owe me anything. I know I'm the one who asks. Look, look, look I know, but, but please. You're wasting your time. Look, Vicky, look. You think I'm here to ask you to let me off the hook? No, I'm not even sure that's what I want. Perhaps it's just time I paid my dues. What is this game? Look, I can understand you being suspicious. Like I can understand you don't love me anymore. I mean, that was hard. I didn't really expect it to be, but... Oh no, that's not right. I just never really thought that I could lose your love. That's vanity, isn't it? Big-headed Steve. But I admit it, I took it for granted. Well, that was the problem, wasn't it? You, you never really know what, you, what you've got until you lose it. But my, my family has a history of, of never knowing what really matters until it's too late. Yeah, and it is too late. Look, look, yeah, I know it is, but I'm not asking that. Look, I don't deserve you. I never did. I'm not trying to make a play for you, Vicky. Look, whatever happens at court, whether they put me down, whether they let me off, it doesn't make a difference. I've already lost the most precious thing in my life, and that's you. What is this? I love you. What, do you think that's going to make me change my mind? No, no, and I don't want you to. I think what you're doing is right. You're better off without me. I'm no good for you, Vicky. I'm a loser. Well, look at me. I mean, I've lost you. Do you want to phone the police? I mean, perhaps you should. No, well, that's it. Goodbye. I, I promise I'll, I'll never bother you again. That bed's too soft, if you ask me. Sag's in the middle. You need to put your climbing boots on to get to the edge. <laughs> you were all for coming in here while the duckies went away, so don't start grumbling. Oh, I can put up with it for a week or two. Oh. After all, it's not the state of the bed that counts, it's who's in it with you. Oh, hey, hey, that'll do it. <laughs> it's, it's only breakfast time. <laughs> well, that'll be Joyce. Morning, love. Morning. The tea's just brewed, so go and help yourself. Oh, Ta. Now, is there anything particular you want me to do this morning, Betty? Well, just your usual, and I'll be well pleased, love. What about me, then? What about you? Well, you've got your usual jobs. Joyce got her usual jobs. I haven't got one, though, have I? Oh. So, and I want to help. Well, the main thing you can do, love, is go home to our house, oh. morning and evening, and, uh, well, feed the cat and uh, see if there's any post. I mean, we don't want people to think the house is empty, do we? And I don't want to be burgled again, love. No, right. But uh, what about here? I mean, in the pub, like? Yeah, well, there's one very important thing I want you to do in the pub, love. Name it, Sarge. Stay away from the beer pumps, cos there's two things I don't want you under. One, my feet, and two, the influence. Good lad. Morning. Oh, morning, Kay. Daniel's still fast asleep. Mind you, he had me up at 3.30 this morning. And didn't get back again till 5. All right, well, he'll have, he'll have some catching up to do then. Yeah, not to mention his father. Mr Barlow? Yep. Have you thought any more about me coming to live in? Uh, yes, yes, I have. All right, so what about it then? Well, look, I'm late for school. We'll talk about it tonight, OK? OK. Derek, I was just thinking, seeing as you're off today, the woodwork in our bedroom's looking very dingy. Oh, is it? <laughs> yes, it is. You must have noticed. Maybe. When I'm in the bedroom with you, why should I look at the paintwork, eh? <laughs> oh, Derek. <laughs> now, I was just going to say, though, that... 
Maybe if you find yourself at a loose end, you might fancy putting a coat of paint. Maybe. I'm not going to be at a loose end. I'm going up to the allotment. Communing with nature, at one with the earth and its fruits. Oh, I see. Well, hope it keeps fine for you. It will, it will. <laughs> Bye. Hey! Oh, I don't know. How do they expect to make a living if they don't turn in and start work? I haven't seen any of them for a while. They've got problems, you know. Yeah, haven't we all. My problem is I'm not getting any rent. Hey! Right, now listen. I'm going to try and get my head around some revision this morning. So, you know, I'm going to need to concentrate. Sorry, have I made a noise or something? I haven't said anything. No, well, it's just with you hovering around, doing nothing. Except mooching about. It sort of puts me off, you know what I mean? Oh, well, excuse me for living. You get that, eh? What, somebody after you? No, of course not. Well, that makes a change. Steven? He is, mate. Yes, come through. Thanks. Ah, at last, the invisible man. I've been knocking my knuckles so on your factory unit. Little matter of my back rent. Yeah, well, I can't pay up, Skip. Yes, yeah, so am I. I've got my right goings and Fergie at the moment. What I want is some incomings, which includes what you owe me. Yeah, well, you have to ask Vicky. She's got the money. Well, you ask her. She's your wife. I can. The law says I'm not allowed to speak to her. Is he having me on? Uh, no, it's right. Not allowed to go anywhere near her until the court case comes up. So ask Vicky. She probably thinks she owns the business anyway. And uh, if you do see her, tell her I wish I could. But he loves that allotment, does Derek? Says he feels all attuned to the oneness of nature. Says it it gives him the feeling of of living close to the soil. That. That is better, because you're free from all the modern technology that we're all imprisoned by. I see. Well, while we're quiet, do you feel like going in the kitchen and turning that um, tap thingy, you know, that brings water to us, and then filling that shiny metal kettle and then connecting it up to the electric plug I had put in? Look, I know what you're getting at, Rita, but it does have a point. So do we. A PowerPoint. Now, are we going to get this cup of tea, or do we put the mugs on doorstep and wait for it to rain? No, you should have your cup of tea. Oh, love. Ah, Rita, I'm not shopping. I just wanted a word. Oh, aye. Aye. I'm, uh, I'm thinking of going back in the agency game. Oh. Artists. Just in a small way, you know, to start with any road. I'll look around, keep my eyes open for talent. Well, you know my methods. I do. I can't spend the rest of my life just stood behind a counter flogging package holidays to Benidorm. And you know how it is, you know, once you've had the showbiz bug. Mm. Anyway, I'll get to the point. Hey, you're not yeah. after signing me up again, are you? One night stands in old folks home because I'm not interested. Hey, hey I could get oh. you work, lady. Oh, yes, so don't write yourself off. But no, for now, what it is, I was in a club the other night and I spotted a singer, a girl. I thought it would be. You always did prefer them that dance backwards. Oh, she's good, Rita. Bit rough right now, but good. Just how good, though, I'm not sure. And I'd like your opinion. She's singing again tonight, so how about it? Would you come with me and give me a straight verdict? Yeah. OK. I think I might enjoy that. I'll make sure you do. We'll make a proper night of it. Go somewhere decent first, have a nice bite to eat. I'll come and pick you up then, eh? Fine. Hey, up, Derek, lad. Oh, hello, Billy. Come to work on your allotment? Well, to tell the truth, I'm trying to keep out of Betty's rut. Hey, like you're breaking out into a sweat. Oh, you mustn't do that, you know. Gardeners don't do that. Oh, I'd have thought a bit of vigorous, healthy exercise. No, no, you never see an expert gardener sweating. They always take their time, move slowly, methodically. I'm sure you notice that. Well, now you mention it. Park your hole, lad. Come and have a cup of coffee. Do you know, I think I will. All your city breaks are in there, and they all fly from Manchester. Oh, right. OK. okay. Good morning. Can I help you? I'm here on business. Not pleasure. Oh, well, Alex nipped out, and I don't know when he'll be back. Not Alec, I want to see. It's that young lady there. Me? That's right, yeah. Oh, well, I'll leave you to it, then. It's about the rent on my print shop. You're a month behind. Am I? 
I'm sorry, I've had other things to think about. I saw your husband. He said, talk to you. It's your business. Oh, he said that, did he? Yeah. You know we've made nothing from that print shop. I paid all the bills and Steve spent most of what came in. Mind you, I suppose it was just like a little toy for him, wasn't it? Just like his car. As a business, Mr Baldwin, it's dead. It's finished. My back rent still wants paying, though. Yes, well, that lease was between you and Steve, wasn't it? I'm sorry, Mr Baldwin, I just don't care anymore. And nothing you can say will make any difference or any threats that you may make. Because in two weeks' time, I could be in prison. So you can do whatever you like. Yeah, all right. You're in enough trouble. Right, forget the back rent. The lease is finished. You've got till tomorrow dinner time to get your stuff out of that unit. Then I want the keys back. OK? OK. Hey, our lad, get that down. You do the world of good. Thanks very much. Ooh. Good Lord! <laughs> I put a drop of two of rum in it before I left the rovers. Well, if you're looking after a fellow's pub for him, that's fair enough, I think, don't you? When you say a drop or two... Well, a quick slosh when Betty wasn't looking. <laughs> Makes all of a difference to a cup of coffee, though, doesn't it? It does indeed. <laughs> These newspaper cuttings, Billy. I see your name here. Your triumphs at the horticultural shows? Oh, in the past, I won one or two. Chris Ants. That was my first love. Then I got interested in veg. Prize marrow. Wolf Gaskell and myself. First prize for the show. That's what we got there. Next year, some swine broke in to the allotments and wrecked us exhibits. No. Lot of jealousy in show circles, you know. Lot of jealousy and spite. The common herd will always be jealous of talent and ability. I should know. I've, I've suffered enough myself. Have you? Oh, what, in the shows? Oh, no, no, no. In business life. Oh. oh. Do you know... I think I shall try my hand at competitive horticulture. Vision, imagination, attention to detail, those are my strengths, Billy. And I see no reason why they shouldn't help me make a formidable entrant at the local shows this year. Well, well, well I should do a little walking before you start running, my dear. Well, I've always had green fingers, Mavis will tell you. Ah, well, what you need for the shows is green wellies. Then you get your green wellies and you put them into the other fella before he puts them into you. It's only four o'clock. Doesn't it seem a long time from dinner to closing shop up? I'll tell you what does seem a long time, Mother. That's those evenings and nights I spend on my own across the road. I know, love, I'm sure it does. But you've got it to do. If you don't, Reg Oldsworth will walk all over you. Afternoon, what can we do for you? Oh, you came in this morning, didn't you? I meant to tell you this lady's been asking for you. You want to see me? If you're Maureen Holdsworth, yes, I do. Well, yes, yes, I am. I'm Yvonne. Yvonne Bannister? Uh, perhaps I should know you. Oh, come kind of... on. I'm sure Reg told you my name. Reg? What, my Reg? He's not your Reg. Not anymore. He's my Reg. You know it, and I know it. And it doesn't matter what you do, he's never coming back to you. So why don't you get real? Digging your heels in isn't going to get you anywhere. Let him go, you old cow. Give him his freedom. <laughs> neck, marching in here and boasting about stealing another woman's husband. You're nothing but a trollop. Get out of this shop. I'll say what I came to say. You've no right to keep battening on, Reg. You're a grown woman and you can fend for yourself. It's not as if you've got any kids to think about. I've never heard out like it, the nerve of it. Oh, and I know all about you. Reg told me all about you. And Reg will have told you a pack of lies and you'll have fallen for it and all. Well, you would, wouldn't you? You don't look overburdened with brains to me. Reg told me you never had a good word to say about him or anyone else come to that. He wasn't lying then, was he, you old bag? Get out! Well, Get out of this shop! Please! I don't want to shout him much. Not here, not anywhere. Well, we didn't start it. We didn't ask this trollop to come here slanging us. Have you come all the way from Lowestoft? I have, yes. Then you didn't just come to insult me and my mother then, did you? I hope you didn't. I was hoping you'd talk to me. Get rid of her. Don't listen to her, Maureen. It'll all be Reggie's lies and excuses. I'm glad to hear her, Mother. But not here. Maureen, you're a fool. You best come over with me. Get shut of her. Look after the shop, Mother. Right, come with me. Oh. 
Well, Jesse's there if you get lonely. And if that husband of yours shows his face... He won't do. No, no. Well, if he does, just you let me know. I'll sort him out. Have a lovely time, Grandad. You all right, Dorothy? Yes. All right. right, see you later. Bye, bye. Bye, love. Bye. She's holding up well. She is. That's because she's a Gilroy, is she? <laughs> You're not busy right now, are you? No. No. Make us all the proof. Okay. Afternoon. Afternoon. Very quiet in here. Trade slack in the travel game, I take it. Slack? It's been like a madhouse. It looks like to me. I say, it looks like to me. Yes, well, what we look and what we are are two different things. You ever noticed a swan gliding across a pond? I mean, it looks peaceful, doesn't it? But underneath, its little feet are going like billy -o. That's how it is in the travel business. If I had as many customers as this in my butcher shop, I'd be worried. Well, you ought to be worried. I mean, most people are turning vegetarian, aren't they? Well, what they're saving on meat, they're spending on holidays. I've not come here to discuss things you know not about. Well, that uh, day trip at Winder. Out into York by luxury coach. Oh, yes. I want to boot for it. The seats left, are there? We'd find room for you. Well, I want two in my name, Elliot. Two? That's for yourself and a friend, is it? Uh, a pal of yours, is it? Uh, another chap? Yeah. It's none of your business who it is. Man or beast. Same damn seats on Shire and Tits and Matu's backsides on them. Just get them booked. This is Reg's flat, isn't it? He told me all about it. Well, Troy told you all sorts of things, but it doesn't mean that they're true. Well, he told me you never really lived here, and now you're telling the solicitor it was We're your... We're husband and wife! What we had, what we own, belongs to both of us. You never had a proper home, you and him. You made him live with your mother and you I... You see, my mother out of this! Well, you didn't, did you? Reg told me he begged and pleaded with you to make a proper home. We had to live somewhere suitable. Well, my mother needs to be looked after. And that shop, that was bought with Reg's redundancy money and savings and now you want to Excuse steal it off me. and... All I well. want is what is suitable for me. My fair share. And when you talk about stealing... I didn't steal another woman's husband. You never loved him. Did Reg tell you that? He didn't need to. Well, I do love him, and he loves me. And there's no point in you trying to hold on to him and being awkward. I couldn't do that, me. I'd have more pride if a man oh. didn't love me. I wouldn't humiliate myself. Just let him go. <sighs> you come here today. I suppose this was Reg's idea. He doesn't know anything about it. You knew where to come, didn't you? And only he could have told you that. I thought I got past being surprised what Reg could do. What was wrong? You know, that husband of yours is dead, Sarkin. I was round at your house just now and I said, Gary, are you coming for a drink? I'm paying. I said, blimey, what is it, a full moon or what? Oh, taking a notice. Then he said, what is the pint in behind the bar? And he'd come in later after I'd gone. <laughs> I'll slap his legs when I see him. Judy, when you're ready, there's a fellow what's serving. Oh, she's got a right one on her tonight, dead and out her. Oh, it's the responsibility. She doesn't like it. Uh, it won't bother me, I tell you. I could run this place down on my head. And I might do one of these days. <laughs> yes, please. So, did you enjoy your day on the allotment, then? Wonderful, Mavis. Uh -huh. Back to the soil, back to nature, cultivating the fruits of the earth like our earliest ancestors. Oh, no, not quite our earliest ancestors, Derek. I mean, the cultivation of plants comes quite late in human history, well, doesn't it? yes, but... I know, but, you see, our earliest ancestors were more your hunter-gatherers, weren't they? So eating berries and things and throwing stones at birds. Mm, Neanderthal man, Mavis. Mm whose direct descendants today are the kind of yobbos who pick flowers in public parks. But you and I, Mavis, we're descended from a nobler strain. Never mind your hunter-gatherers. Growing two blades of grass where only one grew before. Now, that's humanity's great achievement. Yes, I agree with... You know, I've got a gift for it. I think... I think I should grow produce for this year's horticultural show. Oh, do you mean flowers and things? No, no, vegetables. The giant variety. It was Billy Williams put the idea in my head. Oh, was it? He won't be the one to get it out, will he? No, no doubt that'll be my problem. I'm not enjoying being here. And I've nothing against you personally. All I'm saying is, why be awkward? You can't stop me and Reg being together. 
So why don't you just give him a divorce? It's not as if you and him were ever happy together. Did you really say that? Because if he did, I really don't understand why he'd say it. Well, he told me you'd been unhappy for years. Just a minute. How long do you think Reg and I have been married? Well, I don't know exactly, two but years, too long, though, Two obviously. years, that's all! He was married for a long time to his first wife. Didn't he tell you about her? You want to ask him whether he's talking about me or her when he says he's unhappy? I don't need to question, Reg. I trust him. Oh, like I did. Yes, like I did. Like I say, we were only married for two years, but he didn't have to get married because nobody forced him to get married. Well, that hurts you, does it? Well, I'm glad you know how this feels. Are you pregnant? You are, aren't you? Hey, nothing comes. Go easy on the beer. Well, I should just have to have the odd half, Betty. I mean, I'm surrounded. They look odd if I'm the only one not sopping. And I just think I'm going. Oh, Don't yeah. get carried no, no, away. No, of course I won't. No. I won't. Um, just half, love. That's all I can afford. Okay, okay. <sighs> Unless I'm being offered a drink by this nice gentleman. I'm not a nice gentleman. I thought you realised that by now. Well, I know everybody knocks you, but I just like to hope for the best. Judy, cancel that. Give this young lady whatever drink she wants. Brandy and orange, please. What a waste of a good cognac. I'll have a last scotch. Okay. Uh, Billy, there's half going here, spare, if you think you can drink it. Is the Pope a Catholic? <laughs> no, as well as a drink, I've got your job. What? In fact, you're brilliant. No, don't get excited. Nothing like that. It's a day's cleaning. Oh. Yeah, Steve McDonald and his wife. Not only are they in trouble with the law, but their business has gone down the pan as well. Till tomorrow, they're getting all their gear out of that unit. So I want it clean. Top to bottom. Looking nice for some new tenant. Thanks. You interested? Well, I've got to be interested. Well, as long as social didn't know that. Oh, no. Strictly between you and me. Cash. Oh, great. Come on, I'll tell you what I want to do. I was thinking turnips. Well, you don't like turnips. I should be eating them. I should be Medium showing Medium sherry, please, and half the best bitter. I'll be right with you, Mr. Stockton. Hello. Hello. Uh, did I hear you mention turnips? Aye. Because I did Mrs. Bishop and myself for dinner involving turnips, uh, you see, didn't I, Mrs. Bishop? You did, Mr. Sugden, despite all my entreaties. <laughs> yeah. It's your chap at the Legion was rambling on about uh, Robert Burns, you know. What, well, Robert Burns the poet? Yes. I didn't know he discussed poetry at the British Legion. Well, they were discussing this fellow's action about putting young ladies in the family way. I'm begging your pardon, Mrs. Bishop. But this uh, fellow said in Scotland, when they have the aggies, they always have turnips and potatoes, really. That's why I did it for Mrs. Bishop. <laughs> we shan't be having it again. <laughs> well, I shan't be growing turnips for their taste. I should be growing them for their size and their shape and their colour. Yeah, good for you, Derek. Oh, hello. Yeah. And uh, not in the allotment, by the way. No, I should be growing them in the garden, where I can keep a close eye on them. Yes, they grow giant veg back home where I come from. Any advice I can give you, Derek? I can read it all in a book, thank you. Well, feel free to ask. I'll be cheering you on. Yes, I shall feel proud to be able to say that I live next door to one of the biggest turnips for miles around. Evening, Billy. Hello, Fred. Working, I see. I'll have a pint of your very best falling down water just for a change. Right. Are you partaking with me? Evening, Mrs. Wilton. 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 Derek. Oh. Mrs. Sullivan, not with you? No. Only I just called round at her flat, no reply. I thought she might be in here. No, she's gone to some nightclub with Alec Gilroy. Alec Gilroy? I live to be an under, I'll never understand women. You give them a chance of best rump, and do they take it? No. They go for a bit of scrag end. When's the baby due? End of September? Oh, I see. An early Christmas present, was it? It doesn't matter what you say to me. I love Reg, and he loves me, and we're together. I know I can make him happy. I thought that. And look what happened to me. A regiment baby. 
You'll be jealous with all the attention you give it. Look, it's only four months away. You can see why I'm asking you to divorce him, can't you? Oh, yes. I can see everything now. Reg can have his divorce. As quick as he likes. Oh, thank you. You don't I know... I haven't finished yet. Reg can have his divorce. And he can have this flat. If he gives me his half of the shop. That's the deal. And if he doesn't like it, then I'll fight him all the way. Tell him, take it or leave it. Anything else? He's all yours. You can have him. And you're welcome to him. Well, I think just about here would be perfect. Do you think it's a good idea, Derek? I thought we'd agreed that the back garden should be ornamental. The shrubs and flowers and the pond. No, I just want to grow some show turnips that I can keep my eye on, 24 hours a day if necessary. Well, I can't for the life of me think who'd be interested in a trench full of turnips. Morning. Well, she had a good enough voice. Can't deny that, Bruce, for anything else. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I don't know. Things have changed, haven't they, since you and me were taking them by storm? Since we what? Huh? It's not just your hair that's gone, is it? Your memory's not so brilliant either. But... Oh, you booked us in some right grotty holes. Oh, now, come on. All right, I mean, there might have been one or two that turned out to be below expectations. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I didn't do so bad by you. Hey, we had some laughs. No. Can't deny that. <laughs> yes, Mr Elliot. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's all right, maybe. I'm just free to on tin. Oh, well, she's uh, she's all yours. It's time I was on my way. Well, if you have to dash, don't let me stop you, but kettle's just boiled. Go on, then. You've twisted my arm. I don't right. suppose ten minutes will make much difference. I suppose that's my cue to go and brew up. Well, seeing as you're offering, yes. Yes, Fred. I just wanted to pack it to these. That's it? For now. Thank you. So you're managing all right on your own? Well, I'm not on my own. I've got social services and I've got some very good neighbours. I make sure she wants for nothing, even though I am living over the road for now. For now? Well, just while things are sorted out, you know. But thanks for your concern. But we're doing very nicely, thank you, both of us. Well, if I can be of any help... <laughs> thank you, that's very good of you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Nosy old bat. She was only being neighbourly. She was poking her nose into matters that are no concern of hers. Thank you. What for? For not shouting from the rooftops about what's happened. Well, why would I want to do that? It's nobody's business but yours. It's never stopped you in the past. That was because I thought it was for your own good. But it's different now. You're doing very nicely. The way you handled that woman yesterday proved that. Still don't know what got into me. Well, I do. It wasn't that woman that got to you, was it? It wasn't Reg Oldsworth. I know how much you've always wanted a child. And it was that stranger carrying his baby. That's what gave you the strength. Perhaps you're right. There's no perhaps about it. As soon as you told me, I knew how you felt. I thought about what Reg Oldsworth had done to you. I wanted to strangle him with my bare hands. Well, what good would that have done? They say where there's no sense, there's no feeling. You're right. That's exactly how I felt. Oh, silly, really. Because it could have never happened for me, Reg. I'm too old. And you should be grateful that it didn't. There's nothing I'd have liked better and for you to have given me a grandchild. But I'd never forgiven you if you'd been responsible for bringing a young Reg Oldsworth into the world. Right, Dad. Thanks, love. Jess. Hey, 
Billy could have served him, you know. I was just helping out. There's a funny thing about my Bill, you know. The more you try and help him out, the more he can't manage on his own. Uh, <laughs> pint, please, Raquel. Billy, come on. What? Ra oh, uh, bitter, is it? Uh, that's right, yeah. Is it made a start, then? Sorry? Derek. On what? Preparing the soil for these prize turnips of his. Oh, yeah, he was out there first thing this morning. Uh, they think they can grow prize vegetables. He's got no chance. He hasn't got the feel for it. You've done it. Well, look how many years' experience I've had. And you know how canny you got to be. Oh, yeah, you don't have to tell me. Not where I come from. Don't learn it all from books, eh? Exactly. So how do you think you should go about it, then? You were busy. I are only chatting to Ali. Well... <laughs> I want to say it was a bit private, anyway. You know, uh, we talked about the possibility of going on a trip to York. Yes. Well, I just happened to have a couple of tickets for a coach Sunday. And don't worry, it's just for the day. Well, I am off on Sunday. Thank you, Fred. You're coming. Well, somebody's got to help you to eat them mints you got for coach. What's going on? We're stripping the place while nobody's looking. She'd make a few bob on the scrap market. It's not a word to bold with it. I'll make it worth your while. I take it you're joking. I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's all legit. So what are you doing here? I'm cleaning the place. Well, I will do when these two are done. I thought it was your McDonald's place. Not anymore, it ain't. Gone out of business. Have they? Mm. Well, it doesn't surprise me. Because they never did strike me as a sort to make a go of anything. So this is what I'm paying you for, is it? To stand around talking to blokes like him. <laughs> Don't blame me. He was the one that came up for a nosy. Eh? But I'm looking after your interests. They could be stealing everything. The lot. Well, now you know the score, perhaps you'll let her get on with her work and start earning the money I'm paying her. You know, sometimes I wonder why I bother. I really do. What do you think, then? Uh, a couple of hours. And you'll be finished. I should be able to start. There you go. Ah, thanks, Raquel. So, how's married life treating you, then? Oh, it's smashing. Well, you certainly got off to a good start. Oh? Only moon cruise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> start as you mean to go on, that's what I always say. And you wouldn't find better than Sunliner's finest. Ali, we ended up working all the time. Not all the time. Come on, you've got to admit, it was an unforgettable experience. <laughs> Well, yes, I'll give you that. Oh, yeah. Mind you, it must have been a bit of a shock to the system, you know, coming back to Earth. I'm not with you. Well, swapping five-star luxury on the high seas for round here. Well, you should know. You know where tips go, do you? It's tips? Well, if somebody says take it for yourself, just take ten pins to get in for, right? Oh, don't worry, Betty mentioned it. Good restaurant, were it? Restaurant? Where you went last night. Oh, we didn't go to a restaurant. All oh, right, I must have got hold of wrong end of the stick. I thought you'd gone out for a meal. We did eat. But not in a restaurant. Went to a club. Club? Folk do, you know. Mm, a bit pricey, isn't it? Depends who you know. And you know someone? Alec does. Do you mind if I join you? We were just going, as it happens. Sit yourself down. He might have to dash off, I don't. Well, perhaps a few minutes won't make any difference. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that, Billy lad. I should hope not, indeed. You're really taking to this, aren't you? Oh, I, I. It's beginning to grow on me. You fancy one yourself? Well, that's very kind of you, Des. I'll, uh, I'll just have the half. It made me feel me age, I can tell you. That's night, dear. Oh, come on. That girl couldn't hold a candle to you. You had more class in your little finger than she had in her whole body. Had? Oh, still do. Still do. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, your own. Still value your opinion, you know. And there's me thinking you're after summer tell. Oh, well, thanks for the compliment. <laughs> My age, I don't think I know what to do. <laughs> it was quite like the old times, wasn't it? We must do it again sometime, soon. Well, you know me, Alec. Never say no to a free dinner. You're not very quiet, Fred. No tail in you, is there? You haven't had a dodgy pie out. I'm fine, thank you. 
Good. Same again, is it? So it wasn't Red Jolesworth. No, it was a solicitor. We had a lovely walk, didn't we? Bumped into Mandy Gorton in the park. Mandy Gorton? Redhead, had that ponytail made look about 12. He used to go out with Dave Austin. Oh, right, right. I was at college with her. She's working for a doctor and his wife now. Living in, I suppose. Yeah, she is. <laughs> I have been thinking about it, you know. I didn't mention it because of that. I just thought if you remembered who she was, you might be interested to know what she's doing. What have you been thinking? Look, Kelly, if I seem to be dragging my feet over this, it isn't because the idea doesn't appeal to me. I can see there are definite advantages. But there are certain things that have to be considered. Like what? Well, like what your parents are going to think. Yes. Yes, well, thank you. Thank you very much. What about you? Well, come on, what's happened? He's agreed. Reg has accepted the offer. So what? That's what you wanted. Oh, yes. I did. But he could have taken a bit more time about it. Can't wait to see the back of me, can he? All I'm saying to you, Dave, is that growing prize vegetables is not for everybody. And I suggest to you, you ask yourself the question, is it for you? Oh, yes! Because it's not just about growing prize turnips, is it? It's about hope, ambition. Prestige. Look, if this is all you're going to talk about, these turnips, then I might as well go home. Oh, no, Mavis, no, I want you here. What for? Because this concerns you just as much as me. It's, it's for both of us, an interest. Sharing the delights of nurturing our very own root vegetables <sighs> to perfection. If this is all you're going to talk about in future, it seems to me that I have spent some of the best years of my life nurturing a root vegetable to perfection. <laughs> Are you going to serve the customers? Are you going to stand there nattering all night? Oh, I'm sorry, Betty. It's my fault. Oh. <laughs> um, Sherry Mavis. Yes, thank you. Yes, and half a bit of Sherry. Hey, 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 hey! That'll do. We don't any of that carrying on here. What would the other customers think? I'm not planning on doing it to other customers. Good. Well, come on then. Let's see some action. When I see some respect. A pint of bitter, please, Jerry. Of course you can. Thanks. <laughs> <sighs> One for yourself, Billy. Well, that is very kind of you, Derek. I shall just have the heart. Well, everything seems to be under control now, so I'm nipping in the back for a bit. I'm going to make myself a bit of tea. You know, put me feet up. Very wise, dear, very wise. <laughs> you can have your head in a minute. Hey, keep your eye on them too. Oh, they're all right. Uh, for now. You're right, Billy, lad. Huh? Oh, couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. Do you want anything with the wine? Mineral water? No, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, fine, thanks. It's all good stuff. <laughs> Very keen on quality control here. All has to be passed personally by the management. Oh, you are disgusting. I know, yeah. <laughs> I do my best. Well, cheers. Here's to the future. The future. You and Becky are very close, aren't you? Mm, yeah, we are. We've got so dependent on each other this past 18 months. Since Jeff... A dad going like that, it's a really hard. She's only 11. It's a bad time for her. Got lots of things changing in her life. New school, new friends, physical changes. <laughs> Thank God she's got her feet on the ground. <laughs> Can't have been easy. No. But, you know, 
We seem to have pulled through and she's settled in really well at school. She's got some good friends. She loves sport and the guides. She's got a fuller life than I have. So, when do I get to meet her? She does know about me. I just have to be careful. Pick the right moment. Where does she think you are tonight? Out. With a friend. And how long before she finds out that this friend of yours is a fella? But then she's going to wonder why. Why you kept it a secret from her. She'll see me as a threat because you feel guilty about it. I don't feel guilty. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to hustle you. It's just I'm trying to be helpful. I thought if me and you were going to carry on seeing each other, well, she's going to meet me sooner or later. Still, you know your own daughter best. You know when I realised that it was all over between me and Reg, that I no longer wanted him? When that girl turned up with a bun in the oven. When she told me all the things that he'd said to her, all the promises he'd made, all the things he'd said about me. I realised I'd heard it all before. Reg's little merry-go-round had come a full circle. I knew it was time for me to get off. So, when are you coming back home, then? There you are, Fred. And have one yourself. Well, that's very kind of you, Fred. I'll just have the half. Cheers. You're not expecting anyone? Like who? Rita. Oh, no, no, not tonight. Feel free. Only, uh, you two seem to be seeing a lot of each other. Ah, oh, well, we're best of pals, you know, me and Rita. Go back a long way. Yes, yeah, she's always been a bit special. How do you mean, exactly special? Well, she had star quality, you know. She could have gone right to the top. Why well, didn't she? Well, always letting fellas get in the way of her career. Something I could never understand, you know. How a woman as classy as Rita could attract such odd balls when it comes to men. It's not just Becky, is it? No. Look, if you think I'm trying to move too fast... It's not you, Des. No, you're very understanding. I feel comfortable with you. <laughs> you're the first man that I have felt comfortable with. Well, since Jeff. But there's Jeff's mum and dad as well. I've got to think about them. <laughs> been so good to me and to both of us. We've all been there for each other. <laughs> it comes as a great shock, you know, when someone who, who means so much to you is taken so suddenly. <laughs> There's no illness, no time to, you know, prepare yourself mentally for the inevitable. <laughs> One day everything's fine. You're making plans for the future. You've got your whole lives ahead of you. Then three hours later, there's a knock at the door and your whole world is blown apart. <laughs> you don't get over a thing like that overnight. I know. I lost someone I thought the world of too. But your wife? No, we weren't married. But we were close. The child was a baby then. Little Tommy. Her child? Yeah, he wasn't mine. So what happened to him? He's with his grandparents. So I do understand what you're going through. To think 
The only reason I decided to come out with you is because you make me laugh. <laughs> I'm not knocking the idea. I'm just saying that you've got to be 100% certain what you're getting into. I mean, have you thought what it's going to be like having a teenage girl living under the same roof? It won't be the first time. No, of course not. Tracy. Exactly. And heaven knows we had enough problems with her. Kelly isn't Tracy. No, but she's still a girl. A young woman. I mean, it'd be different if you were living in Tattenall or somewhere, but you're not. You're living in a two up and two down. You'll have no privacy, no time to yourself, no time on your own with Daniel. She'll be there. It'll be her home as well. Well, we can work something out. Wanting to use the bathroom at the same time, meeting her on the landing in your dressing gown. And what happens when you want your friends round? Or she wants her friends round? Girls her own age. Boys. So what you're saying is forget it? <laughs> no. I just think you need to be absolutely sure what you're getting into. Because once she moves in, your life is never going to be the same. What are you getting at, Fred? Well, I just wanted to clarify the situation, that's all. I mean, if you and Alec Gilroy, you know. No, I don't know. I've got something special going between you. I mean, I don't want to make a fool of myself, do I? You couldn't make a bigger fool of yourself than what you're doing right now. There is nothing between me and Alec Gilroy. There never was anything between me and Alec Gilroy. Well, that's all right, then. Well, I'm not so sure that it is. Eh? Hey? What gives you the right to decide who I should and shouldn't see? No, and I, if I you think taking me on a day trip to York gives you some exclusive rights on me, then I think we'd better just forget it. But, I but don't you... want to hear another word about it. Preacher, I don't... said, forget it. Very kind of you, guy. I'll just have a... Uh, what do you think you're playing at? I'll just have a good drink with my friend. Yeah, and he's not the first, is he? You've not put a brass farthing in that tip's pot all evening. Oh, well, thanks a bunch, Billy. You might think Christmas has come early, but I happen to rely on those tips for me wage. And you could have said some it's Me? I'm the players bleed at no arguing. Little birds in their nests. See, people come into this place to enjoy themselves for coming here to let their hair down. There's not much chance of that in here, is there? Not unless you're going to bring in the dancing girl. No, we can't do that. No. But we got a piano. What good's a piano if nobody can play it? I can. Yeah, can you? Certainly. You want the place livened up? You got it. <laughs> That's just what this pub needs, a jolly good old-fashioned sing-pong. Do you reckon this is a good idea? Of course it is. You leave the man alone. Take it away, Billy. <laughs> The little boy that Santa Claus forgot. <laughs> and goodness knows he didn't want a What the? What's going on? Where's Billy? He's not his little heart when he found Santa had What do you think you're playing at? Very good, isn't it? I'll give him good. Have you taken leave of your senses? No, no, they enjoy themselves. You know what a fool you're making of yourself. No, no, I don't know that one, but you want a few bars. Come on, mind. What are you doing that for? Oh, no. How many have you had? I just had the half. And the rest. He had taken one tip tonight as part of the lockdown is through. I'll leave you alone for a minute. I know. And don't think I haven't noticed because I have. And I've missed you. I've missed you. Billy. Get in there. Get in the back. Thanks for staying on. Did myself a favour. Oh? We've been able to get on with this lot. We can go out in the morning now. <laughs> right. Uh, any phone calls? Not for you, but I phone my mum and dad. That's all right. About moving in here. What? Oh, you're right. You do need to talk to them. So they're coming round for tea tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, 
So don't go pestering me to go to Laser Cruiser. Laser Crusader? It's Laser Crusader. You're always seeing Cruiser. It doesn't matter what I call it because we're not going. My eyeballs feel as though they're covered in fur. That can't be right, can it? Well, you were very jolly last night, I hear. Singing, in fact. Thank you. Don't remind me. It's the little boy that Santa Claus forgot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The strange thing is when I'm sober, I don't even know the words. Perhaps as well. What can we get you? Something for a headache, I think. The little boy that Santa Claus forgot. And goodness knows he didn't want a lot. That's how it goes. To be honest, I'd rather forget oh. it. We've got faster acting, longer lasting. Which is it to be? Both. Both. I feel sorry for that laddie, because he didn't have a daddy. Do you know, that bit always made me weak. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty close to tears myself. <sighs> Keep me going. Got to have something to cut through the dust over there. It's like hoovering the Gobi Desert. We'll be there a while then. Well, I'm supposed to finish at one, but if I can get him to pay me for a couple more hours, I should have enough to take our Jamie out for a treat. Well, I think you find Mike Baldwin won't pay for extra hours unless he has to. Well, I'll just have to persuade him, won't I? I haven't given our Jamie a treat since... Well, I don't know when. It's terrible, isn't it? Yes, it is, because mm. treats are important. I was just saying this to Rita, because she was supposed to be going on a day trip to uh, York. But that's but... another story. You see, I want to give him something good to remember. When he looks back, what's he going to see? Freezing cold flat, me moaning about the rent. If I can just get this together, it'll be something. He'll be able to look back and say, well, will not all bad. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Allow me, dearest. Oh, Billy. Young a gentleman. Oh! All right! What? What's happened? Could, could you say something? What is it to say? Well, all right, then I'll, I'll say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, there, Betty, you said sorry. What did you do exactly, Billy? It's not what he did. It's what he is. He's kept it hidden for a few years, but now we know! Oh, blimey, I don't think I should be listening well, to this. I've said I'm sorry. How long will sorry last? Till the next time? Betty, do you think I should leave the room? Do you know what did last well, night? Betty, honestly, you're <laughs> he not... He got drunk! What, Billy? You never... Oh, well, I've never had Jane dead. Well, people kept buying me drinks. Look, when a customer says, and one for yourself, you put a 10p piece in that glass at the side of the till. You don't swill another pint down half. your throat. I just had, I just had the heart. <laughs> and he sang. Well, it's always the quiet ones who surprise you. Well, I'm just trying to oblige people. Yeah. Well, I've seen you in your true colours now. I don't want any more to do with you. Oh, Betty, now what do you say? Divorce? <sighs> you can't get divorced at your age. They said we couldn't get married at our age. But we did. There you go, look. Clean as a whistle. What do you mean, as clean as a whistle? What's all that there? Oh, I know. It's a shame. I won't have time to get all that done, I'm afraid. Now, look, I'm paying you to clean this place. You're paying me by the hour, and this is how much I got done. I've been working flat out. Ask anyone. But the place is a tip. It was worse than it looked, Mr Baldwin. And that's Steve McDonald. Well, I wouldn't like to tell you some of the things I found. I'm sorry, it's just not good enough. I want this place cleared up. Well, I'd love to help you. Yeah. But it, it's more than my nerves can stand. I've always been scared of mice. Mice? Well, I mean, I'm calling them mice out of politeness, really. By the size of their leavings, I think there's something much worse. Do you want to see their leavings? There's plenty over there. No, no, I just want this place cleared out. Well, I'd like to help you, but you've only hired me till midday. I've made arrangements. I don't believe this. You say you're broke, I offer you three hours extra work, and you say you don't want it. Well, I can, I can give you till three o'clock. I can't stay any longer than that. All right, three o'clock it is then. I'll pay you then, if you're finished. Well, I'll see what I can do. Yes! Now, I don't normally talk to plants. But if I did, well, you're a bit young, aren't you? <laughs> Do you know, a 
I've got a theory about talking to plants. You breathe in carbon dioxide, don't you? Well, I breathe it out. So when I talk to you, you're getting a blast of fresh carbon dioxide. So maybe talking to you will do you some good. <laughs> talking to your turnips, Derek? No, no, no. Just, just, just to myself. Oh, good. Because it's when the turnip talks back to you, you know, that's the time to start worrying. <laughs> Yes. <coughs> well, what's in the drum? Um, a bit of company for your turnip. A sort of next-door neighbour turnip. How do you mean? Well, you inspire me, you see, Derek. I'm going to grow my own prize-winning turnip. But you can't. Oh, I bet I can. I think you forget I'm from the northeast. It's in me blood. No, I don't, don't mean that. I mean, it, I, it was my idea. I don't think so. My dad was growing turnips while you were still in shorts. In fact, in 1976, he grew one almost as big as you. A bite away from a world record. He says the secret's in the growing medium. Yes, I've heard that. Well, let's hope he's right, eh? Because he'd give me a bag of his special formula. <laughs> That's nice. Excuse me. Oh! Derek! Mm. Not going to say goodbye? Oh. He's teething. Oh. Uh, what kind of cake would your mother like? Well, she likes Battenberg, but you can't get that. Why not? Because then she'll know I chose it, and it's supposed to be from you. Madeira cake. You can't go wrong with Madeira. Madeira do not taste of anything. Exactly. That's why I can't say you don't like it. <laughs> it's inspection today. It's not an inspection. She just wants to see where I work, that's all. She's just taking an interest. Quite right, too. Actually, it is an inspection. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have chocolate biscuits. Oh, all right. Um, right, well, with these... And those two, uh, that's two pounds twenty or two pounds twenty. There we go. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Can't eat chocolate. Don't you know that you didn't buy them, won't she? <laughs> Bye. 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 He's very happy, isn't he? Oh, why shouldn't he be? He's got rid of that woman and he's got that lovely baby. Thank you, mother. That's probably exactly what they're saying about Reg. A packet of your very best sport scratches, Mr. Okay, love. Yeah, port scratchings allow me, dearest. <laughs> Oh, the same again, please. Oh, right. Fred, you've not seen Mavis, have you? She should be here by now. Um, Raquel, can I have half a bitter, please? And, um, oh, and a tomato juice. No, I haven't seen her. Derek, mm? you're friendly with Winter. Am I? Uh, what exactly is the state of affairs between uh, and Eric Gilroy? I had no idea there was a state of affairs, but then what do I know? You think you could rise above all this? You think you can bury yourself in your garden? <laughs> Metaphorically speaking, of course. And what happens? Uh, we're under the impression that there was a sort of intimacy going on. Maybe it's summit or now. Is anything ever summit or now? You'd think that growing a turnip would be summit or now, wouldn't you? you think you could be left in peace, but no. But Thank as you. far as you know... As far as I know, Rita is the same as the rest of humanity. She's happiest when others are suffering. Is that right? Like the Queen Bee. And like the Queen Bee, she's not averse to eating a few alive. Rita, are you sure we're talking about the same woman? She's been widowed more than once, you know. She's a very predatory woman. Predatory? What do you mean, predatory? You. Well, she likes to toy with men. She likes to have them dance attendance on her. Does she indeed? Well, thank you for your thoughts, Derek. Oh. I'll bear them in mind. Oh, he's oh, over at the bar, look. Thank you. Oh, Mavis. You'll never believe what has happened. Oh, don't tell me Fred Elliot's just sold you two away day tickets to York because Rita will be very disappointed. She ticked him off last night, but I, I think she's hoping to make it. No, home. I've heard enough about Rita's affairs for one day. Thank you very much. Oh, Listen to this. Fred, well, what's he been saying? Des has got a turnip. Oh, no. Well, you might well say, oh, no. He's got a great big oil drum. Look, I don't want to and hear. And some kind of wonder manure. Derek, I don't want to discuss manure. Just what have you been saying about Rita? Oh, he was asking about her relationships with men. He said his father once grew a turnip that was close to being the world record. Her relationships with men? What sort of relationships with men? What did oh, we were talking about the way she seems to need to be fought over by several different men. The, the sadistic side of her nature. You told Fred Elliot that? Well, I touched on it. I think he worked it out for himself anyway. Listen, if he thinks his father's wonder manure... Daddy, I, I don't know how you dare pronounce on the psychology of other people when you know so little about your own. How do you mean? Well, Des Barnes is no more interested in turnips than I am. It's just 
trying to wind you up, and the reason it's trying to wind you up is because you happen to be particularly easy to wind. And therefore you provide the winder once wound with endless hours of free entertainment. Oh, I see. And in the meantime, you've probably ruined what could have been a beautiful relationship. Uh, Betty, can you get me a scotch? I'll get it myself. Betty, can I have a word? If it's about Oliver Reed over there, you can forget it. It's not about Billy, it's about colours. What? Well, you've had a shock, you're very stressed. I'm sure I could fix you up with my essential oils. You make me sound like an old boiler. No, it's me aromatherapy. Just let me give you a massage. And not a full one, no, just your head and shoulders. I am trying to run a pub, you know. Well, it won't take long. And anyway, why should you do all the work? You leave it to him for a while. Hmm. You could alone there's a bucket of hot water, I don't suppose. There's none left back there. It's not working you too hard, is it? Oh, it's not so bad. I've conned him in to give me an extra three hours this afternoon. Oh, hey, what are you doing here? Uh, lunch break. I thought I might give you an hand. Oh, aren't you good? Hey, you know this laser cruiser place? Yeah. Do you fancy going at four o'clock? Is this a trick question? No. Ah, oh, yes! Bang! <laughs> Bang! Oi, oi, oi! I'm paying you to play cowboys and Indians now, am I? It's Laser Crusader. Shush, no, no, Mr Baldwin, honestly. All I came over for was some hot water. Oh, I don't care. Go and sling your hook. I knew you were up to something. All right, Mike. Chris has just come over some hot water. You must think I was born yesterday. No, Mr Baldwin, honestly. You go and check the water and then tap, she'll see. There you go, Chris. Tap. Yeah, you two have been skiving off together, haven't you, eh? On my money. <laughs> Not really, Mike. I don't work for you anymore. Hey? Oh, yeah, uh, sorry about that. Old habits, eh? Yeah, well, you should think before you speak. And soon as you bass, the only thing I've seen of Trisha this morning is the dust and dirt coming out the front door. I won't charge you for the hot water. Well, go on, then. Get on with it. That's definitely air, Mr Bryant. Subject located at 1315. The place she's going into looks empty to me. It looks empty. Anything could be going on in there. Stories I could tell you. I found a whole mail order operation. Run out of someone's garage once. She could be dealing in gold bullying in there. Cleaning. She could be cleaning. She's raking it in with one hand and claiming it back off us with the other. Well, Miss Armstrong, start counting the days. Because the men from the DSS are on to you. to sing, is it? No, this is a very sensual experience. I don't like the sound of that. A sensual experience? In the middle of the day? Don't sound too good to me. Hey, what's in it? Well, for me base, I've used almond, doll and I've put a drop of sandalwood in here oh. too because that helps deal with cynicism. And you're quite a cynical person, really, aren't you, Betty? How do you mean? No, just relax. Go on. And some of your lang lang, that helps dissipate your anger. Oh, and it's an also it's an aphrodisiac too, so you never know. Yeah. No, look, look, look. I don't think it's going to no, do any hey, good. Betty, come on. Cynicism, what did I say? And some neroli, that smells nice. And we won't even think about Billy. See? Smell that. Oh, yeah. That's your neroli. Mm. You see, my favourite, that's orange blossom. Because I think smells very important in aromatherapy. Well, it's very important altogether. I mean, even the ancient Egyptians knew that all the hundreds of years ago. Well, how do you know? Well, it was in the paintings, wasn't it, on the walls? Oh, scratch and sniff, were they? No. No, they had these things for burning incense in front oh. of them. You see, now, that was cynicism, wasn't it, Betty? Well, any minute now, that cynicism, it'll begin to flow way out of you. Yeah, I'm sure it will, love it. Well, I'm sure it will too, Betty. You see, I'm very good at this. Finally, I'm good at something. We've got questions to ask, but we'll have to be discreet about them. We'll make out we're going somewhere. Where? It doesn't matter where. Through. That's where. Through. Leeds, if anyone asks. Leeds. Right. Where from? Two tomato juices, please. And can you tell us the quickest way to the M62? We've got a bit disorientated. We're going to Leeds. If I knew the way out of here, I wouldn't be in here. Um, you go out of here. Turn right onto Rosamond Street, keep going for about a mile and a half, and it's signposted. Oh, thanks very much. We can turn round in front of that factory place. Yeah. What is it, by the way? Uh, I don't know. I think it's empty at the moment, though. Only we saw Mrs Armstrong going in there. Who? Mrs Armstrong, friend of ours. Patricia. It's empty, then. 
Who wants to know? No one. Just us. Well, as a matter of fact, it belongs to me, and as I don't know who you are, I don't feel like discussing it, all right? No, of course not. I wouldn't have said that if I was you, Mike. Why not? M62, my eye. Their car's been out in the street all morning. It's obvious, isn't it? They're from the VAT. Oh, there they are. They should change. Oh, what's that? All right. Give us a pint, Billy, please, in and a, a minute, glass of white wine. In a minute. So what happened to him in the end, then? Who? The little boy that Santa Claus forgot. Ha, <laughs> ha, very funny. Uh, all, right, all right, all right, mate. Have hey, you got the food on, Billy? Food? You've got to be joking. She is out there talking about a divorce. Oh, you don't want to be getting divorced at your age. Just do me a favour, son. Don't you mention it to her. That bad, is it, Billy? D-I-V-O-R-C-E. Divorce! Ah, look at you. You rushed off your feet. Go on, you go and have a little sit down. I'll see to all this. Did you do that? Healing hands. By the light. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. Well, I've been learning. I'll have to bear you in mind the next time was to have a row. <laughs> well, I hardly think that that would be appropriate given the history. Sorry. Well, that didn't mean anything by it. it... Maybe I'll just go and get us a table. Yeah. That was a bit rude. So, ordinary two timings not exciting enough for you, I see. We're now on to affairs with married women. You don't even know anything about her. I know, she's wearing a wedding band. I haven't even got the shame to hide her. Yes, well, she did have a husband, Raquel. He's now dead. Oh. Well, I am. Um... <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yes, I... well, it's a bit late, isn't it? Betty, I'll be over here. Hi. Hello, Daniel. Hello. Where have you been till now? Pardon? She's going to be here in a minute and you look a mess. <laughs> Let's just get one thing straight, shall we? It is your mother that's coming to tea, isn't it? Not the Queen. It was you who said it was an inspection. And you said it wasn't. Oh, look, I'm sorry. It's just my mum's dead competitive. Her sister's daughter's a living nanny. That's your cousin. Well, try not to think of it like that. Yeah, she's my cousin and she's a nanny, but she's a nanny in Wilmslow. She's got her own car, the use of all. She goes skiing. Well, what do you want me to do? Move to Wilmslow? No, I don't want you to move to Wilmslow. I just wanted... I just wanted you to make a fuss of my mum, that's all. All right, OK, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll dash out now and get a Battenberg. There are people queuing up for living nannies all over the place. You think you're doing me a favour. You don't know how lucky you are. No, I... Did, and now she's going to come round and tell me how much better I could have done if I'd have listened to her and how much better our Tina's doing well, than I am. Kelly, um, right, you sit down, I'll get the door. Mr Thompson, pleased to meet you. Ken Barlow. Uh, we've met before. Well, I know you by sight from school. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, well, come in. Take a seat. I'll put the kettle on. This is Daniel. I've seen him already in the park. I've not seen this place, though. And if I had, you wouldn't have come. Oh, Mr Elliot. Oh, I'm so glad I've got you to myself, so to is speak. Is Rita in? Uh, no, well, yes, she is, actually, but there's something I want to say to you before you speak to her. Well, it'll have to wait till later. I've had to work myself up to this, you know. Uh, yeah, well, I, I believe Derek said something to you. Yes, he did, and I'm very grateful. He's put things in perspective for me. Oh, dear, well, uh, you, you don't understand. You see, I, I think he was a bit upset last night, because you know he's growing this turnip. Well, Rita! Oh, hello, Fred. I hope this into social call, because I'm trying to get myself ready for cash and carry. Well, it'll not take a minute. But no, no, there's something I must say, but I'm, I just must get this straight. Rita, I'm sorry about the way I behaved yesterday. <laughs> Look, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I've, I've, I've got to get it clear, but... If you could, if you could see, see your way clear to come to York with me, just the same, I'd, I'd be very honoured. Do you really? Of course I would. I'd be delighted to, Fred. Well, then I'd be delighted to. I hope you don't think I'm, I'm presumptuous, but I brought up a few leaflets. Uh, there's one about tea rooms, uh, and I thought... Perhaps on the coach, Fred. I'm a bit pushed now. OK. Of course, of course. Yeah. Oh, did I? I'm so relieved, because I thought Derek might have said something out of turn. Oh, he did. No, no, no. Sorry, love. No, not at all. No, no. Huh? No, you painted a very attractive picture of Rita. Really? She... 
got the impression it's given you the idea that she, she could be a bit heartless. Oh, you see, I've always liked a woman who's got a cruel streak. Of course, our Tina is a living nanny, too. In Wilmslow. So I believe. They let her ride the horse. She goes skiing with them. <laughs> Nothing's too good for her. That's nice. Now, I know I'm prejudiced, but I think our Kelly is every bit as good as she is. Better, I'm sure. And if she got herself in with one of these agencies, well, she could have all that, you see. She's got her own car, you know, Tina. I do realise how lucky I am to have found Kelly. The thing about our Kelly is that she looks older than her years, always has done. But people expect too much of her. She gets exploited. <laughs> I wouldn't say I was exploiting her exactly. Well, no. No, I dare say she's got her own reason for coming here instead of someone with more to offer. Mother! And what is that? Well, it's obvious. I mean, like I said, she could be in Wilms, love. She pulled her finger out. No, this is just a quick way for her to leave home. To get out so she can carry on without Ashley without me Mrs. knowing Thompson, about it. Mr. Thompson, if you're suggesting, I would let my house be used. I'm some suggesting sort of nothing a... of the kind. I'm suggesting that she could do a lot better than this. Well, I realise that, Mrs. Thompson. And I'm very grateful to Kelly for the choice that she made. Yes, but all I'm trying I to know, say. I know, I know. She could have all these superficial things cars, horses. But instead, she chose to give her time to a child who suffered a terrible trauma. Uh. And she's made a commitment to that child. Now, there are very few people nowadays who understand the value of commitment, and Kelly is one of those people. I suppose, uh, I suppose it's down to how you brought her up. No. Well, no. we've always no. tried to do right by her. Well, she's a credit to you. A real credit. You should be proud. I am proud of her. I'm very proud of her. It does seem a bit hard, though. If all she's done is a bit of cleaning. It's the mentality. If she gets away with this, she'll move on to bigger things. As she may well have done already. She could be some part of a big racket. It starts with a bit of cleaning and then moves on to Robert Maxwell. We didn't catch Robert Maxwell, though, did we? Not my department, Turner. Anyway, you look after the Armstrongs and the Robert Maxwells will look after themselves. He did, didn't he? Look, if we get a tip-off, we have to act on it. He's coming, look. Come on, get the camera ready. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> See the day when my mum said you were proud of me. Thanks a lot. I meant every word. I should have said it sooner. That's okay. So why did you take it? I mean, if you could be off skiing. Well, because I wanted to be near Ashley. Yeah, that's the right answer. I want to be near Daniel as well now. Besides, any day now, my mum's going to be able to brag about me till her heart's content. Why's that? Because our Tina in Wilmslow is having a thing with the man of the house. That's why they take her skiing. Mrs. can't ski, but she's bound to find out. I don't know. The way people lead their lives. Is it? Okay. Right then, there you are. Now! Go on! Right. Well, did you get it? Well, if you ever need anybody again. I shouldn't think so. Next time I might need someone a bit quicker. Well, whatever. Jamie! Saver tickets. Oh, aren't you good? I don't know what I've done to deserve you. Well, enjoy it while you still can because I will show you no mercy once we get in there. <laughs> gotcha, Armstrong. Molly? Hi, Bill. Oh, get stuffed. I'm sick of them me social security. What's the matter? Right then, Wally. Silver heads cracked, so it is. And there's water in the oil. Are you joking? Oh, I'm not. Come on. Here. Come on, can you lend us a couple of quid? No. What for? Petrol. You can't be that hard up, surely. So what am I asking for? No. Well, I can't go to jam to see me brief then, can I? Do you want me to go to prison? Walk. What? Walk. Do you good? Fresh air. Yeah. You want to make the most of it, pal, while you're still free to do so. Mm. Here. It's all I can spare. Mum? Yeah, well, I just wish some of us round here would take all this a bit more seriously. Well, who's joking? He can be in prison this time next week. Why is that so funny? 
What is so funny? Nothing. He thinks he's untouchable. He thinks he's prison proof. He thinks that somebody up there is going to intervene at the eleventh hour and say, "Thou shalt not send that boy to jail." Yeah. Well, let's just hope that somebody up there is on his side. I can't get her to come down this street at all. Ooh, Vicky. She'll not set foot in it. And I tell her it's him that should be shamefaced, not her. I keep saying, folk round here think a lot more of you than they do of him. Oh, they do. And all his lot. What's she bothered about? Oh, bumping into him, folks saying things, you know. Well, send her round here. Make her come round here for something. And me and Mavis will put her straight, won't we? If it's just a bit of confidence she wants. She, she'd not come. Well, try. Give us that back and make her come round for it. You go back and say you forgot wherever it was that you came for when you got in shop. Oh, I'd, I'd not risk it. It's a kind thought, Rita, but uh, I'll see. All right. Ta-ra. ta Hi. So, what were you telling me about vegetables? I wasn't telling you about vegetables. Mm. I'd finished telling you about vegetables. I was asking how you'd got on with Fred at York. Oh, yes. Oh, he's comically as Fred. I'll give him that. Although, it's generally when he's trying not to be, it has to be said. So your Uncle Fred was all right about you taking the morning off to help me move my stuff in? I don't get sick. Oh, Ashley. He'd have only said no fast for time off. Where do you want this? Anywhere. Any road. I'd have only got the morning off even if he had said yes. This way, I can have all day off. I'm going to take Grange van back. Come and give us a big snog first. Some nitwits left his van door wide open out there, unattended. Uh, and then they wonder why things go missing. Did uh, did somebody tell me that you and Rita had been to York, you know, during the weekend? He did, just for the day, uh, yesterday. Uh, and it were very agreeable. You want to get your feet under the oak there. Do I? Oh, I should worth a bob or two. So they say. Hey, hey, hey. I, I thought your lad did your delivering. Gastroenteritis. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Gastroenteritis. I don't know what gastroenteritis is these days. <laughs> he says, I'll be back in first thing tomorrow. I thought, you won't, lad, not if you've got it properly. Mm -hmm. If he'd got it properly, you'd know about it. I say, know about it. No stamina. Yeah, they're only to sneeze and they're looking in their armpits for boils. <laughs> Jack usually offers me a tincture oh. on the odd occasion I do the delivering. What, uh, you're scotching a threat, eh? Oh, hey, hang on a minute. It's only half past nine in the morning, you know. It's not our stock to give away, so think on. Sorry. You know, I'd have liked to have lived in the old days when the water was so mucky you had to drink alcohol, never mind what time of day it were. Oh, I wouldn't have minded A bit, bit Billy. <laughs> ta -da. Ta -da, love See it. you. <laughs> Look, keep away from the pumps, love it. Take these through, will you? Hey, there's only one tray. There should be two trays, surely. What the blood and guts do you think you're doing? Hey, have you got another tray of pies for in here? He looks very well, doesn't he, Mrs. William? Don't you think, for somebody who's got gastroenteritis, for somebody who half an hour ago claimed he couldn't drag his carcass out of his bed without dire consequences? I can explain. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. It's my fault, Mr. Elliot. No, it isn't. It's mine. I lied. I wanted to help Kelly shift the things. And if that's you for time off, you'd have only said no. Love, Mrs. Williams. Love is the culprit. Love has turned the boy's head. Oh, shut up. I ought to sack you. You never let me have time off. He had an appointment with dentist once and he won't let me go. That's a barefaced lie. Look, shall I get them pies, Miss It Ellen? is not. He's not a bad lad, Mrs. Williams. And I do believe I'm going to forgive him this once. But sadly, he's a liar. I am not. It's true. My filling dropped out. My face was streamed with pain. Well, he's imaginative. if I'll say that. Wouldn't let you have time off to go to a dentist, indeed. You'll have Mrs. Williams thinking I'm a throwback to the Dark Ages, you daft monkey. Somebody ought to point out that it's traditional to read a newspaper only after it's been paid for. This isn't a library. Hello. Hello. Hey, uh, your granddad ain't got any jobs going, has he? Down at Sunliners? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. How are you, love? I'm fine. There's an out in here, but what you need about 30 million O levels for. So rubbish. Have you got any paper clips, please? Paper clips, oh. maybe. Oh, go on. Find Trisha something to do round your place. It'll stop her coming in here and reading my newspapers for free. Sorry. Are you working for your granddad permanently now, love? 
No. 45p, please. I ate Mondays. Do you know, it must be lovely working in a travel agent, surrounded by all them holiday brochures. I mean, even if you never actually go anywhere, I mean, the best part's planning on what you'll do when you get there, isn't it? Thank you. Bye. 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 Do you reckon? Right, you can stick your jaw, I don't want it. Ashley! Not what I said, but the truth. <laughs> it's not the lad's fault. His father came from bad stock. Just shut up about me, Dad. It were an ill-advised marriage. At least he wasn't a pervert. Hey! Some women stopped coming in shop because of him. He's at it again. Lies, 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 and that's a thanks I get for giving the lad a trade. Mrs. Crowver. I then see. You calm down before you say something that you'll regret. I made up my mind to forgive your misdemeanour this He brushed morning. up against Mrs. Kershaw once. We never saw her again. You're asking for trouble. Look, could I go and get them pies? He's got wondering hands, Mrs. Burkle said. And wondering eyes. And they don't like it. That's enough. And he says things he shouldn't say to women. Right, that's it. You're fired. Oh, you're too late. I've resigned. If you repeat any of this nonsense to anyone, anywhere, then you'll be out of your death and there'll be bother. Yeah. I might pop in and tell Mrs. Sullivan. <clears throat> I'll just get them pies myself. No, no, no. I mean, Steve's no angel. Don't worry, I'm under no illusion about that. All I'm saying is, if Victoria hadn't had all that money, and if she hadn't been prepared to throw it at him every five seconds, well, none of this would have happened, let me tell you. So you say, it's all little Vicky's fault. The worst thing that ever happened to Steve was meeting that wee girl, honest to God, Kev. Don't get me wrong now. I don't dislike her. As a matter of fact, I was very fond of her, so it was. All I'm saying is, if he'd stuck with Fiona, none of this would have happened. She knew how to keep him in line, so she did. Victoria! Vicky! Vicky, look. I'm sorry. I didn't mean you to hear me say that. Why not, if it's what you think? Yeah, well, it doesn't really matter what I think, does it? I mean, you've enough on your plate without worrying about me putting my foot in it. I'm sorry. I'm intrigued, actually. I'm intrigued as to how anybody could turn this round into being all little Vicky's fault. No, look, I didn't mean that. Come on, you must have said something to Kevin for him to say that. No, look, I just... What? Nothing. It's incredible. It's, ju it's just bizarre. You think that the worst thing that could happen to your little Stephen was to meet me? If I had never met him, if I hadn't been taken in by him for so long, I wouldn't have ended up in this dead-end bit of the world. I would have stayed with my kind of people. Honest, good, respectable people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now just hold your horses a minute here, Victoria. And I wouldn't have been had up for perverting the course of justice, and I wouldn't be facing whoa, this. Whoa, wait a minute. Now what is this being taken in by business? What does that mean? Come on, tell me. What? Come on, Victoria. You knew what Stephen was like. You knew you just had to wave a wee bit of money underneath his nose and he'd be eaten out of your hand, so he would. In fact, you knew that when you more or less paid him to leave Fiona. I did not pay him to leave Fiona. Oh, come on, as good as. She almost paid him to marry you. Oh, yes, you knew what Stephen was like. Buck stupid. So what did you do? You spoilt him. A month-long honeymoon all around the world. Anything he wanted. So finally, when he came up to you to take some more money, money to hang himself with, because, excuse me, I'm assuming it was Stephen's idea to pay off Malcolm Fox. What did you do? What did you do? You gave it to him. I had to. It just went on and on at you me. You should have said no. Yes, well, that's easier said than done with Steve, isn't it? Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, get lost. <laughs> See, Curly won't say anything, but he likes to have a quiet tea time. Is it important? You see, I'll be in the Rovers tonight. I'm just helping out whilst I can veer her off. I don't really like No, to. it's all right. Both in. It'll be fine. See you later. Drop. You can't stop here all day. Can you have another sandwich? No. I've often fancied armed forces. You're not joining up, Ashley. 
Can get all over in army. Can do all sorts. Skiing. Everything. I'd never see you. Well, all right, then, fire brigade. Don't be stupid. You'd only get hurt. Go and apologise to your Uncle Fred. I didn't want to be a butcher in the first place. Well, at least it's a job. It's more than some people have got. I only got roped into it because he's my uncle. Well, like I say, can't stop here all day. This morning, you're all excited about spending day together. Yeah, but it ain't just one day now, is it? Now you're unemployed. Good. Go and ask for your job back. No. For me, Ashley. No, Kelly. Right. What are you doing? Either you go and ask for your job back. No. Oh, that's it. You and me. Finished. Don't be stupid. I mean it. I'm not going sucking up to him. Before it's too late. No, Kelly. Right then. Right then what? You better go then. That's it. Finished. Right then. I'm going. I'm leaving. I love you, Kelly. But I'm not going asking for my job back. Right then. Come on then. Ideas. How to impress a 13 year old girl. Should I know? You've got kids. What's she like? I don't know. Claire thinks she's fab, but uh, she's bound to. It's her daughter. Oh, right. So when are you seeing them? Tonight. I'm cooking for them. Ooh, Des. Now that's out for a start. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, why don't you take them for a burger or something? You know, drive through. Like that sort of thing. You know, good, unwholesome food. I think they're in America. <laughs> And then just spend your money because the way to someone else's child's heart is through the pockets. You are sad, mate. Ah, I know I'm sad, but it's true. So it's uh, getting rather serious, isn't it, this? Bothering about the kid liking you? Hmm? She's not in. Oh. I thought she'd be at your place. No, it's a day off. Well, she must have gone somewhere. Do you want to leave a message? No, I just wanted to speak to her. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah. You've been to prison, haven't you? Yeah. Was it as bad as you thought it would be? No, it's not that bad. Do you want a cup of tea? No. Come on, answer. Is he here? No. He's not at home either. What have you done with him? He was threatening to join the army and the fire brigade. Right. But when you do see him, I want you to reiterate to him, if you would, that there's now to be gained by spreading daft stories which have no foundation in truth. Especially around here, especially at the cabin. We've had an argument. Yes. Well, anyway. If you do see him. Oh, and that business of Mrs Crowther. It's not as cut and dried as he likes to make out. I think we might have finished. Yes, well, tell him. If he wants his job back, all he has to do is ask. I know an, 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 an apology wouldn't go amiss, you can tell him that. And if you see him, will you tell him that I love him and I didn't mean what I said? Oh, oh just leave him. Oh. This is Mr Elliot, Ashley's uncle. Yes, 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 <clears throat> What's the matter? Kelly? Okay. 
<clears throat> so, was she excited about coming? Of course she was. Mm. <laughs> Found it all right then, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're up to. Didn't really want to go to the loo at all, did you? Just thought you'd have a good poke around upstairs, see what you could find out about me. No. He's teasing you. See if you approve of me. Stop pulling a leg. I don't like your leg being pulled then, Becky. I don't mind. Right. What are we doing? Um, I thought we could go and see a film. Hmm? Do you fancy going to see a film? I don't mind. Maybe get a pizza afterwards. Do you like pizza? All right. What sort of films do you like? I don't mind. She likes Brad Pitt, don't you? Mm, do you? It's all right. Have you seen Toy Story? Yeah, twice. Um, maybe we could go ten-pin bowling. Yeah, no, great. That, that she loves going bowling. Do you? I don't mind. Um, what exactly would you like to do? Anything. Mm, more specifically. I don't mind. They'll be back on again tomorrow. You know what they're like at that age. Yeah, I had to sit and console her. Oh, you didn't. And I just walked through the door from work. Oh, poor kid. I hope it's not some kind of omen, you know. I'm beginning to wonder what I've let myself in for. Oh, nonsense. Anyway, I better get back. Okay. <laughs> right, that's 120 that are, kid. Oh, hey, come on. Come on, one pie, no one's gonna know. How did you go on with your brief this morning? Can't remember. Andy, Vicky's not been in this evening at all, has she? Vicky? No, uh, not been in for ages. No, I'm sorry, Ashley. I love you too. Oh, I've got to go. Mr. Barlow's in. Bye bye. Bye. Everything's all right. We're made up. He didn't have enough qualifications to get into the army. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, that was. 18 minutes local rate. I'll write it down somewhere, keep a record. Fine, fine, good idea. Right then. Um, is that your music? Um, I'll turn it off. Yeah, no. Um, well, what I mean is, I don't mind you playing music, but perhaps in your own room. Fine. Sorry. I'll just... I, I, is that all right? Take it upstairs, Cos. Good, good. Um, sorry. Uh, sorry. Right, just through there. There you go. Have you, uh, said thank you to Des, Becky? Thank you, Des. That's all right, darling. Same time, same place next week. How about that? I don't mind. Do you know what? It's years since I've been bowling. Mm. We'll both have backache in the morning, eh? I'll get some plates. Bit of a demon, your mum, eh? She's all right. Oh, sweet and sour. Do you like sweet and sour, Becky? I don't mind. Uh, um, drinks. Claire? Oh, never mind. I'll get them. Uh, do you fancy something to drink? Um, beer? <laughs> I don't mind. Yeah. Oh, there's coke or lemonade. Do you fancy a beer, Claire? Please, thanks. Do you think she likes me? Of course she does. Coke or lemonade? Either. We'll, uh, we'll stay till ten. Is that OK? Yeah. Shall I put some music on? I don't mind. Do you like him? No. I think he's a plonker. Vicky, I thought I heard you come down. Why aren't you in bed? I couldn't sleep. Hey. Don't do that. Come in. Come on. Oh, I wish I was dead. <laughs> no, no. I do. Uh, I'm such a bad person. Nonsense. You don't know. I know that you haven't got a bad bone in your body. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm manipulating and, and I'm selfish and childish and, and I'm irresponsible and if I can't get my own way by normal means 
I'll just pay for it. Oh, you're just at a low ebb, love, and it's perfectly understandable. Good grief. Oh, I'm awful. I'm disgusting. And it's all my fault. Everything that's happened. No. Oh, it is. OK, Steve did persuade me to pay that money to Malcolm Fox, but I let him. I let him think he could have everything. I mean, if I wasn't manipulating him with the promise of money, I was I was just letting him have it. Look, I'm not listening to this. It's silly. I wanted him so badly. I just couldn't see what I was doing. I couldn't see how bad it was what I was doing. Look, you fell in with a bad lot. That's the top and bottom of it. So naive and stupid. Look, I'll make some cocoa. I can't testify against him. Don't be silly. It's all my fault. Deeper down, I know it is. He would have never got involved with that man if I'd have kept him in line, but I couldn't. Because he never really loved me. He loved Fiona. And I lured him away. <laughs> I'm so immoral. I was so bad for him. Oh, I should have just kept away from him and stayed out of his life. Look, come here. You, you'll feel totally different about this in the morning. I don't know where all this has come from. I'm not going to testify against him, Grandad. You will, love. You will. Morning, morning, Daniel. Oh, well, what about you? I've had mine, Tar. I've made your coffee, toast on. Mm, you're spoiling me. Not used to this treatment. Did his mum know? Um, sorry. Oh, that's OK. If we're going to be living under the same roof, we can't have no-go areas of conversation, can we? So, what are you two going to be up to today? Well, I thought I'd take him to Heaton Park if it stays sunny. Hey, well, uh, watch him on the bus. Sit next to someone with a shopping bag. He helps himself. <laughs> There's lots of places I could take him if I could drive. Yeah, well, you need a car. Well, I'm not being cheeky, but yours is just stood outside school all day. True. My dad gave me some lessons once, but I nearly come to blows. Yeah, well, it's never a good idea to instruct a member of your own family. No. What I really need is someone who's not a relative, but who's patient and is used to teaching people how to do things. Are you feeling any better? A bit. Upsetting yourself like you did last night. I don't know where you get these ideas from. I'm just facing the fact that most of this is my fault, even if it has taken me too long to realise it. Vicky, look, how many more times? It's not to do with you. Steve MacDonald was rotten from the day he was born. Nobody's born rotten. Maybe if he'd have had to fight a bit harder for things in life, it would have been different. He'd have fought for nothing, him. He wanted everything handed to him on a plate, and he made damn sure it was. But without me, he might have stood a better chance. He should have stayed with Fiona. He really cared about her, you know. I kidded myself about that as well. He dumped her, for God's sake. The lass had no cash. I've got to make you realise when I say that it was all my fault. Greasy little swine twisted you round his finger right from the word go. No. Spoilt little rich girl always got what she wanted. I was quite blatant. You were a young, innocent kid. He'd knocked around with God knows how many. No, I am not innocent. I am not your sweet little Vicky. I'm a grown woman, and I knew exactly what I was doing. I went out of my way to get him, and I did. So if I'm even partly to blame, then how can I go to court and testify against him? I can't. My ear's burning. This might amaze you, mate, but we've got lives as well. You're not the only topic of conversation around here. Well, fair enough. You were talking about me, though, right? Childhood memories. Just talking about how you always used to get round me to dig out of trouble at school. That's what mums do. Your dad were right. He always said I were too soft. Hey, let him take his medicine like a wee man. 
But it was right! Look, Mum, that's rubbish. None of this is down to you. And that's the first true word you've said in a long time. Look, face it, I never got in any real trouble until she came tripping along. Oh, so it's all Vicky's fault? Of course it is. Why didn't we realise? Look, all I'm saying is that, you know, if I hadn't met her, then, you know, maybe things would be different now. Oh, I of course they would, yeah. You'd have a nice little uh, desk job in a bank. Suburban semi. Company pension scheme, yeah, right. Huh. It's not at the factory where, is he? Well, I take it you're talking about my husband. Do you know what them scumbags have gone and done now? They've only gone to stop me benefit. And me housing benefit. They'd have me flaming knickers off me if they could. Well, no, that can't be right, surely. No, it's not right. It's a lousy, rotten injustice. It's persecution, that's what. Hey, look, 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 look. Hang on. Take it easy. Take it easy. Alma, get a cup of tea, will you? Now then, why the hell would want to do something like this? Because you know? I did a few hours cleaning for her old man. And some stinking Torax gone and shot me. Well, that's awful, but you can hardly blame Mike. A few hours, lousy skimming, and I've lost the lot. Who's gonna tell my Jamie that I've no brass left to buy supper? Who's gonna tell him that we'll soon be kipping in Cardboard City? Look, I'll tell you what, I can lend you a few bob if it's any. But then what? Go round with me begging bowl? I might as well just sit on a street corner with a placard around my neck with rest and dossers. Oh, Marmaduke's taken to our Billy, you know, like a treat, I'm happy to say. I was a bit worried, though, in case you've got jealous, you know. Mm. Well, you never know with pets, do you? No. Oh, you can't call them pets now. Oh. No, it's not PC. Politically correct. <laughs> I knew I'd rue the day she swapped true romance for the Guardian. <laughs> I actually heard it on the radio. It said that in America... America? Oh. Yeah, but they have to call them animal companions now. Oh, good. <laughs> well, see you, Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. Hello, Poppy. Now, can we still call them babies, or are they pre-adults? Oh, once something tickles her, she won't let it drop. Right, what can I get you? Actually, I wanted to speak to Mrs Sullivan. Ah, so Mrs Wilton can go in the kitchen and put the kettle on. Unless that's not PC. Yes, love, what can I do for you? It's Ashley. He's done so much stupid and got himself the sack. That often happens when you've done so much stupid. You were dumb to have took the morning off. You got a sack because you took the morning off? Well, he gives some cheek and all, but he's learnt his lesson and it won't happen again. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. So what can I do for you? Well, I thought you might put a word in for him, seeing as how your friend of his uncle like. So what's to stop young Ashley putting a word in for himself? He's scared. So he got you to go all round the houses and come to me? No, I don't know anything about it. It was my idea. It were a bad one. Forget it. Keen on him, aren't you? I just wanted to help. I'm sorry. Two pound forty, gents. Yeah, I'll get this. Cheers. Thanks, right. love. So how's the latest romance going? Early days yet. There's been complications. Oh, right. What, the daughter? Or did you bribe her, like I said? Took them both for a night out. Yeah, the bribe. And? Oh, she seemed chuffed. Well, like I said, piece of cake. Now, if she'd have had a teenage son, you would have been on a sticky wicket. <laughs> I should know. <laughs> You don't need to be no mind reader to guess what them two are on about. You could not be that stupid. Look, I'm telling you, she's talked herself into it. Or he has. If he's been anywhere near no, her. No, no, no. She's, she's dreamed this one of herself. It's too subtle for him. Any road, seemingly, it's all her fault now. And so it's her that should take the punishment. Martyr herself for scum like that. I don't get it. A few days ago, hanging was too good. Uh, well, the poor kid doesn't know which way's up. My, my only worry is she's on the verge of a breakdown. All oh, thanks to we know who. We've all failed her, you know, one way or another. Me, you, Bet. We tried talking her out of marrying him till we were blue in the face. What else could we have done? Short of kidnapping her? Or him. Maybe we should have. Press ganged him onto one of Sunliner's boats, had him dumped on a desert island. Crocodile infested for preference. <laughs> Anyway, it's no good if some boats, is it? I mean, this is where we're at. This is what we have to deal with. I'll speak to her. Well, I hope you have more luck than I did. Oh, 
those seams are too wide. You're wasting fabric. Ida, show her, will you? Well, Harry Jacobs just run to see if you can make it a three tomorrow instead of four. Yeah, yeah, no problem. That's what I told him. Hang on. If you've got me organised, why bother asking? The protocol. So you're back finally, are you? Oh, what's she doing here? She were in earlier on Mr Baldy. They've only gone to stop me benefit now. You know, her income support. Thank you, Ida. I don't need an interpreter. And me housing benefit. Well, who's going to pay the rent on the flat? Well, I can't, can I? Well, you better find some way, otherwise you're out. Oh, that's charming, that is. Consider I'm only in this mess because of you. Huh. How'd you make that out? That job I did for you. Somebody's gone and grassed me up. Well, I hope you're not suggesting it was me. No, but if it's down to you that I'm in this mess, then it's down to you to get me out of it. Oh. Well, that's a remarkable piece of logic, even by your erratic standards. Look, I don't expect any handouts. But I expect some rent. Then give me some work. That's all I'm asking. Let them with both be suited. Look, you were happy with the way I cleaned that unit. You must be able to find me something else. Sorry, sweetheart. That was a one-off. So that's it? You and your kid can go and starve? Well, thanks a bunch, Mr Baldwin. I wish I'd burn that flaming place down now. You could have talked at the shop. I thought it would be more private here. So, what did you want to speak to me about, then? I gather you've got some ridiculous idea about changing your testimony. I thought you might draft an allies. Your granddad's very concerned about you, Vicky. We both are. I'm very concerned about me. I don't particularly want to go to prison. But I've ruined Steve's life enough as it is. I don't want to make it any worse. You do realise that if you withdraw your original statement, it's tantamount to admitting that he was telling the truth all along, that you were the liar. I don't care. Plus, you'll be held in contempt of court. Be guilty of two offences, then. May as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. Vicky, you'll wreck your life for nothing. Chances are it'll still go down, even without your evidence. Yes, but it would be a certainty with it, wouldn't it? Oh. Mrs Buxton came back early from, from lunch. Well? If you mean, has he talked any sense into me yet, then the answer's no. Because I happen to believe that what I'm saying does make sense. All I know is this is the only way I can live with myself. Vicky, listen. Please. No, I'm sick of listening! I'm sick of everybody telling me what to do, what to say, what to think. I can't take any more. I've had enough. <clears throat> Temperature's a bit chilly for me. You never struck me as being that sensitive. All right. I know when I'm getting the cold shoulder. Spit it out. All right, then. I thought you behaved abominably to that girl. She barges her way onto my premises, slags me off in front of my staff, and I'm the one that's behaving badly. She is at her wit's end. She hasn't got any wits to be at the end of. You could at least have tried to see if there was some way you could have helped her. Well, why me? It's not my fault she was found fiddling the system. She knows that. It was just an excuse. Oh, for what? Oh, you only see things the way you want to, don't you? You're treading on very dangerous ground here, young lady. Trisha came to you because you're the one person with any clout she knows that can help her. I know that girl better than you do. And she's trouble with a capital T. Oh, so you're just going to tread her even deeper into the gutter than she already is? I had a boss once, you know. First and only time I ever worked for anyone. And if I'd have spoken to him the way you're speaking to me, I'd have been out. Suits me. I told you before, I'm not sure I want to work for a man who's got no principles. All right. So what happened to protocol? Come on, your daft back. Get back to work. Oh, I don't know. I must be going soft in my old age. Thanks, Anna. And uh, I hope it goes well on Friday. Yeah, well, coming from your husband, I think going well would mean he gets sent down for life. Well, it doesn't from me. I know. And thanks. I'll tell him. Are you OK? Oh, yeah. Rubber ball, mate. Well, truth is, 
could ring our kids neck for what he's done. I really could. But if anybody else has a go... Ah, well, he's your brother. I know. Twin brother. There is a bond, like it or not, mm. which I don't, actually, at the moment, very much at all. Um, can I have a coffee, please? Uh, white, no sugar. Still talking? You're looking a bit rough. Well, you've not lost your usual smoothie charm. I wanted to call round and see you, Vicky, but. Opposite side of the camp. It's okay. We can still be friends. I haven't got any, actually. I don't really know what to say, except I wish, like. That Steve had never met me. Well, for your sake, as much as is. Yes, well, he did. So we're both stuck with that. You'd no right going to her. Well, you wouldn't ask him, so I thought she might. You men look complete twit now. You are a twit. <laughs> I only did it because I care about you. And that is your first mistake. Letting a man get you is a fool's game. I can't take you lot to the countryside. Frighten the cows, won't they, David? Yeah. <laughs> then we'll have no milk to put on our cornflakes, will we? To learn about life, where we stupid Mrs. Takes them. Hello. Hey. When they take you to prison, will they make you eat porridge? I ate hey, porridge. Sarah, come on. I uh, I can't stop long, cos Becky will be back from her pals. She's a nice kid. <laughs> Do you know? Sometimes I feel like she's the mother and I'm the child. Yeah, know what you mean. All adults these days, aren't they? Mm. Certainly scare the pants off me. So, what's it to be? Uh, tea, coffee, speciality cocktail, de la maison? What, five o'clock in the afternoon? Oh. If we were in Africa now, we'd be sat in the veranda having sundowners. Mm. And swatting the mozzies. <laughs> <sighs> Have you ever been anywhere exotic? No. Our kid's the traveller in the family. Merchant Navy. Mm. So what's the verdict? On. Me and Becky. W yeah, it's all right. Didn't expect her to be wild about me. She's bound to be anti any new guy that comes along. Especially when he's the first one that her mum's taken seriously since her dad died. Who said anything about taking you seriously? What? You mean you're just toying with me? And if I said yes? Well, great. I love being toyed with. <laughs> you daft. <laughs> well, never claimed otherwise. Yes. Thanks for being so understanding about Becky. It's all right. What was I supposed to do? Throw a tantrum because she doesn't think I'm the best thing since Brad Pitt? No. Yeah. She'll get used to you. Mm. I'm like acne. I grow on you. Come here. <laughs> you tell me, what do young girls eat? Uh, half a cracker and a glass of water. They're all anorexic. <laughs> Not Kelly, thank heaven. I'll have two vanilla slices. And if she is on a diet, I can have them both. But is she settling in then? Yeah, like a member of the family. Even down to heavy hints about me giving a driving lesson. Oh, what did you say? Well, I suddenly found this riveting article about pork belly futures. Well, what are they? I'm the glue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Trisha Armstrong's been looking for you. Yeah, she found me. Oh, poor girl, she's in a right state. She's lost all her benefits. I mean, were you able to give her any advice? Yeah. Get lost. All heart, as usual. <sighs> You're as well at the moment, I hear. Taken in waifs and strays. Or is it just nubile teenage girls? <laughs> I know, I know, you've got to go. Oh, I've got time for a coffee first. Oh, big deal. I'm sorry. It's just... Yeah? Well, it's like we're having an illicit affair or something. I mean, it's a bit ridiculous considering we're both free consent and adults. Oh, look, I mean, you know why I can't stay overnight. Yes, well, Becky doesn't expect you to be a nun for the rest of your life. <laughs> Telling her that I was seeing someone was bad enough. I mean, how am I going to say that I'm sleeping with you? She must know about the birds and the bees. Oh, don't be awkward. I mean, that's not the issue. She loved her father. I understand that. But you've got your own life to lead. It is. <laughs> We've been so close this last couple of years. Just me and Becky. 
it's going to take time. Time for her to get used to the idea that there's someone else around. How much time? I don't know. You know, I mean, if you're not prepared to wait, then fine. <laughs> Why should you? You don't even know me. Thousands of women out there with no attachments to get in the way. They don't sell ornamental chamber pots. <laughs> so it's me chamber pots you're after. Mm. Kinky for them. One sugar? You're learning. Oh, I'm sorry. We're closed. Uh, it's all right, Mavis. He's not a customer. Business maxim number one. The whole world's a customer. In that case, would you like to buy a two-pound box of chocolates? Yeah, oh, I would. I would. I would. But this wouldn't. In any case, I could hardly give it to you as a gift. Well, I would make a change from lamb chops. Uh, right, I'll be off then. All right. See you Enjoy your aubergine crumble. Oh. They're having aubergine crumble. I've told you they tend towards vegetarian. And I've told you no dirty talk. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> uh, before we go, Fred, a word about young Ashley. Oh, aye. What's he been telling you? He hasn't. But I happen to know you've sacked him. You mean you've not actually spoken to him to yourself, then? No. What difference would that make? Oh, none at all, none at all. No, it's just that the lad sometimes lets his mouth run away with him. A vivid imagination runs in the family. Exactly. He's family, Fred. And he's a decent lad. Whatever he's done, everybody deserves a second chance. Business maxim number two. You run your business and let other people run theirs. You mean Rita keep your nose out? Put it this way, I don't tell you how to deal with that dippy Mavis of yours, do I? No. Exactly. But... All right, no offence, Duke. No, of course not. Thank you. Not working tonight, then? No, I was planning a night in, but Steve wants to have a chat with his dad, so I thought I'd better leave him to it. One thing about all this, it's uh, brought you and Jim a bit closer together, eh? Don't get your hopes up. There's going to be no big reconciliation thing. Yeah, but at least you can uh, stand him coming around the house now. I've had to learn to stand a lot more than that lately. Truth is, Bill, I'm worried sick. Whatever our take has given me is still my son. And the thought of him going to prison... I don't know if he can take it. I don't know if any of us can. Oh, she was in a right mess. I mean, I tried talking to her, but she didn't want to know. Said she's got no friends around here anymore. Oh, she tried to speak to me yesterday and I was too busy with something so important. I can't even remember what it was now. Betty? What, lovey? Can you and Andy hold the fort for an hour? Ooh, I don't know about that, though. Uh, well, it, it's Vicky. Oh, right. Make sure it's no longer than the hour. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Betty. I'll get up. And before you make any cracks, no, I know I shouldn't be here. But it's either this or throw myself in the flaming air, well. Well, I was going to ask you what you wanted to drink, but I don't think I'll bother. I'll tell you. Betty? Yes, sir? Brandy and orange, please. Double. Hey, you left me sozzled. There's the worst thing. Has anything turned up yet? Only bills. Any road, why should you care? Oh, no need to ask what you've been doing. Sticking pins in a Mike Baldwin doll. Mike? She yeah. thinks I'm the first cousin to Beelzebub. <laughs> hey, it's no joking, that, mate. I know, you're right. Being broke should be taken seriously. Which means you don't come barging in, slagging off the bloke you're trying to get a job off. What did you want me to do? A flaming fan dance? If you want to work, you should ask for an interview politely and properly like normal people. Then I might. I said I just might. See if there's anything going. Can I have an interview, Mr Baldwin? Yeah, all right, tomorrow morning. But I'm not making any promises. Well, my, uh, my brief reckons that Vicky will have a tough time convincing the jury, beyond reasonable doubt, mm -hmm. that I had anything to do with bribing Fox. Yeah, well, it's still her word against yours, isn't it? Yeah, but she'll bottle out. Mm. I mean, she was only put up to lying by, by, uh, by Nick and Alec, the brokers, man. I mean, they make good panda turns if they want to just give you so Uh huh. You reckon? Well, listen. Victoria is no puppet. She got rid of that flat and she got rid of the business off her own bat. Nobody else's help, all right? Yeah, well, we don't know that, though, do we? Oh. 
Yeah, but what I do know is when she's in court and I'm in the dock, she'll not want to see me go down, will she? She'll not want to see me go to prison, will she? No. I'd have been better off if Grandad and Bet had left me where I was when my parents died. No, you wouldn't. At least I wouldn't have met some of the rotten people around here, would I? It's only Steve who's let you down. Everybody else, Gus. Who? Bet? It didn't stop her walking out on me, did it? Grandad? Well, he's never forgiven me for disobeying him and marrying Steve. And Uncle Nick cares more about my blasted inheritance than about me. I've got a good mind to just pack my bags and leave them all to it. What about the trial? What about it? If I testify against Steve, then he'll go to prison. If I don't, then I will. Some choice. What time do you have to be there? A quarter past. Well, they can't start without you, can they? Do you know for a fact that Vicky's going to plead guilty? Yeah. So, how can she then say she isn't really guilty because you made her do it? <laughs> well, right, yeah. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, she's saying she's guilty because she was involved, but she just did what you told her to. Well, yeah, well, well then she's lying. What sort of a job is it, anyway? Um, something to do with making clothes, I think. You making clothes? On a machine, not sewing me a needle and thread. And I'd be trained. Yeah, you'd flame and need to be. Honestly, Jamie, you might just give me a bit of encouragement. Yeah, well, I hope you get it anyway. Thank you. Though you know what the shame is? What? I couldn't have landed it while we were still on social. Then I'd have got my rent paid and a wage on top. Would have been coining it. And he's not allowed to talk to you, even when you get in court, is he? No. So if he does, even if it's just a whisper, let somebody know. I think it's time we made ourselves known to the court usher. Oh, right. Well, good luck, Vicky Love. And just tell the truth, that's all you have to do. Tell the truth, send my husband to prison. Over here. Court one. Victoria McDonald. She turned up, then. I don't think she's got much choice, Mum, seeing as though she's charged as well. Well, someone else has turned up, Mum. Hi, Dad. Andrew, do you mind if I join you? No, of course we don't. Stephen, how you doing? All right. Uh, shouldn't be a bit of letting them know you're here? No, me, uh, me barrister told me to wait until she arrived. Oh, so it's a she then, is it, eh? Yeah. Best thing, really. The uh, jury tends to believe women more than they do men. <laughs> Tell me about it. Thanks, some so. chewing gum, please. All right. Thank you. Thanks. So you didn't talk to Mr Elliot about Ashley's job then? Oh, I did have a word, yes. Yeah, but he refused point blank to listen, didn't he? Thank you, Mavis. I can manage this conversation myself. Oh, well, I'm sorry I spoke. That's uh, one pound and five p, please. Well, I must admit, Mr Elliot didn't seem right keen on taking Ashley back. Seemed Ashley had uh, spoke out of turn and not done his cause a right lot of good. Yeah, but men... Oh, no. No, I'm not supposed to speak, am I? Well, anyway... No, but mainly, Mr Elliot didn't take kindly to being told who we should and shouldn't employ. Anybody being me? Yes, on this occasion. I shouldn't have asked you, should I? Well, of course you should. Out's worth a try. She, she was just disappointed to find she didn't have as much influence over him as she thought she had. Well, thanks for trying. Bye. See you, Trollo. Bye. I'm sorry, Rita, but it's true. Fred Elliot only wants your company when it suits him, otherwise he don't give tuppence for you. Really? Well, thank you for pointing that out. What are friends for? It's a charge that means what it says. Conspiracy. People coming together to pervert the cause of justice. In this case, to get one of them off. And there is no doubt that a conspiracy took place. Of the three people accused, two of them Mrs. MacDonald and Mr. Fox have pleaded guilty. Your task today, ladies and gentlemen, is to consider the role of Mr. MacDonald, who has pleaded not guilty. Mr. MacDonald will claim that he had no part in this conspiracy, that he didn't even know it was going on. This is despite the fact that it involved his wife 
handing over large sums of money to a friend of his in a transaction very much to his advantage. Oh, hi. I, am. Um wanted to say I'm sorry if I was a bit offhand when I came in the other time. It's just, I was that stressed. I mean, you can't imagine. Oh, no, come on, that's all right. Only touch wood. I'm hoping things are going to be looking up, thanks to your husband. Oh, well, you heard him, didn't you, because you were there. He's offered me a job. No, he offered you an interview. Oh, yeah, but he wouldn't waste his time interviewing me, would he, if there weren't a job going? Um, so... I'd be ever so grateful if you could put in a word. Oh, come on. he doesn't listen to me when it comes to who he employs. No. Not if I'm me putting a word in, he'd probably put the kiss of death on it. Well, have you got any tips then? You know, what's he looking for when he's interviewing somebody? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just his wife. I've never worked for him. Well, not been paid. Oh, hang on a minute. Talk of the devil. Oh, are you? I was just coming to see you. Why? What's happened now? Well, you promised me an interview. You know, Did I? last night in the Rovers. Hmm? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, well, we'll do it here, shall we? Sit down. Uh, what, um... Well, just sit down. Oh, right, right. I thought I was getting away for quite half hour. Get you a nice cup of coffee? Hmm? Yeah, go on then. <laughs> now, don't sit there. Sit over there in the corner. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know who she was un until she told me she was uh, Steve's wife. And what happened then? Well, then she suggested that if... I changed my statement saying that Steve knew that the, uh, the stuff was stolen, that, um, well, there might be some money in it for me. How much? Started off at 3,000, ended up at six. And where was Mr. McDonnell whilst these negotiations were taking place? He, he was uh, outside. How do you know that? Because she said, said he was. And did you get the impression that Mr. McDonnell knew what was going on? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, he'd, he'd sent her. Mrs. MacDonald told you that? Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Fox, on the occasion we're talking about, when Mrs. MacDonald gave you the first instalment of the money, did you see Steve MacDonald? Well, not... Yes or no? Did you see him? And no. And all right, Mrs. MacDonald might have given you the impression he was outside in the car. But mightn't she have done that because she wasn't happy being alone with you in your office? She wanted you to think her husband was outside for her own protection. That's possible, yeah. So, just once more, so the jury is absolutely clear, who was it who gave you the money? Was it Mr. MacDonald or was it Mrs. MacDonald? It's Mrs. Well, the only work I've got going is for machinists, which I gather is work you've never done before. Um, well, not exactly, no, but... No, I'm... not at all, ever, no. So I go ahead, I spend a fortune training you, then something else comes along and you're off. I've been waiting for something else for five years and there ain't anything, not for me. This job's the only chance I've got. On the house. Oh, Ta. Well, you've got one, I don't see why she shouldn't. She's nice, isn't she, your wife? So I go ahead and I train you. But I want you to know why I'm employing you. Does that mean you will? Listen. Oh, sorry. I will be employing yeah. you, so... So at the end of the week, you'd have some money to pay the rent. Nothing else. So when I came round to see you with my other hat on, landlord, you'd have some money in your purse. Yeah, OK. It's got nothing to do with what you offered me the last time I came to your flat. And you got rid of Jamie, right? Put you all your makeup on. <laughs> yeah, well, I was desperate then, wasn't I? All right, all right, keep your voice down. I just want you to know I wasn't interested then, and I'm not now. I know. All right. You can start Monday. Oh, thanks. I oh, thanks. You won't regret it. I promise you. <laughs> so you were just 15 when your parents were killed? Yes. And your inheritance was held in trust. Approximately how much was this, by the way? Uh, 240,000. Which you received when you were how old? 18. 18? So there you were, a wealthy young woman. Quite a catch. How long was it before you married Steve MacDonald? About six months. As quick as that? Yes. Mrs MacDonald, whose idea was it to bribe Mr Fox? 
Was it Mr. Fox's? Did he suggest it himself? Is that a yes or a no? No. So whose idea was it? Was it your own idea? No. Well, it only leaves one other person, but I'd still like to hear it from you, Mrs. MacDonald. Whose idea was it? Steve's. Steve's? That's Mr. MacDonald, your husband, yes? Yes. Did he instruct you to take the money out of your account? Yes. And when you took it to Mr. Fox, did he drive you there? Yes. What about the second instalment? Can you tell us about that? I gave it to Mr. Fox's wife in the ladies' toilets and the court. And who told you to do that? Steve. Thank you. So you're saying that Steve MacDonald married you for your money? No. No, I hope not. Because when, in February 95, you suddenly decided to leave school and went to live six doors away from him, he was, at that time, living with someone else, wasn't he? Yes. Till you came along with your money. And then, tell us, Mrs. MacDonald, what did you do to persuade him to break off this rather inconvenient relationship? I didn't do anything. Didn't you offer to pay off his debts? No. It wasn't like that. Totaling over £4,000? And then, once you'd done that, you whisked him off to the West Indies, and that's where you were married, yes? Yes. And who paid for the tickets? I did. As you've always paid for everything. Let's face it, Mrs. MacDonald, your whole attitude to life is anything you want, you buy it. Including, on this occasion, your husband's freedom. No! What? It wasn't your money? Well, yes, but... And you weren't the one who handed it over? Because Steve wanted me to! I just one last question. Do you believe it's a woman's place to do whatever her husband tells her without questioning it? No. You think she should be capable of thinking for herself and so be responsible for her own actions? Yes. Thank you. You know, things you forget, like she really did use her money to break up him and Fiona. Yeah, although what that's got to do with conspiracy, Mum, I don't know. Yeah, well, it's all got to do with relationships, hasn't it? I mean, who's pulling whose strings? Andy? Well, it's the first time I've thought he does have a chance. Of course he has a chance. I mean, if the jury really listen to what's being said. Elizabeth, that's what they're there for, OK? That's exactly what they're going to do. Now, listen, don't worry your head about it. Can we just have a wee sandwich or a wee drop of trough or something? Well, Rita asked him, but he wouldn't even talk about it. I told you it wouldn't do any good. And you were right. Congratulations. He wants to be a butcher anyway. I thought you did. I had no choice. I was pushed into it by my mum. Can't she talk him into taking you back? No. Having her talk to him, that's worse than having this Rita woman. So what are you going to do now? What sort of work is there for an half-trained butcher? Double eight two seven. All right, yeah. I'll just go and get him. Just a minute, please. It's your Uncle Fred. I'm not here, no. Ashley! I don't want to talk to him. He'll just shout at me. So what am I supposed to do now? I don't know. Mr. Elliot, I'm sorry, Ashley's not here. I don't know what made me think he was. Mr. MacDonald, did you instruct your wife to offer a bribe to Mr. Fox? No. Did you know that's what she was doing? No. What was the first you knew of it? Uh, afterwards, um, when, she, when she told me. And what was your reaction? Well, I... Um... I told her it was a stupid thing to have done, but uh, she'd done it for me because um, 
she knew I was being set up, and um, and she thought it was the uh, only way out. What would you have said if you'd known in advance that's what she was doing? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd have said, don't do it. I, I mean, um, not only is it like a, like a serious offence, um, but you don't trust Malcolm. Mr. Fox? Yeah, um, I mean, giving him money. I mean, y y I mean, you know he's only going to come back for more. So you would have said to your wife that what she was intending was not only illegal, but also that it was unlikely to achieve its purpose? Well, it, it hasn't, has it? You would never have offered money to Mr. Fox because you knew he wasn't to be trusted. Absolutely. But your wife wouldn't know this? No. One thing that might be puzzling the jury... Your wife went to all these lengths to try to keep you out of court, and she did this because she loved you? I, well, I, su I suppose, yeah. So why is she now here as a witness for the prosecution? Why is she pointing the finger and saying you made her do it? Because, um, other people have persuaded her to. What other people, and, and why should they do that? Well, there, um, there are certain people that, um, that think I'm not good enough for her, and, uh, who have tried to stop us getting married. In what way weren't you good enough? I was, I was ordinary. I was, uh, working class. I, I didn't go to public school. I see. And this campaign has continued, has it? Well, if you take a granddad, for instance, that, I mean, well, he's done lots of things, but... One thing he did do was he, um, he offered me £5,000 uh, if, I, if I didn't marry her. And he even wrote out the cheque and, uh, and, and pushed it in front of me. But you refused it? Yeah. But he never gave up. He, um, he went on and on at her and... And, uh, well, OK, he's, 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 he's done it. He's, um, he's turned her against me. She's, uh, she's moved out and she's moved in with him. And, well, she generally seems to be accusing me of, of, of everything she can. The marriage has effectively collapsed. Yeah. yeah. And how do you feel about that? Well, it's, it's terrible. I, I love Vicky. I'll, I'll always love Vicky. I mean, I don't know why she's doing it, except she, she just probably just wants to shut me out of her life, and um, this must be the easiest way of doing it. Hello. Hello. Um, have a bit of please. Hey, guess what? I've got a job. Really? Oh, congratulations. Well, it's not special, but at least it's a job, so I'm celebrating, because I reckon I'm entitled. Well, you are. Hiya. You don't mind, do you? Don't mind what? Me just turning up. How oh, great. Turn up any time you like. At Betty. Yeah. Can I have a glass of... Um, I'll have a glass of white wine, please. Coming on, love. Cheers. No, it's just that I thought, well, OK, maybe like you said, I can't always get away at night or at weekends because of our bed. Yeah, sure. Which, I must say, you've been very good about. Well, I am. Ask anybody. But, um, there are, you know, other times in the day when we get together, if we really want to. <coughs> One twenty, love it. Right. Thanks, Betty. Um, are you working today? Yeah, no, I've been on the stall all morning. What time have you got to get back? Hour, oh, hour and a half. Well, it shouldn't take you an hour and a half to drink that. No. Six thousand pounds was paid to Fox so that MacDonald would not have to face a possible criminal charge. Now that much is beyond doubt, and what is also beyond doubt is that Mrs. MacDonald was instrumental in handing the money over and that she withdrew the money from her own account. What is contested, members of the jury? What you must decide is whether she did that of her own accord without her husband's knowledge or whether she did it because he told her that she must.
Well, where is he? I assume he's here, despite all that nonsense on the telephone. Well, yeah. Ashley! Oh, no. You know that young lady tells lies, said you weren't here when you were. Any road. About this job. I've just had six young men wanted to take your place. Six, all with university degrees. But I'm soft-hearted. I say I'm soft-hearted. At any road, I don't want to upset your mother. So, what is it you've got to tell me to make me change my mind and take you back? You're sorry and you want your job back. Well, yeah, OK. Well, yeah, OK. I'm sorry I want my job back, yeah. You're a lucky lad, just remember that. Now get outside and wait in the car, some business to attend to a crossroad. But only on one condition. I beg your pardon? I don't want you going on like you were, making fun of us. Ashley! No, I don't care. You didn't hear him. And what else will you be wanting, may I ask? Bow me head whenever I talk to you, shall I? Keep me voice down in case you're having a dick. I just want you to stop going on. All right, yes. Now get outside before I put my boot on your backside. Will the foreman of the jury please stand? Will you answer my next question, yes or no? Had the jury reached a verdict upon which you are all agreed? Yes. And do you find the defendant, Stephen James MacDonald, guilty or not guilty of conspiring to pervert the course of justice? Guilty. Guilty? Yes. And that is the verdict of you all? Yes. I thank the members of the jury. And before I pass sentence, I must ask the defendants if there's anything else they wish to be taken into account. Rita? Well, hello. Now, I think perhaps I gave the wrong impression to the day. So I thought I'd come in and put matters straight between us. Well, there's no need. It's your business, Fred. You're entitled to sack your employees without worrying what I might think. He knows that. He made that perfectly clear. Just as I'm entitled to sack my employees. Even so, I think I might have given offence. No. <laughs> so I thought the best way to put things right would be to take your advice and reinstate the lad, which I have just done. So there we are. Things are back as they should be. Well, I hope you don't regret it and then blame me. I wouldn't dream of it, providing you let me buy your dinner tonight. Well, all right. Wonderful. Then perhaps I could give you some advice on how to deal with your staff. I need it. Past seven. See you then. He's only given that lad his job back so that you'll go out and have dinner with him. I know, and I'm flattered. And Ashley's got his job back, so Kelly will be chuffed. It's only you miserable. Time, gentlemen, please. Oh, very nice, love. <laughs> You're a big joke, you know, I hope. Oh, always make exception for regulars. A large card. Yes, please, love. Okay, love. I've just been hearing about how you're going to be employing this young lady. Yeah, that's right, I am. I mean, when you think about it, he practically owns me. He's both my landlord and my employer. Oh, well, you better be nice to him. Oh, I shall. <laughs> yeah, love. Keep the change, love. Oh, da. Well, it's a pity he's married, really, else he could have me body on top of everything uh, else. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to make some phone calls. Oh, I think you've embarrassed her. Oh, I think I have. Malcolm Fox, you were an active participant in this conspiracy. The only thing in your favour is that you pleaded guilty. I sentence you to 12 months imprisonment to commence at the end of the sentence you're currently serving. Victoria Frances MacDonald, I believe you were very much under the influence of your husband in what you did, and that therefore a sentence of 12 months imprisonment suspended for two years is appropriate in your case. That means you remain free if you stay out of trouble. Steve and James MacDonald. I'm convinced that you were the prime mover in this conspiracy. You used your wife and your wife's money to corrupt the defendant Fox while hoping that you yourself would remain in the shadows. Your aim throughout has been to preserve your own freedom at any cost, even if it meant your wife going to prison in your place. In this you failed. I sentence you to two years in prison. Take them down.
two years, Jim. He didn't deserve that. Two years of my son's life while she walks away. Well, yeah, but she didn't exactly get away scot-free now, did she? Yeah, but she's still free to get on with her life. Look, it wasn't Victoria's fault, was it? I mean, she did have to tell the truth. Oh, well, you've changed your tune, haven't you? Look, blaming her is not helping Anna, not anymore, all right? But she is to blame. Her and her flaming money. You know that as well as I do. Yes, I'm not denying it played a big part in putting him where he is, putting him in his situation behind bars, but you have to admit, he played his part too. When it comes to turning arguments in his favour, he's not exactly in the beginner's class of Stephen now, is he? Yeah, he has got a point, Mum. I mean, when it comes to flirting with trouble, Steve was doing very nicely, thanks very much, even before Vicky came on the scene. He wasn't in prison. What is the matter with you two? Look, will you listen to me? I wouldn't wish that on anyone, so I wouldn't. And I hate the idea of him being behind bars as much as you do, but it happens to be a fact. And incidentally, I think two years for what he did is diabolical. Look, the best thing we can do for Stephen now is stand by him, let him know we're there for him. Instead of arguing amongst ourselves, it's not helping anyone, you know. Yeah, well, it still doesn't alter the way I feel right now. Inside. We, uh, we could all go, I take it, to see him. Right, will you get yourself down there tomorrow and we can all go together? Jesse thought you might fancy a bit of toast. I'm not hungry, thanks. Well, I'll leave it there, in case you change your mind. You did the right thing, you know. You told the truth. You need have no conscience about that. I was thinking about my mum and dad, actually, and what they would think of me now. They gave me so much. They wanted so much for me. And what have I got to show for it? Look, Vicky, love. What's happened is history now. Just like Steve MacDonald, if you've got any sense. How could he do that? How could he stand up in court and lie and make out it was all down to me? Do you know what really hurts? Realising what a fool I've been. Turning a blind eye to what he's like. And then having to face up to it all. In court, in front of all those people. Yeah, well, you know where you stand now, don't you? I did love him, you know. I really did. Well, I think he's got us to a T. <laughs> well, there's a likeness, definitely. Oh. <laughs> My favourite, I bet she's now like me. Gave over. You want to take a look at Mary, you, when you've had a skin full. He's done you a favour if stay you were in. You don't want all just to stay sober, Vera. Well, you do. That's for sure. Right, we shall have for him there. In the bin. Look, any more cracks like that and you'll end up in the bin. Well, they've got to set pride of place. In the bar. Oh, come on, Vera. <laughs> yeah, for all the world to see. Hey, they're only a bit of fun. You know, makes a change on them straw donkey things and them, them castanets. Eh? Well, that's what folks usually bring back from Spain, isn't it? <laughs> Eight before I forget. Ooh. For me. Oh. Just a little present, a little thank you. Taking over at bar while we're away. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered, Vera. <laughs> I'll be back sometime this afternoon. Well, you just enjoy yourself. Oh, oh good morning. Morning. Emily. Good morning. <laughs> Pity Ashley can't teach me to drive. I could have got a lot of practice in today. But he can't. So I'll just have to keep on looking for someone to teach me. If you do think of anyone. I'll let you know. See you. See you. Bye. Go. Yeah, with Angela and Norris. And the lady vice captain. He's gone to make up a four. I thought you'd have been on the allotment today. <laughs> if Derek thinks I'm going to break my back down there while he's swanning about on a golf course with his ex-wife and his boss, he can think again. So, if you're planning on having lunch in the Rovers, I'm open to offers. These are very good. Definitely, you and Jack. Yeah. Where are you going to put them? Well, we've not decided yet. In here somewhere. <laughs> Good thinking. Give the bar a bit of character. Show you can take a joke. 
Mine host and his missus. I demand. Mine host and her husband. Don't forget whose name's above the door. <laughs> well, if you take a tip from me, you'll put them where nobody can get at them. You don't want the benefit of their artistic talents and all. No, well, better not, though. Here, listen, um, you've had no complaints while we've been away. Complaints? What about? Well, you know, I've better been treating you all right, has she? Um, not being thrown away to bed or like that. Well, not with me. All right. And she's been all right with customers, has she, and Billy? Oh, not only customers. Eh? I mean, Billy knows how to enjoy himself. Well, at least he did, until she marked his card for him. Mm -hmm. uh, not that he were doing any harm. <sighs> well, you know what he's like when he's had a few pints inside him. Enjoy your bath. Yes, thanks. Look, do you fancy a run out somewhere? We'll find a little pub and get something to eat. No, I don't think so. I, I just thought it might help to... What, take my mind off things? Help me look to the future? Well, yes. Uh, no home, no job, no uh, qualifications and no friends. And now, you can't say that. That isn't true. And you wanted me to be realistic? Well, for a start, you're not homeless, are you? And stay with me for as long as you want. And as for having no qualifications, you can't say that. You run your own business. And what a mess I made of it. What have I got to show for it? You'd have had plenty if that husband of yours had pulled his weight. The business was a joke. It would have gone down months ago if I hadn't have kept pumping money into it. I was chasing a dream. Just the same as I have been doing all my life. And you can't build a future on that. Vicky, my love, it took me 40 years to learn that lesson. Are you sure you don't want to come out? Yeah, positive. Look, I, I don't want to try and run your life for you. But I don't think it's right that you should be in here moping. Why don't you give your friends a ring? What friends? Oh, the riding stables, people at the school. And what do we talk about? What I've done since I last saw them? There's no need to mention any of that. Just have a chat, see what they've been up to. Let them know you're still around. Look, I appreciate you trying to help Grandad. I really do, but not today. Maybe someday. I'd... I may go for a walk later. All right, whatever you say. I'll not be far away if you want me. And Jessie's always got plenty of change for the phone. Will you give up going on? You're giving me a nosebleed. Yeah, well, you look at that's all I'm giving you. Bank holiday, and what are we doing? Big fat nothing. I don't think I've ever seen you two today. I thought you'd be burning the road upon your bike. The roads will be chocker. A couple of pints, please, yeah. Anyway, I was hoping to strip it down. Oh, and who's going to put it back together again? I said hoping to. I thought Jim McDonald might give us an hand, but where things have turned out. Ah, well, he's got enough on his place, hasn't he? So what are we going to do this aft? And if you think I'm going to sit glued to that sports channel? Yeah, we'll have to find something else to do. Like what? Oh, I don't know. Something will come up while I'm in the stripping down mill. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Now then, we're not licensed for dancing. Right, I'm off. Oh, it's all right for some, isn't it? I've just been on holiday for two weeks. Yeah, I feel as if I've been back a month already. Well, at least you got away. I can't remember the last time I had an holiday. Gary. Mine's half a shandy if you were thinking of asking. Oh, go on, Jack. All right. Now, you were uh, supper at the Legion, don't you? I've got a couple of mates who are drinking there, but the beer doesn't always agree with me. I'm not surprised, Mount you knock back. Uh -huh. I'm not talking about the ale, I'm talking about the folk who serve it. Huh? Eh? Well, there's a job going behind the bar, full time. Oh, well, thanks for the thought, Mum, but I've got enough of my plate here. I'm not talking about you, for me. You? Certainly me. I've got experience. But you've got a job here. Not full time, I haven't. Well, what's it got to do with me? I thought you might know somebody who could put a word in. Well, what's up with him? He's your man. He's on the committee. Put it away. Eh? I'll get this. <laughs> Right, well, I'll, uh, I'll just take these in and then we'll have a bite to eat at the Rovers. I mean, who'd have thought anybody could get that worked up over a misput? Well, it wasn't just the one, was it, Norris? Well, what does Angela expect? Hovering over me like a vulture every time I have a club in my hand. And then when you knocked her ball away with that flag. It was an accident. I was taking it out to help the lady vice-captain. Yes, and you did, because she won the hole and she and I won the match. Yeah. 
There's no need to go berserk. <laughs> Think yourself lucky. It was only a golf club. Every time I look at you, you remind me of him. Your father? You've got the same bearing. You old soldiers never lose it. You take a pride in yourselves. Well, we've got a lot to be proud of, haven't we? Though why we bothered, I don't know. And have a look round at some of these youngsters today. Well, you might have come across him. He must have been in France the same time as you were. Ah, so a lot more. Sergeant Smedley. Smedley? Arthur. Hmm. What regiment was he in? Uh, Lancashire Fusiliers and then the Paris. I mean, he were dropped all over the place. Normandy, Ardennes, Germany. South Lancashire? Could have been. Well, they were transferred to Paris in 1943. They became the 13th Paratroop Regiment. Had a couple of pals in that, but I can't recall uh, Arthur Smedley. He was known to his pals as Deadly. Deadly? Deadly Smedley. Oh, we saw a few off in his time, did me, Dad? Uh, you were in catering, weren't you? Yes, that's right. We all had our job to do. <laughs> of course you did. Where would folk have been without people like you? That's right. An army marches on its stomach, you know. <laughs> so he likes to do ah. Oh, Dad, what are you doing back so early? Don't ask, Mavis. Oh, you've not upset Angela again. Not me, no. I was a model of good behaviour. No, I'm afraid I was the one that didn't quite come up to scratch. Do you know, she wouldn't even let us stop for lunch. But it's only a game. Oh. <laughs> Nothing's only a game to Angela. <laughs> he made some good pals in the war, did me, Dad? He used to say, no matter who you are, where you come from, you're all mates together. You had to be. Your life depended on it. Oh, it's a pity you never came across him. You'd have got on a treat. Have you time for another? Oh, you must be fed up with me going on about the war. You must be bored, rigid. Good heavens, no, it's been my pleasure. Oh, most folks want to forget about that now. Ah, more's the pity. Yeah, you were a proud man, my dad. I like to keep his memory alive. And knowing you're a man of the same generation, the same spirit... Uh, Jack, same again, please, when you're ready. Right, go. Hey, hello. Thanks, Vera, here. Nah, put your money away. Oh, cheers. Hey, you couldn't do us a little favour, could you? Now, if it's about working tonight... No, it isn't. I just wanted a few minutes of your time now, you know. Well, when you've had your pint. Now? Not behind the bar. I want you to have a look at the books. See how we've done it last fortnight since we've been away live. One chicken on brown, one cheese on brown. Tony, don't make a song and dance about it. Hiya. Have a drink. Oh, Have a drink. Uh, no, no, you can't. Of course you can. Sit down. No, no, hang on. We're not stopping. <laughs> what are you doing here? Cavalry's arrived. You what? Yours truly. Come and give you a break. I'm really looking forward to it. You see, I never get any contact with customers at the hotel, but here it's different, isn't it? Mm. Well, uh, uh, actually, we were thinking of closing early today. Uh, it, it hasn't exactly been one of our busiest days. Not best policy, Mrs Baldwin, if you don't mind me saying. You disappoint one potential customer, it's one too many in my Ooh, book. quite right. You get off, enjoy yourselves. Are you sure? Yeah, go on. Perfect. Thanks, Roy. Not at all. I'll take the week, if you like. I've plenty of time on my hands. All right. Where's <laughs> my drink? Um, hang on. Uh, we're going. Uh, right. 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 Come on, you two. I want to stop here. Yeah! Oh, you want to stop here, do you? All right, well, you stop here. OK, then. I wonder where we should go, though. Maybe we should go down to that ice cream farm we've seen advertised in the recorder. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Oh, I mean, you're changing, mate. Right, come right, on, chop, chop. Uh, I'll see you then. Um, thank you. Au revoir, Alma. Bye. Right, I'll, uh, I'll make a start on the washing up. Uh, Brought me on gloves. Hey, what are you doing here? I thought you said you weren't working today. Uh, well, I wasn't. I'm, I mean, I'm not. Well, not properly. Um, <clears throat> I just thought I'd put in a little bit of time better, you know. I, I've not got a lot to do, see, hands at work. But you did then before Jack and Vera went away. Yes. I, I'm just bringing them up to date, you know. I see. From the time when me and Billy were in charge, you mean? Uh, well, look, Betty, this wasn't my idea. I know whose idea it was. Hey, I'm love. Thank you for the drink. Very nice of you. Hey, just what are you accusing me of, me and my Billy? I'm not accusing you of anything. What's up? Well, Andy's looking at the books. I know, I've asked him to bring him up to date. Obviously, it is. you just don't trust us, do you? Of course we trust you, Betty. Listen, when me and Billy said we'll look after this place, we were doing you a favour. This is all the thanks you get. You can find yourself another couple of mugs the next time. See what you've done now. 
So why is she getting upset eh? if she's not too hard? Answer me that. Right, we're off. Oh, you, you, you can't go now. It's it's my round. Another time, eh? Uh, I, I'll come with you. I don't think it's a good idea, Norris. I, I, I'd love a cup of coffee. One cup of coffee. Then home. Right. Yes. What have you done with the salt? Stops them getting damp, clogging in the tops. There you go. Oh, thank you. I'll fill the sauce bottles, vinegar, sugar bowls. Well, you've just about covered everything there, haven't you? And I've removed the ashtrays. You've removed the ashtrays? Well, you don't like folks smoking in here, do you? No, no, but, I mean, you oh. know, if they want to... I'm not saying you stop them. You just don't make it so obvious that you allow it. By removing the ashtrays? Right. So, if they do smoke, they'll uh, put it out in the sugar bowl or on the floor? No, they don't. They, they ask for an ashtray and you give them one. But you'll not get that many asking. I mean, so many places are non-smoking these days, no one's sure whether they can light up or not. <laughs> Put an ashtray on the table, that's an open invitation. Oh, well, I suppose it's worth a try. Yeah, it's one example of how you give folk a free choice, but you influence what that choice is. I get lots of satisfaction from that. It, it's one of the reasons I like working here. I mean, this isn't just the cafe, is it? It's a window on the, on the fascinating world of human behaviour. Are you going to put these salt cellars on the table, or shall I? Well... Well, there is a difference between what Betty took and what you'd normally bank for the same period. I knew it. How much? It's nearly 200 quid. Good. What do you mean she's done this for nearly 200 quid? No, Vera, you're up nearly 200 quid on the fortnight. Well... <laughs> well, I think we know every duck in that park, don't we? Did you take him to the pets corner? Yeah, yeah, went there as well, didn't we? He loves it there. <laughs> I'd take him more often, but it takes so long. By the time I've walked there, it's time to come back again. Well, go on. What? It'd be so much easier if you could drive. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? You've got some help plates to take it. Have you thought someone will teach you? Yeah, well, I don't look so surprised you've been working on me long enough. You will? Well, I'm not going to get a peace and quiet until I give it a go, am I? Oh, thanks, Mr Barlow. Right, tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a couple of lessons and we'll see how it works out. I'm not promising anything more than that. Oh, it'll work out honest, it will. Yeah, well, we'll see. All the things I do for you. I'm sorry about today, Andy, having to work. Oh, can't be helped, can it? I couldn't go very far anyway, not with the state my mum was in. I wish, uh... Well, if I said she was getting any better about it, I'd be lying on her. Families, eh? What do we do to deserve them? Right, what do you want to do? I'm not bothered. Well, I reckon I can scrape enough together for a pizza, maybe. Not all families are like yours, you know. Yeah, so they tell me. Are you working on Friday? Friday night? Uh, no. Do you fancy coming for tea? Why? Do you want me to going out? No, they'll be there. I'm getting tired of them asking about you. Reckon it's time they found out for themselves. Well? Um. Yeah, all right, then you're on. Right, don't expect too much. Well, I'll eat anything, Anne, you know that. No, from my mum and dad. I mean, they're nothing special. Dad ordinary, really. Oh, well, that makes a change for a start, doesn't it? Come on, drink up. Well, that's right, Andre. Andre. How are you? How are you? See, like I'm saying, that's the wee fella I feel sorry for. What, you're Andy? Oh, aye, he's trying to make a go of things and he's lumbered with us lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I wouldn't worry about him. I mean, he knows what he's doing. He can look after himself, can't he? Right, lads, two pints of liquid gold coming up. That'll do for a start, Jack. I have a feeling it's going to be a long evening. Oh, no, no, no. Look, William, not for me, all right? OK? Oh, come on, Jim. If anybody had a good reason to get smashed, you do. Yes, look, I'm very sorry, all right? I don't feel like it, not tonight. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that's the way it is, OK, Willie? <sighs> what stop, Mavis? No, it hasn't. I was just wondering how much longer you were thinking of staying. 
I don't suppose there's any chance of a black coffee. Oh, Norris, you've had enough coffee to sink a battleship. And the rest? It's time you were going home. Angela would be wondering where on earth you've got to. Angela? Angela who? Your wife. No, no, no I don't have a wife. Because wives don't humiliate their husbands. They don't treat them like vermin. Look, I'll ring for a taxi. No, it, it's all right. It's all right. I've got the car here somewhere. You're not driving anywhere. Do you want to ring Angela from here? Let her know you're on your way home? Why should I? She never tells me what she's doing. But she's your wife. She'll be worried about you. No, no, she won't, you see, because, because she doesn't give two figs about me. You, you and Dirk, maybe, are different. You, you, you positively radiate togetherness, sharing each other's lives, sharing each other's love. No, you, you, you're a very lucky Dirk man. No, I mean, man, Dirk. Anyway, I envy you. Do you know? You know, this is the only place in the whole world where I feel really wanted. Yeah. Yeah, really, really comfortable. Derek, that tax. I think I might have an early night. Oh, right. Are you feeling any better, love? Yes, I think so. I'm sorry about this afternoon. I think I just needed a little time to myself, you know, to think about what's happened to me. Put my life in perspective. I was thinking about Bet, actually. I've thought about her quite a bit. Bet? What's she got to do with anything? I never forgave her for leaving. Well, that's hardly surprising. That's because I didn't understand. I didn't see things from her point of view, only mine. But now I think I do understand. I think we have a lot in common. Now look, if you're trying to say that you and Beth... Well, we have, really. We felt the same. We felt safe and secure in our environments, our relationships, our own little worlds. We thought there were people around us who we could rely on when things got tough. Well, that's what Beth thought until she turned to those people. And they didn't want to know. Beth brought a lot of that on herself, you know, Vicky. So what'd you do then? Who'd you turn to? Look, if you're trying to say you haven't anyone in the world, then you're wrong, because you've got me for a start. You're right. I can have a life that's worth living. Well, of course you can. My education wasn't totally wasted. I mean, I've done a business course. I've still got a little bit of money left. You have a roof over your head for as long as you want it. And I can fix you with something at some time. There's still someone turns up. Well, that won't be necessary. Oh, so, so what are you going to do? Well, I don't know yet, but I'll think of something. But whatever it is, it, it won't be around here. Look, Vicky, don't you think it's a bit early to be thinking about leaving? I'm not thinking about it. I'm going to do it. I've got to. There's too many bad memories around here and too many people who know what's happened. No, if I'm going to make a fresh start, I'm going to make it as far away from Weatherfield as possible. And the sooner the better. Night night. Oh, to be a fly on the wall in Norris and Angela's bedroom last night. Oh, Derek. <laughs> I know what it's like to share a bed with her when she's in that mood. Look, can we please just draw a veil over their sleeping quarters? She wears a particular nighty on those occasions. It's dark brown, winciette. <laughs> she looks like a truck. <gasps> I don't want to know. Poor old Norris. It's bad enough her losing at golf without him being the one to lose it for her. <laughs> I'll see you at lunch. <laughs> Life's quite colourful at times. Do we have to have grapefruit every morning? Well, we can alternate with orange. So long as it's citrus and we keep it up all month, we should have a girl. What happens if you want a boy? Well, boys are more dairy crowd juice. What do you get if you have egg, bacon, beans and black pudding? That. And you've got to do your bit as well. Yeah, you can count on me. Good. Well, you wear them baggy underpants. Keep yourself cool. Thanks, lovely. Oh, look who's here.
It's a grand morning. Have you seen this? No, some other time, love. And that somebody's torn a piece of my stomach away. And I wonder how Steve feels. Well, I shouldn't worry about him. He's being looked after 24 hours a day. It was beneath you. Remember what he said under oath about you? Just remember. The barrister said, anything I want, I buy. Ah, oh, well, they tell you black's white. But did I buy Steve? Look, it's time we made a move. We've got holidays to sell. Grandad. Did I buy him? What do you think, love? Well, I suppose the question I should ask myself is, would he have married me if I hadn't had any money? And I suppose the answer is no. You were very young. And I blame myself for letting it happen. Oh, you tried to stop me. Oh, I And failed. So, you remember how to get here? Well, it's a bit complicated. No, it's not. OK. Right, left, right. And don't get into any mischief. As if. So you know where to come if you need me, which you won't, will you? No. No. And Roy Cooper's in the cafe, so you can always go to him. Well, that's a better idea. If you need me, find him. Hiya. Hiya. Sorry about this half term. Oh. Are there any jobs going for me? <laughs> hey, get lost. Go on and behave yourself. Oh, well, what about me dinner? All right. Uh, well, there's four stamps there. You what? Well, tell Roy they've got the Queen's head on. He's got to accept them. But I need money. Well, I haven't got any. Well, give us a me if they're not good enough. What's he doing here? Oh, I'm just showing him where I work. He's going now. Uh, did you give out luncheon vouchers, you know? I'll give you a clip round here, more likely. Jamie, go. Uh, and you come straight back home, do you? Watch this one, Josie. She's trouble. Oh, I'm sure she's not. <laughs> Get her cars ready. She steps out of line, she's out. I'm not trouble, honest. What do you mean? You've only been here two minutes. You've turned the place into a crash already. Hey, a beer, are you two? Oh, hi, um... Uh, no, no thanks, not for me. No, thanks. Um, are you all right, then? Fine, yes, fine, you? Fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great, thank you. Well, that's great, then. You seen that rag? Never mind them two. They practically ignored me, so they did. Listen, Andrew, I know I said yeah, I'd go with you to Solo Street, all right, but, well, must have been the beef talking. <laughs> me and your mother are not exactly happy families. Oh, Dad, Steve will be dead disappointed. Oh, I'm going to see him, all right. I'm just not going with your mother, okay? All oh, right. All right, well, I'll see you there, then. Yeah, I'll see you there. Have you worked out? It's baffling me this week on holiday. Take his go up. You don't think it's a fiddle? Oh, you mean somebody's sneaking money into the till? Who do it could be? It could be better you're dead at night. Oh, don't be stupid. Oh, we've got to keep this to ourselves, this. I suppose it's good news, really. I mean, it shows that we can trust our staff, which is more than a lot can say. It makes us look like idiots. We talk about cracking the whip, we go away on holiday, they work harder. What's that you've got? A book. It's not a book. It's the book. You're at it again, aren't you? Checking no, up on me. No, no, no. Stock analysis. My eye. <laughs> One word. Troll. I read about your lad. Well, congratulations, Percy. You will have enjoyed that, won't you? Well, if it's any consolation, he's still a young man. And let's hope that prison's a learning experience for him. What are you saying? I'm saying I hope you come out a better man, and I think he will do because he'll have an experience of discipline that he's never had before, and that could be the makings of him. Well, he didn't ignore you, did he? No, he didn't. I think that was well meant. Is that there possible, you reckon? Hey, you're doing it again, Raquel. No, he's not. He's going through the books and lying me at the same time. Well, I'll tell you, if he gets as far as an accusation, my Billy will biff him, he will. It's quite big, are you, Billy? Well, his age, yes, he's a whirlwind. <laughs> and he's a son, hasn't he? Yes, he has. If you don't mind me asking, Betty, what shape underpants does he wear? And uh, these are all in the same price range. 
finish? Uh, yes, I think so. I can just check with uh, No, don't bother. I, I, I'm not even sure I'll go. It, it's just a thought to liven myself up. I off somewhere exotic, Emily? It's probably just a fantasy. Uh, I'll bring the brochures back. Oh. No, you don't have to do that. Are you well, Vicky? Yes, I'm fine. Good. She's a grand help, is Vicky. Very glad you've got your granddad and this job to tide you over. You'll come through. Ah. Bye. Thanks. Bye, Emily. Happy reading. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like a freak show. A do-gooder. But, you know, she is a do-gooder. She's not just poking her nose in for the sake of it. I bet she wasn't even thinking about going on holiday. Look, she showed you support. She's good as said if there's anything she could do. She can mind her own business. That's what she but can no, do. No, Vicky, you've misunderstood her. That's why I've got to get away, Grandad. The whole of Weatherfield knows my business. Very nice. Thank oh, you, Betty. That's yours. Do you want that mustard? Of course I do. Yeah. Oh, right on. You have it as a red thing, don't you? Come again? The old pot. Yeah, three or four times a week. Oh, well, I see you like your food. He's in. Oh, well, just give us a nod, cos I don't want to look like a gooseberry. You're OK, aren't you? She's here for a fancy man. Oh, yeah, and who's that? I'll have a gin and lemon. I never mind her. Right. Andy, still haven't got that pint, mate. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot. I'll better do this first, all oh. right. Hello, Percy. Hello, will you have a drink with me? Uh, you've clipped. Oh, that's very kind, thank you. Andy, lads, I want to you finish that one in the back. Oh, Jack, I'm a bit busy, mate. Yeah, don't interrupt <coughs> him, Jack. As soon as you finish, right. If you'll excuse me, I'll go and have a word with Mr. Smedley. Yeah, you carry on, mate. I've got 20 minutes. Have you? Have you? I hope you don't mind me joining you. Oh, she's thrilled. Oh, that's nice. I'm sorry I can't go to a drink for your daughter. She gets her own. Hurry up, Andy. All right. Oh, where has he gone now? I know what it'll be. That flaming horse. Betty didn't know about your contribution, now, did she? She did. I asked her. Anyway, that's only 20 quid a week. More like 100 at good both weeks. Yeah, come in, come in. Right, what is up yes. now? Sit yeah. yourself down, Andy, love. Right. Look, it's, it's about these books. Whether there's more money than usual. Look, I mean, all right, and I know you're a college lad, but a college lad can make mistakes, you know. Is, is there out there that you've overlooked? Like what? Well, like figures, numbers that you haven't put down. No, of course not. It's dead simple. Oh, and, and, I know it's dead simple, but, you see, but what I'm worried about is that the other people who don't find it as dead simple as, like, me and you do. You... <coughs> Betty, for example. <clears throat> Well? Well? You're talking about me, aren't you? No, no, no. Yes, you are. It's these books. I'm under suspicion, aren't I? Right. You can serve them yourself. <laughs> you can guess who they're for. No. These are mine, and they're going home with me. But the food's yours, and the kitchen's yours. Right. Now, Betsy, love! Mm. It's not all bad, though, is it? I mean, we make more money when we're on holiday. Well? Well, what's the stuff is having holidays all the year round? Look, I don't want holidays all the year round. You know, I don't feel as if you have to come. Now, look, the first thing you've got to do is apologise to Betty. But if I do, she'll know. Know what? She'll... She'll know that she is better at making plenty money than we are. And I can't think of anything more humiliating. Well, I'd rather have the humiliation than be up in front of a tribunal. And that's what'll happen, you know, if you don't get her back, so get her home. Oh, give us half a chance. She won't be home yet. Right, I'm off. And there's your mum stuck with Percy. Does she need rescuing? Oh, don't you dare. She's after a reference from him. What for? My mate's job down the Legion. Oh. Poor old son. He thinks he's being chatted up. Oh. Uh, can I have one of those flowers? Well, they're a bit dusty. Excuse me, Cheers. See ya. That's our mum. My mum said she had to give me a dinner. Oh, me personally or me, Kathy? Because she's at work, you see. 
So, what do you want? Quarter pounder, chips, eggs, sausage, and a jam pudding. Four forty-five. You've got to accept them. They've got queens head on front. And they've glue on back. Don't mean I have to take them. But me mum said... They're not money. Are you going to send me out hungry? Four stamps of the pound. I need 4 45 I'll tell you what. Cigarette lighter. Worth 20p. What if we don't have eggs? 360 I'll wash up. That's my job. Look, I'm so hungry. You've made me faint. Mind your jacket, your mum will play pop. Uh, Pack of chewy. Not even full. There's three sticks left and I'll clean your stairs when I get home. You're in trouble now. Where's the boss look? What are you doing on the floor? I fainted from hunger. Oh, that's nasty, that. I should take some for it. He won't feed me. Right, that is really cruel of you. The negotiations are in progress. I'll see me out. I'm not sure I want it. Oh, to suit you? Well, I'm not really a hat man. Come on, four quid. It cost me 50. I'll tell you what, I'll hire it. Pound an hour, I'll give it to you about this evening. Yeah? That's uh, what, four and a half hours. Well, we'll call it a straight 4.45, shall we? Yeah, OK, fine. Well, let's have it then. What do you think? Wicked. Cool dude. Go on, sit down then. He's a total divvy. Oh, is he? You know, that was really nice of you, boy. What was? Well, come on, go halves. Uh, no, no, a deal's a deal. Yeah, 55 back, look. Uh, but that's not fair on you. No, you see, I've been wondering how one of these might suit. Well, this way, I get a chance to try one without having to buy. Cool dude, it seems. You'll have to speed up, you know. It's put me behind something terrible having to show you. Well, I'm new, aren't I? You can't understand you set of somebody on. You can't even use a sewing machine. I'm sorry. And so you should be. I'll have to tell him I'm down with my quarter. Oh, my heart bleeds. I'm on slave rates. Who? <laughs> I'm sure it does. You always little fancy piece. And you're trying to tell me you don't pay your poor the other one. Are you serious? Is that what you think? Why else would he set somebody on? You can't do the job. So he gets his rent paid. I get two quid more than I got on benefit, and he gets two thirds for his crummy flat. I work eight hours a day. I've got food to buy. I've got a string of bills and a kid out there wandering the streets. So don't give me I've slowed you down. I've tried my best. And if it's not good enough, tough. Knocking off already, are we? All right for some. It's ten minutes past, actually. Well, don't put in for any overtime. How'd she do? Pretty awful, eh? She did fine. She'll make a good machinist. I'll see you in the morning. Well, we'll see. The day I start trusting Ida Clough's judgment, they'll be putting me away. Came as soon as we were called. It's all right, this, isn't it? Well, it's not as bad as I thought. You can have it. How you doing? Terrific. Couldn't be better. If you brought me any drugs, don't bother. We're on silly. I was going to bring you a cake with a file in it, but the guy said no food. It's funny that. Sorry. Is it bearable? Well, I'm still alive, innit? I get fed, I play to spam 60 games of pool, it's like holiday camp. It's good to see you. 
Let's get him out of the way. Don't. Well, it's true, isn't it? I'm out your hair in here, isn't I? That's not fair. Don't take it out on Mum, Steve. Who am I going to take it out on, then? Oh, of course, none of this is actually your fault, is it? Look, I'm in here for two reasons. One, I married a woman who hates me. Two, I've got a family who doesn't give a stuff and never have. Three, sunshine, you bought stolen whiskey. And four, you bought your way out of it, or at least you tried to, so don't give me up. Oh, stop it. Both of you, stop it, please. What's the matter with you, man? I'm not here for fun. I'm here to see you. Well, you've seen me, haven't you? Where's my dad? I see he cares, as usual. He's coming. I've seen him this morning. Uh, hasn't quite made it on time, has he? Surprise, surprise. Just like when I was a kid. If you had a choice between me and a pint, guess which one he'd choose? Should we consider a water butt? Well, they're very environmental. Garnering nature's resources. A bit expensive, though, compared to a tap. Well, you could have it as your Christmas present. I'll hold you to that. <laughs> right, fetch some tools, won't be a moment, and then I'll be on my way. Oh. oh sanctuary. Oh, sanctuary, Mavis, I can't take any more. What do you mean? I need some human intelligent company. Now let me in. Oh. Valpolicello, look. Oh, come on, let's get trashed. But Derek's here. Yes, I know he's here. Have you been drinking? No, but I'm going to. I'm going to have two or three glasses at least. Watch me. You're in a very strange uh, mood. Well, a man can only take so much. Oh, talk to me, Mavis. Talk about sex <laughs> and rock and roll. Look, I'm warning you. You are looking at 100% male tonight. Now, bottle opener before I pull this cork out with my teeth. Look, if I do get you a bottle opener, will you promise me you'll have some nibbles as well? Insulted, ignored, abused. I mean, you call that a marriage. I oh, I oh, it's up to where we Don't go. Don't you dare leave me. What? Look. Oh, no. And he's very odd. What are you doing here? You and me are going to consign that damn woman to oblivion, if only for tonight. What? We are going to drink to forget her. I've already forgotten. Well, for my sake, then. For friendship's sake. I'd radishes to sow. Don't say that. It's true. Oh, please. No, 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 no. Norris, calm down. I'm determined about these radishes. Calm down. D do you know what you've just said? What? Look, I am used to meaning less to Angela than golf and ranking below the tea-making machine at work. But it comes as a bit of a shock to find I'm second fiddle to a radish. Oh. All right, you'd better stop then. But if we're short of salad come August, on your head be it. Nibbles. Thank you. Look, your dad's here now. Got halfway here, realised I'd forgotten my visiting order, had to go back and get it. Sorry. That's a good excuse. Say that again. Well, it says you half an hour of looking at me, doesn't it? Hey? It's always been like that, hasn't it, Dad? <sighs> Stephen, look, there's no locks holding me here. I can just turn around and walk right out of here. Is that what you want? Or you want to start again? Come on, which will it be? I'd have to put up with this, am I? No, Stephen, don't. Yeah, why not? Eh? Like we're going to sit on his own in his cell for a year. Sit down, Stephen. I said, sit down. OK. You do right to blame me. I've let you down over the years more times than I can think. But that does not stop you being a idiot. I promise I'll try and make it up to you one day, son. In the meantime, you're just going to have to trust. I'm here because you're my son and I love you. And we all live happily ever after, do we? I doubt that very much. But I'll say it again. I love you, Stephen. OK. Ah, thanks, Toby. <coughs> well? Ah, uh, Betty, Billy, thanks for coming. Uh, would you like to come in the back? No, thank you. You've got something to say, say it in public. Keep calm, lovey. He gets fish, you know. I do. Once his blood's up, no stopping him. So let's be hearing from you. My wife's been accused of yes. diddling, so what's your story? And by gum, it better be a good one. Look, nobody's accused her of anything. She's got wrong end at Steve. So what's the right end? Let's hear you. I'm embarrassed. You're embarrassed? The takings while we're away, you see. Then. I've been a fighter in my time. Bring you listen! 
the takings while we're away. We're up. You mean we sell more drink? Well, I don't know what you did, Lobby, but there was more money in the bank while we were away than there ever is while we're here. Yeah, well, there would be. You yeah, don't understand. More than usual. Yeah, but with you two not here, I mean, there's bound to be, isn't there? Huh? What are you saying? Well, there's never a session goes by without one of you dipping in the till. If it's not the cleaner's wages, it's the dray men's tips or your cigarettes. It all comes out that till. No, 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 books are more complicated. Honey. Well, be, no, no, profit, loss, yeah. turnover, VAT, all highly technical. I mean, you need a mathematical brain just to interpret them, don't you? You're both as bad as one another. I know that. <laughs> he's stupid and he's hopeless and he's got what's been coming to him. It's just I can't help feeling sorry for him. <laughs> well, he is Mr Wonderful, isn't he? Don't feel threatened. I don't. Well, not while he's locked up in there, anyway. Hey, wherever he is, don't feel threatened, Tony. There's no point. That was a long time ago. I don't. Look, I do not feel threatened. Mm. Mm-hmm. Finish your visit. Looks like you got to go, then. Oh, Steve. Listen, son. It'll go quicker than you think. Don't worry. Uh, can I just have a word with my mum? Yeah. I'll, uh, I wish you luck. Cheers. Good luck, son. Thanks, Dad. Good luck, mate. See you, mate. See you again, all right? Yeah. Look, uh, come back soon, eh, both of you? You try and stop us. See you later. See ya. I can't bear it. <sighs> it's not all bad, Mum. Look, do us a favour, eh? Of course. Ask Fiona to come and see me. Just, just ask her, eh? Did you sleep? I just keep thinking how hard he looked. Don't keep going over it. I've never known him like that before. He must be covering up for something because that is not Steve. He's okay. It's all new to him, isn't it? I mean, he's only been in there a week. Yeah. But what are they doing to him to make him like that? There'll be nothing. It's just his way of dealing with it. Steve can be tough as old boots when he wants to be, Mum. You know that. He'll come through. Look, do you want another coffee? Yeah, OK. He wants to see Fiona. He asked me yesterday as I was leaving. Well, he don't waste much time, does he, eh? Behind bars and still on the pub. You can't know that much wrong with him, eh? So what did you say? I said I'd tell her. Now, whether it's a good idea. Does my dad know? Not yet. And are you going to ask her? Well, I can't turn him down, can I? Not when I see him going through it like that. Though whether she'll go... That's up to her. Well, just settled in a new business. Steady boyfriend. Steve's just a problem from the past, Mum. I know it might sound a bit callous, but... Well, I know what I'd do. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Smedley. Good morning. My well, word, that's a grand dog. Is he yours? Yeah, Scamper. Scamper? I'm just oh. taking him for a walk. Scamper, hello. We used to have a border collie during the war. He wasn't called Scamper, but he was very good. He used to start whining half an hour before the air raid. We didn't need a siren. Oh, by the way, I've come across some old army photographs. I thought you might like to see them sometime. Oh, that'd be lovely. Good. Uh, well, shall we say dinner time? Great. All right, I'll meet in the Rovers, say, about uh, half past twelve. I'll look forward to it. Good. Come on, Scamper. 
There you are, Miss Flanders. There's all your travel documentation. <laughs> and your complimentary sunliner shower cap. <laughs> Any problems before you sail, just you give me a ring. And, uh, as they say, bon voyage. <laughs> oh, yes. Cruise to New York. Very nice. Things are on the up here, you know, Vicky. Oh, yes. We've got a different clientele, you know, and now I've made my presence felt. Oh, yes, and there's your British Legion confirmation. Oh, what was that? Trip to Pontefract Races. Yes, well, of course, you, you need the bread and butter, and as not everyone could afford caviar, you know. <laughs> morning. Oh, good well, morning, hello, Betty. Hello. How are you this morning? I'm fine. Ah, you look a bit more cheerful. Yes, I was just telling Vicky how things are on the up here. In fact, you know, some miners are opening a New York office. Oh, I. Oh, yes, we've used agents up to now, of course, but we're trying to up the profile of the company. <laughs> Mind you, they'd, they'd be looking for the right kind of person to man it, of course. Educated type, well-spoken. When will it be open? Well, not until next year, but expanding concern. Now's the time to stake your claim if you want to be a prime mover. You're one of them, aren't you, Alec? <laughs> I mean, they took you off cruises and put you in here. You can't move further than that, can you? <laughs> See you later, lovey. Dirk, old man, come in. Now, what can I do for you? Doris? I, I was going to pop by to say thanks for last night, and, and I'm sorry you missed the allotment. No, uh, well, as, as long as you're in better spirits. Oh, yeah, well, I, I, I've decided. Look, I, I've been getting things out of perspective. I mean, if, if you live with someone and work with them as well, I mean, there's bound to be a bit of friction from time to time, isn't there? True. <laughs> However fond you may be of that person. So everything's all right? Absolutely onky-dory. Oh. Now then, what have you got for me? Um, it's from Angela. She, uh, she wants me to handle the Jolly Break Hotels contract for next year. Now, I know you normally do it. Um, I wondered who your contact was. Norris? This, this is my baby she's taking. Sorry? This was the first contract I ever won. This is what clinched me by Northwest High Achiever Award. Well, perhaps she thinks you're busy. No, she, she, she knows how much this means to me. I, I fought off international competition to bring this to Hawthorne's. I left the Benelux countries reeling. No, she's doing this deliberately. To undermine me. Well, what am I to do? I'm in a difficult position. Yeah, well, that's deliberate as well. That's rubbing salt in the wound. No, oh, leave it with me, Dirk. I was prepared to give her the benefit of the doubt. But if she wants to play it this way, the time has come to return fire. Right, I'm slipping out for a bit, you know, to get some frames for them pictures. Okay, you know, while we're slack. Okay, okay. <laughs> Do you want out? No, I've still got my duty free friends. Hey, hey, get up, get up. Get up. <gasps> what are you doing? I'm telling you, you're doing it and you don't even know you're doing it. Oh, What do you want, dear? Get no money off you, do I? You're tighter than a prison wall. Don't start trying to wriggle out of it. You were caught red-handed. All right, then, Cole, Jack. You give me some money, cos I've no... Come on. I'm doing this for the business. Cut the rabbit. Now, listen, I won't be gone long. Keep your hands out of that till while I'm gone. Mm. Uh. And the wonder about the profits are down. I mean, they use that till, you know, like a piggy bank. Uh, well, as they say in German business circles, these are not serious peoples. What do you know about German business circles? Betty. I worked on international cruise liners for three and a half years. I rubbed shoulders with all sorts. If you don't mind my saying you've got some very puffed up ideas, you're only working in a travel agent, you know. More than that. Listen, it's Vicky I am thinking of. If she's trying to decide about her future, I mean, well, tell her about Sunliners by all means. But don't crack on that it's some of that it's not. That's not going to help her. I mean, listen to what she's saying. I mean, what that girl needs is a, well, it's a fresh start. And that's Freddie Beckwith. Do you still uh, see these mates of yours? Oh, they're dead, most of them. I'm in touch with a few. But you must meet up somewhere. Oh, yes, we've got a British Legion. Oh, I'm on the committee there, as it happens. Do you know it? No. Oh, very nice players. Remind me to take you there sometime. 380 does. Cheers. You haven't won? Uh, no, thanks. Andy. I'm sorry about Steve. Yeah. How is he? Or is that a stupid question? Uh, that's a stupid question. But thanks for asking, anyway. Hurry 
all come starving. Hold your horses. I would have been there ten minutes ago if you hadn't been doing your courting. Me what? Well, that's what Percy Susan calls it anyway. <laughs> Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, Liz, we were just closing. Do you want an appointment? Uh, no, I just wanted a word, actually. Is it a bad time? Well, we were just meant to be meeting some friends for a drink. Right. I'll come back then. Look, will it, will it take long? No, no, it shouldn't do. You go on, I'll catch you up. See you next week sometime. It's about Steve. We went to see him yesterday. Right, um... How is he? Not good. He asked me to pass a message on. He wants you to visit him. Me? Why me? Well, he didn't say, but I expect it's because he's still very fond of you. What about Vicky? I mean, what's she going to say about it? Oh, I don't think there's going to be much communication between Steve and Vicky from now on. I, uh, I do know it's a lot to ask under the circumstances. Who else knows? Just Andy. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to have a bit of time to think about it. Oh, yeah. I didn't expect an answer straight away. I don't, I don't want to send out the wrong signals or anything. I don't even know if I really want to see him. Well, that's for you to decide, obviously. But, uh, he's in a bad way. He's cracking on, it's all right, but I know he isn't. If he means anything to you, even if it's just a memory, go see him, Fiona, please. He's counting on you. <laughs> Another pint, Jim Lock. Brownie Sorrows. <coughs> Two pints, Jack, please. Coming up, sir. No, that's exactly what I'm not going to have, Wally, all right? As long as my wee lad's down the road in the big house and he can't have a drink, then neither am I, okay? At least I can share that with him. But how's that going to help him? A spree of core. At least I feel I'm doing something, you know? So, Jacko, I'll have a large whiskey and soda without the whiskey. Afternoon. Oh, hello, Mr. Bishop. Uh, you know Mr. Smedley, don't you? Oh, yes, yes, of I course. I was just going, actually. Oh, not on my account. Uh, no, no, um, I've got a million and one things to do. Uh, thanks for the drink, Mr. Sutton. Well, of all these, lots to show you yet. Oh, I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Bishop. Sorry? For scaring her off like that. I beg your pardon. Perhaps in future you should keep your lady friends to yourself. Don't try to show them off to me, and they might not run away. Uh, uh, just an orange juice, right. please. 60p, please, will it? And uh, could I interest you in some raffle tickets, Mr Duckworth, for the Cancer Research Unit? Ah, uh, go on, then. How much? Uh, they're 50 pence a book. Yeah, give us two quids worth. Oh, well, that's very kind. No, the best with more like it, the amount of fags I get through. <laughs> There you are. Now, there's your change. Oh, thank you. And there's your raffle. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and there's the proof. Eh? You dipping in the till. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Well, what do you expect? I've got no money. I give it you when you were going out. You never even looked in your pockets. You went straight to the till. Because I knew I never had notes. Well, th this is partly my fault, Mrs Duckworth. You see, I persuaded your husband to buy some raffle. Look, don't try and get him off the hook, Emily. I saw him with my own eyes. I'm going to be watching you in future. One more stroke like that and it's curtains. Hi. Hi, Liz. Uh, listen, I think we ought to get these visits with Stephen sorted out. I mean, we've only got four a month, so we want to get it organised, don't we, you know? Yeah. I mean, do we go together or we go separately? I mean, I'm easy either way, you know, but we should get things sorted out, you know? Of course, you might not want to see just us. Oh, why? He's got friends and all that. Why? Are they queuing up to see him or what? No, but, 
Well, it might have a visitor next week. I see. Not Victoria. Fiona. Fiona? Yeah, he asked me as I was leaving yesterday, but keep it to yourself, okay? Why? Is there uh, something going on between them? No, but she won't want it to get out, will she? Not with Tony. Have you told her? Yeah, she said she'd think about it. Well, well, well. <laughs> I'll say this for him, he doesn't give up very easily, does he? Still, we can all go together, be like old times, won't it? I hope that's not a serious remark. What? Our marriage is over. Don't ever forget that. What are you saying? Well, you swan in here. Make yourself a term. Joke about happy family get-togethers. The only reason we're talking is because of Steve, and that's it. I see. You really think I'd want to get back together again with you, Liz? Is that it? I've no idea. Don't flatter yourself. I'm being friendly because I thought it would make things easier. And I'm joking because it stops me crying about my son. Which is what I've wanted to do all day. I don't need telling that my marriage is over. I don't need telling that it's dead and buried. I certainly don't want to visit the grave. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> So you're right, Mo. Oh, eh? Hey, what do you think? Extraordinary, Vera. I'll have half, please, love. Okay. I suppose they are quite lifelike, really, aren't they, Betsy? Well, Jack showing a red rag is. Could have made Vera as the bull. Could have said it all. Yeah, Betty. What, love? Are we have to watch our Jack, so he don't get his hands in the towel. You can go and whistle. What do you think I am, Matahari? Do your own spine, love. Hey! You look like you could do with a drink. Aye, or three. <laughs> that didn't take... Oh, two, Jack, please. Right. That didn't take long, did it? What's that? You should have oh. got a pledge, bus. Yeah. Jacko, oh, sorry. Large soda water, please. So, what are you going to do, then? I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it, aren't I? You're cool. It's only a prison visit. It's not a big deal. Um, you okay for drinks? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Suppose you're going to be telling Tony then if it's not such a big oh, deal. Oh, shut it. Okay. Yes. How'd it go? The Jolly Break contract. Norris, are you all right? I'll kill her, Dirk. I swear to God, I will kill her. Hiya. Hello. What's up? It's off. Why? Don't ask. Oh, well, you've not had a row. You could say that. Oh, well. At least I know you've got a nice, healthy relationship with your parents. Like me. Betty, Betty, love. If you cop our Vera dipping in the till, before perhaps to me, will you, love it? Right. What's he we'll... saying? The oh, same as you just did. Are both of you thicker, what? Look, if you don't want to go bankrupt, stop taking money out of the till. Both of you. It's as simple as that. And leave me out of it. She got off to the guides then? Yeah, she's got a big rehearsal for a church parade on Sunday. She won't be back until 10. Oh, and I thought the church had no place in the modern world. <laughs> well, you learn something every day. Mm -hmm, you do. Got a taste of his own medicine at Gig Lane this afternoon. Less oh. than 10 minutes gone, a long ball on. Vicky, the Lincoln keeper in no man's have you ever been to Switzerland? Switzerland. Well, I've had me thinking, Cap, on this afternoon. I used to meet a lot of people on the cruises who'd done a hotel management course in Switzerland. I mean, not your common a garden polytechnic course. I mean, you know, top notch was this international. That sounds interesting. You might not fancy a career in that line, of course, but uh, 
as you don't know what you want right now, it'll get you away, give you a chance to sort yourself out. And you'll come out with a useful qualification up your sleeve. Sounds brilliant, in fact. Well, it's just a suggestion. Mind you, it'll cost, of course. And those sort of places aren't cheap. But I think it'll be money well spent. Mm, it won't start till September, though, will it? Ah, well, actually, I rang them this afternoon. Apparently, they start courses every three months. The next one's in a couple of weeks' time. And what was it you said about a magic wand? Uh, hey, now, don't go rushing in. Think about it. Yeah, I'll think about it. But if I make up my mind, don't try and stop me, will you? I think I've learned my lesson there. Just uh, get rid of them. Yes, Becky, Maya. Is yes. Yes, she is. Come in. Sorry to disturb you. What's wrong? I forgot. Tonight's last chance to pay for summer camp. Still owe fifty pounds. <laughs> well, I can wait till next week, can't it? They said tonight. How much? Fifty? Yeah. Oh, I've only got twenty. Why didn't you remind me? I need it all or I won't be able to go. Thirty quid. Right, there you go. Thanks. Have a nice evening. Hey, that's not my rent money you're chucking around. I can do what I like with this. It's mine. Just remember where it came from. That's not a very nice thing to say. No, it ain't. Thanks, Fiona. Just because you employ it does not mean that you own it. She owes me rent. All right, then, fine. Put your money away, Trisha. I'll get these in, shall I? Yeah, yeah. And I'll get the next. Hey, Mike. What would you do if someone sold your customers not to buy your sweatshirts? I'd tell them to buzz off. Why? I don't think I'll be doing that. Well, you know, to you. On the house. Catch me going back to her, you're joking. There's a lot of fellas who would, you know. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm going to build something up with Stephen, whenever he gets out, I'll do it my own. Not with any help from her. You sound like you've got something in mind. Well, he's going to want a job whenever he gets out, doesn't he? Eh? So? Well, if I work hard, Get my head down, and we might have room for another man, eh, whenever he gets out. Who knows? Might even start up on her own. McDonald and son. It's got a bit of a ring to it. Something to aim for anyway, isn't it, eh? <laughs> this is getting out of control, Derek. I don't think you should get embroiled. Well, I'm trying not to. <laughs> All the same. It is rather gratifying to see him on the receiving end for a change. Yeah, well, just keep your distance, because you could end up making enemies of them both. Yes, you're right. Oh, I'll just get rid of him, please. If he's going to spend another night with us, I think I shall just go mad. And she has the nerve to blame me, because my sales figures are down. I mean, what does she expect? It was her that told me to take some time out to research gaps in the padded envelope market. W will you just excuse me a moment, please? Thank you. <sighs> Why is she doing this to her? Why is she trying to humiliate me? You don't think it could be our old friend, the firm hand, eh? I told you before you were married, that's what she likes. Yeah, yeah you did, not it, it worked wonders. Well, now, a few months down the line, it could be you're getting too complacent. I, I must admit, I have rather let that side of things slip a bit, you know. I, I mean, it gets so wearing being assertive all the time. Oh, I know. I mean, sometimes, after a hard day's work, you just want to come home and put your feet up. Mm, well, that's where I went wrong, Norris. She lost all respect for me. I think that could be the answer, you know. Why don't you go home now and try it? You've got nothing to lose. You know, Dirk, I think you've cracked it. So, what do you fancy doing instead? I think you should choose. I'm the one that let you down. Look, Anne, it's not a problem. I can meet you folks any time. Andy, that's just it. I don't want to meet you. Not at all. Oh, don't tell me. Steve. 
Steve, your dad. I saw the Gazette. Great. I keep my nose clean, eh? Work my kecks off at university and slog my guts out here to pay for it. And I'm guilty of violent conduct and perverting the course of justice. I'm sorry, I feel so ashamed. <sighs> well, don't worry. I'm only saying what Arthur Weatherfield must be thinking. Now, are you sure you won't be seen with me? Because I quite understand. I stuck up for you. You've done nothing wrong. Well, you don't have to when your name's MacDonald. The rest of the family do that for you. I don't care what your family does. No, well, you don't now. What about in six months' time, eh? When you've been tired with the same brush? That is, assuming you won't stick around that long. No plans not to. Thanks. But I'd give it some thought, huh? Seriously. It might be harder than you think. And, of course, if you feel you can't handle it, it might be better to get out now. 